How about now? <laughs> Sorry about that. Like I was saying before, I, listen, I had an event in Chicago. Okay, it took me about a couple hours. That's why we had to move it back a little bit. But we're here, all right? I, I'm in a rush. Clearly, I'm not dressed for the entire today, all right? But we about to have ourselves a show, okay? Now, listen, guys, all right? It is almost the end of 2023, and you guys know it is going to be a very, very big show, okay? Because today, we are going to be talking about the biggest losers of 2023. That's right, folks. The biggest losers who took the largest L in these here red pill space of 2023. We got a lot of candidates, folks, okay? We're going to go eat, go over each and every one of them, including some uh, honorable or dishonorable mentions, okay? And uh, we're going to go ahead and... Uh, uh, basically get it cracking. Okay. So let me know if you guys can hear me right now. Okay. I had to switch out the, the mic stand. Okay. But, uh, let me know if y'all can hear me, put a word in the chat. If you guys can hear me. Okay. Uh, the stream good. So let me, let me just make sure we're doing it. All right. But, um, so here's what we're going to start off with first. Okay. First things first, we're going to start off with the candidates for today. Uh, but before we do that, all right, there's a couple more things we got to go over. First of all, we got to take care of today's sponsorship. And today's sponsorship is sponsored by you guys, particularly the YouTube like button right below the video here or this, this video right here, right below this one. OK, all right. Go ahead and smash that like button, because listen, guys, as we come to the end of 2023, not only are we celebrating the fact that you guys are here, we're also celebrating the fact that you guys choose to spend your time here with this channel the Don, where you can literally be anywhere in the world right now. And some of you guys are everywhere in the world right now. And I appreciate you being here. Okay. So go ahead and sponsor the show by smashing the like button. Also, I want to show my appreciation for being with us here, standing strong through the thick and thin. All right. Throughout this entire year. I mean, there, there's no shortage of abuse. We done take from these bozos over here. We about to expose, but all right, we held in there, we hanged on, and we are persevering. So much so, we're about to clown the, the, the biggest losers of 2023, all right? So here, as you guys see, we got to go over the candidates here today, okay? So we have eight different candidates, okay? And these guys, I, listen, chat, <laughs> I'm going to have to be real with y'all. Let me let me be real with y'all for a second, okay? Um, Listen, this was a hard choice. All right, because there's so many losers in this space. This was ultimately the hardest decision to even get these guys on the ballot that we have right now for y'all about to vote on. OK, it was very tough because it's like hard picking. It's like it, it, they were all so bad. <laughs> They were all so bad, okay? These guys are just terrible, but, but I'm good. <laughs> Wait, can you guys hear me? Hold up, hold up. Let me know if you guys can hear me. Somebody says uh, no sound. Let me know if you guys can hear me. Don't tell me I've been talking for like five straight minutes <laughs> and y'all can't hear me, all right? But listen, listen, it was so hard, okay? It's so hard choosing these people, but I think that the list that we have today, okay, you guys, you, you guys are going to be impressed. You guys are very impressed, even though it was a hard way to do it. So let's go over the rules of the game, okay? After we go over these uh, uh, honorable talents over here that we're going to be voting on to see who took the biggest L of 2023, all right, we're going to be going through the different specific events that warrants the L. Even choosing that was difficult. <laughs> Even choosing that was absolutely difficult because it's like, damn, these dudes had so many L's for this year. Like, I, I, I don't understand. Like, it's so hard to choose one. And y'all might find it hard, too. So don't make it super complicated, guys, all right? I'm going to try to simplify this uh, as possible. But we got eight candidates, okay? The first one is MLD, <laughs> all right? We're going over MLD. The second one is going to be Sus Marquardt, okay? We, we had to put that in there, okay? Y'all y'all already know. The third one is Sneeko, all right? The fourth one is Rolo Tomasi, because, you know, you got to put the, the, the godfather of the red pill over here, okay? So he's got he's to gotta get his rounds in here, too, as well, because believe it or not, this year it wasn't looking too good for Rolo Tomasi. <laughs> I'm going to just be real with you, okay? After the bisectomy comments, people ain't fucking with the red pill no more, Jack. I think, I think realistically, Rolo Tomasi single-handedly destroyed his own creation, which is the red pill, because he's super proud of that shit. But moving on to his sidekick, Donnie Boy. Now, some of you are like, yo, Donnie Boy, what? <laughs> yeah, buddy took some L's of today, this, this year, too. And I actually think they were hilarious. And we're, y'all about to see in just a second. So, all right, it's going to get crazy. All right, and then we got Ha 
obviously just pearly things, okay? And, and yeah, we want to talk about L's. This one is it, it, this was a no brainer to put on the list, okay? And then we got Fresh and Fit. This includes Myron specifically. Fresh is more of like the honorable mention since, like, I mean, it's fresh. What, what, what do you? What do you want me to say? <laughs> what do you want me to say? Dog is fresh. All right. So that just is what it is. All right. So we got fresh and fit. And then last and uh, finally least, uh, Andrew Tate. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody took bigger L's than him this year. And uh, honestly, it's like a long burning road to hell. All right. So first things first, let's get with our first candidate. All right. So we're going to do this by rounds. Okay. So we're going to go each and every single round and cover all eight candidates that we put in here today. We're going to play each of the, every one of those key events for that moment. Okay. So the first round, we got to eliminate three people. They got it. They got to go. <laughs> uh, three people got to go. Okay. That That's the first round. All right. And then. No, we'll make it two. We'll make it two, just 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 for the sake of it. All right, we'll we'll, we'll, we'll enjoy ourselves today. All right, and then uh, we we gotta we gotta eliminate people. Okay, and you guys gotta vote on it in the chat. This is where it comes down to the importance here. And I want you guys to think if you're familiar with these characters, you really want to vote well. Okay, so I want to see the vote in the chat after every one of these bozos that we cover. Okay, so let's go ahead and get with the first idiot. MLD. Now, here's the main thing we're going to be covering with MLD. Y'all remember MLD had his his fair share of uh, 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 craziness going on this year. All right. <laughs> it was bad. Matter of fact, we 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 might as well just call it the end of MLD in his career, because uh, after Angela got done with him, it, it, it was over with. OK, now y'all gonna be asking, uh, well, well, Duke, I, you got to have to refresh my memory here, because what, what happened with MLD? Well, there's a reason why they call him Mr. Endure. OK, and the reason why is because this bozo goes on the whatever podcast, OK, with Brian the bozo and essentially decided they had the conversation about domestic violence. OK, and these guys in the red pit ideologies, you got to understand how they work. OK, they, they believe that the women, OK, no matter how toxic a relationship is, whether it's verbally abusive or physically abusive, they believe that, hey, it's the woman's fault. <laughs> There's no accountability here. But also, they believe that the, it's, a, it's the job of the woman to not file for divorce so easily, okay? Don't, don't just go go run to the judge and ask for a divorce because you're breaking apart the family. What about the children, okay? I mean, it's better off for the children to stay in a toxic, uh, abusive relationship with their parents rather than separating and each of them finding peace, okay? Now, obviously, rightfully so, uh, MLD got roasted beyond repair for this, and it came out with the Endure video. But let, let's start with that first and then uh we'll go from there shout out to abba and preach because uh they did a great job in covering this so we're gonna refresh our memories on this particular topic all right and then we're gonna move on to the next candidate okay so let's go ahead and get it so you remember the endure guy yes <laughs> if there's someone that's very very young and goes into a marriage and has kids when they're like 18 19 20 a year into the relationship it gets really really abused even though it might be rare from what you guys think, it is. Uh, if it would happen, what would you recommend for those people? Would they divorce or do you want them to keep going in the relationship? Keep going. You can't divorce. That's not a real thing. Even though it might be like physically yeah, abusive. You got to endure. People are too. You want to stick in the relationship? People are just. I mean, like, look, people I'm nowadays be are just. Situation. For anyone that might be in that situation, what would you recommend? Okay. Anything endure. So would you they what, give I, up I, endure. I, it is so an extreme example that I can't give a prescription for what other people should do. What about if two people Sorry. get married, Sorry. they have a kid, and then the wife starts cheating? Do you think they should divorce? Absolutely. Jesus himself said in, in cases of adultery, divorce is So you think the divorce is worse than physical abuse? No. For the children? For cheating. Sorry, you think, cheating think that cheating is, is, is worse than physical, than physical abuse. abuse? For the Sorry. children, yes. Absolutely I th I think, not. I think <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> Listen to this guy chat. Are you paying attention to what this clown is saying, okay? He, he, he's basically advocating for a situation where kids, it's better off for them to be in a toxic relationship environment with both parents verbally abusing or physically abusing each other rather than getting a divorce. Let's continue. I'm going to say divorce, this is worse than that. Divorce I mean, is worse than yeah. so He's going to go on around explaining what he meant. Three days later. But I did say if there was one instance, because relationships every but every relationship has fights every relationship has ups and downs anybody who says otherwise is a liar okay <laughs> there's conflict in relationships period even the happiest couples in the world they have conflict mm -hmm. and anybody who denies that like i said they're just they're lying 
I think you just substituted or slipped something in there very slickly as if it made so your argument. Nobody said there aren't conflicts in relationship. That's not Nobody about. said there aren't fights in a relationship. Mm -hmm. What people said is just because those things exist doesn't mean you put your hand on your partner during one. Even once. Even once. I don't want to trauma. So there you go right there. Okay. So that's MLD. And that was the biggest L because obviously, you know, he got a shit ton of backlash for that. Right. And everybody was rightfully pissed. Okay. So keep that brother in mind. Okay. Because we're going to move on to the next candidate, which is Sus Marquardt. Okay. And the notorious NFT situation okay now for you guys don't know the backstory to this guy all right this guy is the uh, apparently the greatest technologist of our time that we've never heard about okay and this guy you know brags about certain tech companies he started that we have actually debunked on the show because we have technologists on the show that know that this guy's a fraud so we're able to prove that and on top of that the whole crypto scamming and whatnot that went down i mean it, it's all just uh, it's all just crazy okay but nothing more disastrous than the uh the he had with destiny okay and the infamous what is it nft came out okay and honestly with well, all the shit this dude was talking about oh how did you i went to john hopkins <laughs> what's your degree <laughs> what, what's your degree right all, all that shit he was talking all that nft conferences and whatever the hell he's doing okay couldn't explain what an nft is okay and on top of that he got trolled in the most epic fashion okay so let's go ahead and get to this video right now and realize you're talking to a technologist okay then let's see if you can answer the question i'm excited go ahead you ask do i know what nfts are not only do i know what nfts are was he playing music right now he asked me a question <laughs> <laughs> were you gonna tell me what an nft is nope would you mind stop playing music oh were you gonna tell me what an nft is <laughs> Long story short, I hosted a conference. I showed people how to create NFTs from scratch from the command line, little buddy. From the and command line? Can you, you, know, you, know, you, know, you tell me how? I wonder how to create an NFT from the command line. Which command line? Okay, I'm so I'm curious. Does your audience realize that you don't know what an NFT is? Do you real? <laughs> I want to know what an NFT. I want to know. Can you guys ask him? I want to know what is an NFT. Hey there. You have something you want to bring up on uh, Destiny's behalf since he's not able to represent himself? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we need to have four songs. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, but there's fears. For, there's like a phobia for basically everything. So there's like a phobia no, there's not a like, phobia for everything. There's like a phobia there's for like explanations. Book. There's like phobia for like explanations. So people will try to dodge explanations, kind of like you try to dodge the <laughs> NFT thing earlier. <laughs> <laughs> no, was that the actual point, or was no, the point? That, of the reason that, that this is hilarious, he had no idea Destiny's fans were gonna do this, right? He had no idea that this shit was going to go down. Like th some of these trolls that come up here with Sus Marquad, bruh, they were so good. They were so good. Some of them were very direct, right? Like this guy over here, and some of them took elaborate means to get to the point. Hey, Boba, bro, you got enough balls in there? <laughs> so, like, were you scamming? Was the point of like, were you? Scamming? So the point, the point was, is um, <laughs> no, really, the point. He, he did really it. He did it. Catch hey, man. He really <laughs> wanted. He really wanted to catch you in a lie. So you tried. You tried <laughs> skipping it. And to to the next one. One. That's the problem is that I asked him if he was scared. Because you still him. haven't answered yet. One second, you still haven't man. answered yet. <laughs> <One second, laughs> no, I asked him fresh. if he was scamming. And to avoid saying yes, Marquette, I said, don't do it. It's bad. And then I turned around and tried to sell them. Oh, you know, Instead this of guy having is? to admit that, he starts going down the path of what is an NFT, which is going to get me to talk. No, we're not going to do that game. We're going to have you answer the question. But you didn't you didn't answer the question of what an NFT is. Oh, oh, oh there's some diversity off. in here. There we go. Patrick, how are you? Patrick. Hey, how are you? What oh, up, well. Patrick? Um, yeah, just sort of piggybacking off of the sort of homophobia discussion <laughs> that you're having. Um, pro idea of homophobia as like an ideology instead of like trying to be like an actual friend and, and look out for me. And so I told him like, enough tea, like enough tea, oh, like quick. NFT, <laughs> like what, <laughs> is, what is an NFT? Real quick, yeah. can you guys um, Look at his face, look at his face. <laughs> Yo, he had no idea that was coming. <laughs> he had no idea that was coming. 
<laughs> Yo, chat, if this don't make it to the next round, I don't know what to tell y'all, bro. Y'all better vote, right? If this nigga doesn't make it to the next round, come on, bro. This shit is gold. Come on, chat. More deep with the two shots. He says, JPT1, Rolo2, 3MLD, 4 Fresh and Fit. Five Myron. So Mordeev is already making his list known right now. His top five prediction out of day. Okay, let's see if he's right. And super chats, they 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 actually go in for a little bit more too as well. Cause that, that's just appreciation right there. Dev, shout out to you for the five dollar super chat. Dev, where have you been, by the way? How you doing, brother? Welcome to the stream. I'm glad you can make it. It says, What is what what in the good fellas, Duke? Oh yeah, hey bro. If people don't know how I be dressing outside of outside of YouTube, bro. Like this is my chills. Like y'all be seeing my chill stuff, bro. I, I got I got a catalog of stuff, bro. But shout out to you. You just see my coat. <laughs> no, I see it, it ain't about. Listen, 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 right. I was just coming from an event, though. I, I had to go to Chicago, and that's like, you already know. <clears throat> that's a whole other state away. So that's why I was a little bit late. But, yeah, it was a uh, New Year's event somebody was hosting, and uh, I had to go there and see what's up, say good, what's up to my people, because, you know, you got a community out there, you know, so you got to figure out what's going on and see that everybody's good and doing their things. KB the Gray says, I clapped Duke's cheeks and Legos in 98. What, what the hell? <laughs> what the fuck? Hey, yo, pause on that, talk. <laughs> Hey, got me to say it too. Damn. Hey, I, I guess that's the biggest L 2023. <laughs> Can't be the great. <laughs> what the fuck, bro? Pause on that. <laughs> Talk. Hey, yo. It's, hey, we barely even started chat going crazy. Hey, I appreciate y'all. Let's continue with uh, 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 this monumental level of trolling here. Stop trying to join the uh, chat because it, it's it's full and it keeps on popping up. On this, so if you guys can remove, uh, stop trying to join. It's kind of like blocking my view. Stop trying to join. <laughs> oh, hey, what's up? <laughs> Talk to me. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say thank you for uh, a lot of the work that you do actually on here because I used to be a Destiny fan, but I learned that it was actually kind of silly because that's actually a girl's name. So I don't like, I don't know, it seemed really feminine of him to like do that type of stuff okay, online. Okay, okay. And what I really mean, think a lot mean? of the, do like, the indoctrination that he does online is just really pathetic. I think it's really ridiculous. And he actually also doesn't know what an NFT is. So I was wondering if you could explain it to me. <laughs> roundabout troll! Oh my god, he hit him with the roundabout troll, dog chat. <laughs> you could tell Saint the Sinner was so confused. He's like, at first, dude started out with compliments. Hey, I respect the work you do, all right? A, a shout out to you. And you know, Saint the Sinner's ego, he, he's got to, he, he he can't help himself. He needs, the, he needs the validation, okay? This is what it is. So he let it slide for a little bit because he was just on guard because he knows knows that destiny army is in the chat right now but little did he know that this was leading up to a monumental setup all right but the worst is yet to come okay listen chat if this nigga don't make it to the next round come on now i don't know what y'all vote no but let's continue these guys are awesome i like these guys i like these guys <laughs> talk to me oh hey mark hey all right, so I got um, the command prompt open. What <laughs> command do I have to put into me? <laughs> D, because, so first off, for example, for example right, you I got say, Solana. Do you know how to generate Solana? Solana? No. What, what command oh, do I have? Oh, oh, silly buddy. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. We had a black one. This is good. A black one? Yeah, yeah. What? Uh, Destiny does... I don't know. I mean, did you see the Jesse Lee Peterson interview? You had to be asked a lot if you like black people. So. I'm sorry. I'm really starting to doubt if, if, if he does. It's... Yeah. It, no, seriously, I've been watching him for a very long time, and I followed a lot of things from, from his life, and now I'm actually really starting to doubt everything, so I don't know. But but you mentioned Solana, right, that you can generate uh, yeah, generate <laughs> Solana wallet. Do you not do that? <laughs> you oh, wouldn't waste your time with that one. <laughs> oh, hello? Sorry, am I on? Get your own. Get your own. Oh, awesome. Hey, sorry. I have like no time for all these people who are like just trolling you. Um, I, I wanted to ask you because I, I actually um, I went to Berkeley. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Okay, just to be clear, you're talking about like UC Berkeley, not like Berkeley College of Music, right? Because that's unfortunately, I don't have any musical talent. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, because I mean, music school, like really? I what about mining? So for me, I, I, I actually had to drop my minor in like computer science. I had a lot of friends who were in a blockchain at Berkeley. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> Wait, he dropped. You got a quicker Hello? one. Hello? Yeah, you got you got a quicker question. Oh, okay, yeah. So you were talking about like homophobia, right? Before? Yeah. What is this camera angle? Okay, so you were talking about how it was part of like the liberal agenda, right? Correct. 
Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a strange yeah, like it's a little agenda, right? Yeah. I think actually, like even the way it's spelled, like there's um the letter M, and then after the letter M, the letter N. So do you know what an NFT is? <laughs> this is good. Each time. Well, no, I think they can it see when he puts me in the back stop. room. I understand, like the oh shit. Ready to actually discuss like the topic at hand, or are you like still trying to go back so that you could try to like like win like a small battle that's irrelevant? Okay, I'm ready. I'm here to engage. <laughs> Chat. Chat, okay, that was, listen, we got it, that, that's the video right there, okay, sync this into one of the candidates, okay, I, listen, when that went out, bruh, I, we want to talk about the biggest L right there, that was probably the biggest L of his career up until that point, okay, because after that, it just keeps getting worse, okay, but we'll save that if he makes it to the next round for the next round, all right, so the next person we got off the Knicks, uh, got on the list, is Sneeko, okay? And uh, this particularly uh, is Sneeko uh, from the Brandon Buckingham perspective, okay? Because Sneeko, as you guys know, uh, is one of those guys who kind of hung around the red pill, you know, all until he, you know, got sick of whatever he got sick of because him and Andrew Tate got the little breakup going because Andrew Tate called him a lame-o, all right? So, but before all of that, okay, Sneeko was getting himself in a bunch of beefs. He got himself in beefs with, with Abba, he got himself a beast with Destiny. He got himself a beast with just all these other content creators. Why? Because he found the red pill. And apparently the, they are, are, are pretenders because they cover certain red pill talking points, but they don't go in all the way. Okay. But but that wasn't it. He called out a bunch of other people too. One mainly being Brandon Buckingham. Matter of fact, uh, Brandon Buckingham was the least of the worries because listen, and, and this is only if Sneeko makes it to the next round for you guys. That's up to you guys to vote but if he makes it to the next round there were other beefs he got into that was absolutely disastrous for his career okay all right and we wouldn't go into all of that but the brandon buckingham was kind of the first one to test sneeko's metal okay to see okay dude you're, you're talking this red pill trash all right but are you really who you say you are are you really the uh, the tough dog right are you are you really the guy who all men should emulate because you have found the truth okay the truth being the red pill so he goes around spilling his bullshit and whatnot, and then uh, comes at Brandon Buckingham because Brandon Buckingham was amongst one of the other critics that was criticizing Sneeko intensely, okay? And it was hilarious. Sneeko couldn't obviously handle the truth, so he decided to say a couple different things. He just said, he, he said, oh, you know, you, 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 you are worded my girlfriend, you did this and that, which was total fabrication, okay? It was complete and utter bullshit. So he lied about that. So it just shows you that when it comes to uh, 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 false accusations, okay? It's not just the women that these, these rep bill rant against, right? Oh, these women, they're always doing false allegations. Now, I'm not saying that doesn't happen because it does happen, okay? There are a lot of brothers that went down this year uh, and it was tragic, all due to false allegations. So that, that's a real thing, okay? But what do we have to say about the people that are the ones mainly pointing the fingers at those guys, all right? What if it come to find out that they're the ones who do a lot of false allegations? So that's what ended up happening, and uh, obviously he got exposed for that. But after that, okay, Sneeko decided to go after somebody else, which arguably was the worst decision of his career, okay? And this person was Penguin Zero, uh, a.k.a. Moist critical all right and it did not end well for him so to do uh, a brother brandon buckingham a solid we're gonna react to brandon brandon buckingham's perspective of the sneako versus penguin zero beef because it is hilarious all right so let's go ahead and get this crack at chat so the people that falsely accuse others of sexual assault should be put in jail for all the guys who were falsely accused of shit they didn't do by bitches who were lying like you go to jail right now Think about all the women who actually got essayed. She should go to jail. She should be fined. But I agree. That's why I'm suing him for defamation of character. So in response to the false allegations, I made a probably too long two and a half hour video addressing them head on. The cuck responded by saying this. I don't want to talk to this dude because me talking to him is him being up right now. The guy's irrelevant and he wants to be relevant by talking and threatening bigger YouTubers. That's all he cares about. Why well, his last video just got a million views. <laughs> all right. Okay. Then, about a week later, he gets both his YouTube channels terminated off the website. Another L, chat. Listen, 
You got to pay attention because these are all the L's compounding up until the Penguin Zero, okay? Zico's been banned. He's been taken off. He's been taken non – like, like basically, he's bas- – he, bro, the L's he's been taken has been nonstop, okay? So let's continue. Remember, when I defeat Ice Poseidon in a boxing match, and in my post-fight interview, I call out the cuck to face me in the ring. Sneeko, Andrew Callahan, Danny Mullen, come fight me, you fucking pussy! How do you think you'll do against Sneeko in MMA? Well, I would absolutely fucking ravage him. To which he responded by saying this. Brandon Buckingham just won his boxing match against Poseidon on KSI Misfits cards. Brandon called you out at the end. You gonna take the fight, Sneeko? I don't get my time to cloud chasers. Ooh, okay. With his cuck shield in hand, he bravely deflects my call out once more, saying I'm clout chaser. Despite the fact that I have nearly 300,000 subscribers, and he has zero. So after shaking off my call out, our brave and valiant cuck sets his sight on a more formidable opponent. Enter Penguin Zero, aka Charlie. Now let's do a size comparison. I'm 6'3", 175 pounds, and have trained boxing for about four months. Sneeko is 6'2", 170 pounds, and has been posting clips of him training boxing since 2018. By the way, they all do this. They all do this, okay? They post up clips of them boxing um, either at the, at the gym or at a punching bag or fighting some random YouTubers out there, okay? But then they'll be the one quick to challenge people out the fights. And then when people accept, they're like, oh, you know, they'll make up all these different excuses on why they don't want to fight you, right? But they want to talk all tough because they got boxing videos on YouTube, right? Hey, listen, bro, you can trade all you want in the gym, but if you don't have experience spying people, it's a wrap for you, dog. <laughs> I don't care what you say. Yo, stay go radio with the five shout out to you he says smash the like button like single mom's cheeks oh god <laughs> yo chat going wild today he says happy new year duke happy new year to you bro and the chat yo shout out to you he says keep good doing you much love from june uh brother jumbies uh the panel terrorists yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yo, shout out to brother jumby dog brother jumby always bringing the smoke and brother jumby actually you know, gave King uh, King Riches out here a run for his money. All right? How is he doing, by the way? I hope he's all right. I mean, I hope the last video didn't hurt him too much. But, uh, you know, some things are just much needed to hear by yourself, okay? But <laughs> let's continue, dog. Our new challenger is Charlie. He's 5'6", 155 pounds, has zero fighting experience, and zero desire to get into the ring with anyone. So, like a true alpha male, the cuck attacks Charlie. I'm talking to you right now. Tell me. Tell me. I'm not watching your fucking clips. Tell that to your chat. Let's pull up. Were you in Tampa? Say that shit to my face. I ain't watching no clips on Twitch on a bot platform. I know you're listening to me right now. You in Tampa? Tell that shit to my face. It's funny. Nerds have more power. Most of Nico's uh, Twitter followers are most likely bots. And men who could beat them in a fight. I could beat the shit out of Penguin Zero. He knows it. Charlie then says this about the fight. With every... uh, Cuck cult member of Sneeko, I agree. He would beat me in a fight. But he won't beat Brandon Buckingham in a fight, which is why he keeps dodging him. him. Brandon's my champion. Tell him to stop ducking Brandon and I'll take him seriously. Then our good-spirited cuck picks up a gun and begins waving it around in his bedroom. If you forgot this happened, okay, you have been sleeping through 2023, okay? That's right, folks. Sneeko is the second other person in the Manosphere or Red Bill to challenge a random person to a boxing match and then whip out a gun. Can you guess the first person who did that? <laughs> I'll give you a second. Ah, uh, it's Myron Gaines. Myron Gaines was the first one to challenge someone to a fight and tell him to pull up when they actually pulled up to his apartment Buddy grabbed the gun. <laughs> it was ridiculous. And the second time that happened, it was with Myron again when uh, Allende pulled up, and then Buddy called the cops. <laughs> he called. So uh, it just goes to show you a lot of these pill popping weirdos that try to teach you something about being a man. When it comes down to it, basically, you know, cashing a check, the ass was writing out there. All right, they can't do it. They'll either try to pull up a gun or try to do something. All right, but yeah, if you forgot that Sneeko actually whipped out a gun on stream to try to intimidate Charlie. Yo, you've been sleeping through 2023. I've just got to tell you that right now because that exactly happened. And all of these L's are compounding. And you think that's a uh, that's it? No, it gets worse. Let's continue. Smoothly to threaten Charlie. So he started dancing around with a gun and threatening to come shoot me. So he kept saying, oh, you're in Tampa, right? I'll come see you, waving his gun around and dancing. The following two weeks, the cuck is prancing around social media, continually posting this photo of content creators' faces that he says are soy boys and made hit pieces about him. And who do you think 
our wonderful cuck left off his hit list. Could it be me? The only person that's actually challenged him to a fight? You, yes. It's actually him, all right? And that, that we're going to leave it right there, okay? So get your – listen, as we're, we're thinking about the votes here, all right, start start thinking about a lot of these things, okay? Because you got to put these things into perspective. So next, we're going to go into our next candidate. And this person is uh, – you can only describe as, I guess, uh, the red pill godfather, if he still goes by that, like – Ew, cringe. <laughs> Just complete cringe. But uh, the red pill godfather, uh, Smolo Rolo Tomasi, okay? All right, this one, yeah, listen, if this guy makes it through the round, if he makes it through the first round, there's a lot because uh, Rolo took a lot of L's this year. <laughs> if y'all want to see more, y'all better put him on the ballot right now, okay? But, all right, the first one we're going to talk about with Rolo is the beef he had with Adam Sosnick. Okay, now, for those of you guys who don't know, there was a situation that went down. And what ended up going down was Adam Sosnick, who runs the Valuetainment Money platform, do not convince it with the Valuetainment, which is ran by uh, fraudster-in-chief Patrick Bet David. Uh, yes, uh, the Valuetainment Money, the Walmart version, right, where they're supposed to talk about money and finances, but somehow grifted into the red pill. So that's why they're on this list. So they decided to invite uh, the person who has over 1,500 lay counts. I got them tattooed on my hands, bro. All right, that is no wonder, no other than a John Anthony lawsuit. <clears throat> I'm sorry, wrong name. Uh, John Anthony Lifestyle. Yeah, a uh, uh, lawsuit is because, like, he'll try to sue anybody. I'm surprised he didn't even make it on his list. But this nigga will try to sue anybody that criticize him. Talk about tough. Talk about, like, having a soft skin, bro. Like, it's just like, yo, <laughs> really? <laughs> that, that's crazy. He's got so many different losses going on right now. And, honestly, he also caused a lawsuit with Spencer Cornelia. And who's that guy? That that bit guy or bit something boy? Whatever it is, right? That It was one of those two guys because uh, John Anthony Lifestyle uh, basically spoke out of turn and said something on Spencer Cornelius podcast that he shouldn't have said. And the dude was suing him, but I think Spencer uh, is, is probably going to, uh, you know, prevail on this. If not, let's make sure that we, uh, Lend our support to Spencer Corlinia because he's been doing a fantastic job this year. Shout out to Spencer. All right. But going back to the story, all right, we got uh, the reason why uh, we're talking about Adam Sazic is because one of the biggest L's that Rolo took of this year is the beef and separation he had with Adam Sosnick. Not only that, but the reunification after the separation he had with Adam Sosnick. Now, some of y'all were talking, might be asking, dude, what? What the fuck did you just say? All right, reunification. Uh, what, what, what are you talking about? Why would he sever ties with Adam Sosnick and then reunify with Adam Sosnick? Well, I would answer the reunify part really quickly. It's because he's a bitch and he realizes he needs clout. All right, so he had to he had to reunify with Adam Sosnick. But as to why he had to sever ties, well, it's about the guy we mentioned earlier, John Anthony lawsuit. I mean, Anthony. Uh, lawsuit right <laughs> a lifestyle i'm sorry i actually genuinely forgot for a second okay uh listen he had john anthony lifestyle on the show and apparently rollo had a problem with that because rollo and john anthony lifestyle believe it or not were beefing and are still beefing rollo considered john anthony lifestyle is he's like mortal enemy at this point dog he absolutely despised the guy now there are a lot of things to not like about john anthony lifestyle but the reasons rollo had was absolutely ridiculous okay and one of the main was is he didn't like the fact that his three super chats were ignored like i shit you not bro but he had like Three or four super chats that he sent over to Adam Sosnick, and Adam Sosnick didn't read it. And now you might be asking, well, dude, if Adam Sosnick is supposed to be friends with Rolo, why didn't he read the super chats? I mean, he's he, he's sending them money. Like, why would he do that? Well, the reason is because Rolo was being a petty little bitch, okay? He was texting all these, like, crazy things on the super chat that obviously if you're someone who's running the show – he doesn't want to read the super chat to disrespect the guest. Now he's not going to read all these disparaging things about John Anthony lifestyle. So he's going to just ignore it. And that set Rolo a blaze. He couldn't, he absolutely couldn't fathom the fact that Adam Sosnick dared not read his super chat. So what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, re uh, re um, what do you call it? <laughs> we're going to react to this video, but we're going to do it from John Anthony lawsuits perspective. Okay. Because I mean, this beef, all started with him going on the show. So let's go ahead and get it. Chats to the tune of 60 bucks. The guy that cares about his flight and his hotel not being covered 
now is so upset that his $60 super chats were not read. They were defamatory. What a fucking dumb pussy. Come on, he's claimed to uh, slept with 15 in the whole manosphere. Okay. Now let's go into yeah. here. What he and says. then we can do that. So we had a guy on a couple of weeks ago, this guy, John Anthony, mm -hmm. he came on, he's claimed to uh, slept with 1500 people. Uh, this is someone that was booked months in advance. Yes. We right. You guys caught that, right? First off, you see him being like, ah, 1590. He tries to make fun of me for banging lots of hot girls. He's oh, like, oh, I don't think it's only him making fun of you. We're all making fun of you, dog. <laughs> That's true, like that oh, guy in Brazil that bangs a new girl every 30 seconds. 40 Leica, where Rolo's at, okay, is the level of a newbie. We have guys that join our program as a virgin, and six months later, they've surpassed 40 they count. That happens quite often, okay? So I can take any one of you watching and get you laid 40 times with 40 different new girls in six to 12 months very, very easily, okay? One to two new a week is very easy when you're doing it properly. If Thank you. Thank you. And, and listen, one thing that I, I absolutely can't stand about John Anthony lawsuit. All right. He he, like literally 10 seconds and he has to show his uh, uh, dating course where you can sleep with over 1500 women. Uh, while we're waiting for that to go ahead and finish up. OK, let's actually let's play the video of Rolo Tomasi basically officially severing ties before we get back into John Anthony lawsuits uh, video. Uh, hopefully by the time we get back, he's done with his little commercial here. I've already worked with Adam Sosnick and Valuetainment for a very long time. I am no longer uh, considering Valuetainment as sort of a friendly place to go right now, uh, especially not after they've had the fat kid from Brazil on that show. Um, uh, they've had uh, Alex from Playing With Fire, who are just basically illegitimate as far as I'm concerned. Uh, when you're propping up a guy like John Anthony Lifestyle on your show, a guy who is directly responsible for bringing Justin Wall, your boy, your, your, one of your good friends, Adam, your boy, Justin Waller's mom on to exploit her for content to do an attack piece on Justin Waller. Yo, that's when I got to hold up before you guys say, yo, Duke, yo, he brought on Justin Waller's mom. I don't even know who Justin Waller is. That sounds crazy. Why would John Anthony lawsuit bring on somebody's mama? Uh, uh, for those of you guys don't know, uh, Justin Waller is the guy who basically said he wouldn't simp for his daughters on uh whatever podcast. It was him, that guy right over here who had the debate with that one lady. All right, talk about I, I ain't simping for my daughters. I'm a man. I'm a real man, a masculine man. And real men don't simp for women. All right, not even there with my daughters. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that's, how, that's how fucked up these people are, all right? So before you go ahead and judge what John Anthony Lawsuit did, uh, according to Rolo Tomasi, just make sure you understand the full perspective here, who Jay Waller is, okay? Let's continue. I call your integrity into question, Adam. And if nothing else, I have to call, I call into question your ignorance in all of this. So when I see the show and everybody's talking about, oh, you know, is he going to get you blade and paid and do it? You're well, great. You know, have your have your call lines and everything else. But when people tweet in and I talked about this last week, I figured I would reheat it a little bit because some there's been more developments in this. But when you're on there and you're promoting your brand valuetainment overall and the content creators for valuetainment overall, and you're creating this mission statement of mm. well, we want to have you know open, honest debate and we want to have free speech and yada, yada. But yet you're willing to use the same tactics that they woke progressivist leftist cancel culture that you claim to hate so much when you use their tactics i can only call a fraud out when i see a fraud and to me that's fraud so when you are not reading the super chats in fact openly saying i've got an earlier one saying that they would not read those super chats because they were inflammatory blah blah blah. they were not inflammatory yes they were dog <laughs> you were you were sitting there talking about how can you let this guy on you hey hey, hey adam Sosnick, you're gonna destroy the quality of your channel like <laughs> you expect them to read that type of shit in front of the guest you're insulting first the fucking all who the hell are you to tell another person how to run their own platform, Rolo? That seems like queen energy to me, but I digress. Let's continue. <laughs> Adam, they were true. The dude has done nothing. John Anthony Lifestyle has done nothing but promote attack videos on myself, Myron, Fresh, uh, Jason, got his mom involved, dox my family, dox my mother-in-law, dox my wife, dox my daughter's location in Las Vegas, which is why I had to go and put up a uh, blink system, a, a webcam system for security, because there were one other thing. Uh, Rolo's daughter 
is a uh, I think she teaches pageantry and she has a massive page on Instagram. Uh, massive is a relative term in this case, okay? Uh, but she had a page on Instagram that basically promotes her little beauty pageants and whatnot. Now, that's not my speed, uh, so it's out there in the world. So, again, it, it's out there. So, if John Anthony Lawsuit found those photos of his, her daughter, they came from her daughter's public Instagram account promoting pageantry. And we were, able, we were even able to get further clarification with Britney Venti on this issue. Okay, and speaking of Britney Venti, uh, I'm going to tell you this. Uh, Adam Sosnick, the little meltdown he had, Rolo, Rolo had for over Adam Sosnick, that ain't the only thing that uh, the, the big L that Rolo took of 2023. There's a lot, to, to, especially when it comes to Britney Venti. So if Rolo don't make it to the next round chat, if Rolo don't make it to the rest next round chat, you'd have no idea what content you're missing right now because Rolo took a lot of hells. All right, it wasn't just even Brittany Venti. It was another another individual involved, too. I mean, talk about the troll of a lifetime. That that happened here, okay? So there's more to this. So if Rolo don't make it to the next round chat, y'all got to vote, okay? I don't know what else to tell you, but it is what it is. Yo, Janet G with the five shots to you says Tate is the number one 2023 loser. Actually, I, I think that's facts. Because out of all of these candidates we have here, he's the only one that's looking at some serious prison time. I'm talking about like some serious, serious prison time, like 30 years plus, okay? And the dude officially got charged October of this year. So, uh, yeah, uh, I would say that's number one. <laughs> but Janet G, it's not up to us, okay? It's up to the chat, the collective. Y'all got to vote on this, okay? So even I might think that Andrew Tate is the number one L of 2023. Somebody, somebody might think differently in the chat. So we don't know. But shout out to you. Happy New Year's. This is amazing. Let's continue. There are guys wandering around calling her name right after that trip. And by the way, exp showing pictures of my daughter when she's graduating from high school. That's, and that is true. And I've tried my damnedest to get that pulled off of, of YouTube. I make no qualms about that. I would have that canceled. I would have him canceled in a second for pulling that shit. To have him on there saying, oh, yeah, I've made a few crass videos. Fuck you and fuck you, Adam. He's so mad. For pulling that shit. He's so mad. Sorry, not sorry. You should have known better. At the very least, you should have known that this is the same dude that, that pulled Justin Waller's mom on so he could do an attack piece video, who, by the way, is also in cahoots with Anthony Johnson and has been on the payroll for a long time. Look how he's just sitting there and lecturing. He's just sitting there and lecturing Adam Sosnick like Adam Sosnick is his child. Right. Just the, the narcissism oozing out of this dude to think that you you can control other people's platforms and then just sit there and talk to them like some kind of child. So now I think uh, John Anthony lawsuit. I mean, I'm sorry. Why do I keep forgetting that? John Anthony lifestyle is done with his little uh, uh, sex commercial, whatever the fuck he was doing over there. So let's get back to what he has to say in the response of Roe Tomasi responding to Adam Sosnick, responding to him cutting ties with Adam Sosnick. Let's get it, chat. It wasn't, uh, it was actually on him, <laughs> oddly enough, by, uh, let's, I'll, I'll use names, by uh, Derek Moneyberg. Yeah, there's a Derek Moneyberg lawsuit. Okay? Yeah, that guy. That, you can't that guy. depose someone in Brazil because it's illegal. You can't have a foreign attorney from another country depose someone in Brazil. Okay. So Adam Sosnick had invited me on his podcast and I scheduled my deposition for that civil lawsuit. Okay, to be taken at the same time that I was going on the podcast. Okay, so this is misinformation for Rolo. I based the deposition around when I was already going to be in Florida for this podcast booking. Okay, so he doesn't know anything about what he's talking about. And that lawsuit is total bullshit, anyways. And I will update you guys as I can. The deposition has a, as a libel slander suit against him and, by the way, uh, Cornelia, uh, Spencer Cornelia. We mentioned that. We, we brought that up on uh, Access Vegas. So I. Interestingly enough, came into that information right before all this went down. Rolo's going to find himself in a fucking defamation suit, okay? Because he's going on, he's a rapist. He's making other claims. He's acting like I'm wanted by the police. He's saying that I'm hiring girls for students. Never happened, okay? He's implying and, and saying in other places, him and his business partner, Michael Sartain, oh, he had to flee the U.S. and all this stuff. No, those are bullshit narratives that were invented by Modern Life Dating, okay? A.K.A. Jonathan Hogwood. And he's being sued in two separate countries for those things. This guy doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about at all. And he's going to find himself in a defamation suit with all the stuff that he's saying that we have 
recordings of and that we have all the evidence compiled for. Okay, he's going to be receiving a letter from my lawyer very shortly. Can we clarify? Hey, hey, listen, this hold on. Asked, by, by hold the way, this is That's why we call him John Anthony Lawsuit. <laughs> my man does not hesitate to sue a motherfucker. This <laughs> shit's hilarious. Let's continue. I'm asking you this because was it just he was there conveniently or was he booked months in advance and they brought him out from Brazil. Yes, they did contact me months in advance. And since I can't be deposed in Brazil in that civil case, it made sense to do the deposition while I was in town doing this podcast. Those are the facts. I even have email proof that they contacted me and set this up okay, for me to come into Florida. And again, I can't be deposed in Brazil by a foreign attorney. So since I was going to be in the US anyways, that's when I got that deposition taken. Yeah, he doesn't know shit. He doesn't know the facts. He just goes on and just repeats stuff he's heard, concocts his little theories, spouts off complete misinformation, defamation, and there'll be consequences for all that. Because I know that my good friend, John Mark from Mark MLD, went and did his spot on Sosnick Show and made a $6,000, $7,000 flight from Japan to come and do that show. Now, of course, he, he makes the most of it. He goes and sees his boys and does hot dude army and all that other stuff too. Like he does, John does John, right? And John, oh, by the way, a giant thing lifestyle has this thing called hot dude army. Uh, I don't know what the hell that is, but that shit is sus as fuck, bro. <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. You got a bunch of men following you and you calling them hot dudes. And you got an army of hot dudes. What the fuck does that even mean, dog? <laughs> that, if that ain't saucy, I don't know what else to call it, bro. But uh, uh, don't forget, chat MLD is on the list so if you want to talk about who's the biggest ella 2023 all right listen he has an army of dudes called hot dudes okay just keep that in mind brand to have john come out from japan to come do their show they weren't paying did they pay john anthony lifestyle to come out i know they probably paid jason whitlock but i, I think they did i'm pretty sure of that but w whether they did or they didn't it's like it, it appears to me anyways that having worked with these guys for as long as I have, their business model is based on convenience. What kind of free content can we get? That's why whenever I was, by the way, I work with these guys, I work with Valuetainment from February of 2022, all the way up to August. I think that was the last time I did one. And then I went back and I did another show with, with him, with, with, with Sauce and, and Mike and I went out there and uh, I went on with Jedediah. And it's usually like sort of an interview of convenience, right? Because I'm already there. Hey, come up and do this. We'll send you a car. Okay, cool. They didn't have to pay for airfare. They didn't have to pay for hotels. I'm doing it. It's all on my dime. That's fine because I'm doing a press, a press tour, whatever passes for that these days for Access Vegas. Awesome. That's what I was doing for most of the year. So on the only time they've ever really paid for anything was the airfare for February. What a cheap fuck. Anthony Johnson's labeled Roe Tomasi as the most money grubbing, money grubbing piece of shit in the whole space. Okay, look at how fucking focused he is on, oh, is my airfare being paid? Is this being paid? Okay, me and Liz took a vacation for a week in Miami since we were going to do this speaking thing anyways on the podcast, and I knocked out the deposition while I was in town anyways, okay? And we took a vacation out of it. Like, what a fucking dumbass. Oh, who's paid for whose flights here and who's paid for whose gas money? And it's like, Jesus fucking Christ. 2022, and then I think <laughs> Sauce paid me like 500 bucks out of his own pocket to help me cover like a, a room night just on principle. And that's what we're dealing with right here. They want to know where my, 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 my point of contention is, is that these guys are supposed to be about entrepreneurship and have all this money. And, you know, you got Patrick Bet David who charges $30,000 an hour for a consult. That's crazy, by the way. That's fucking crazy, by the way. Any one of you, hey, let me hold on, 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 hold on. Let me just, let me just pause real quick. Let me not find out one of y'all paid the price of a brand new Hyundai for a consultation with Patrick Bet David of all people. Let me not find out. Let him scam them other bozos out there. This is why we do this show to prevent people from being scammed. Because I don't care what you say, Patrick Bet David is not worth 30 grand an hour to have a conversation with. I'm sorry, bro, but a lot of these dudes are weird. He does video, he does cribs style videos of his $25 million mansion in Fort Lauderdale. Now he's gonna talk shit on fucking Sosnick and, and Patrick Bet David, even though they Guys that enter our program end up with one to two new clothes a week against some woman that they thought was Preach's wife that they doxxed and like humiliated publicly. And that wasn't even Preach's wife. Trashes Adam Sosnick after he trashes Patrick Bat David after he trashes the value team at brand. Oh, I want to help you guys. Are you noticing a pattern here? He keeps acting to the direct opposite of what his verbals are saying. Okay, he's a fucking slimy scumbag piece of shit. And he's friends with all the scammers in the industry. It's not, it's not even so much John Anthony Lashley. You could have him on there. What, what bothered me 
Oh, it's not so much John Anthony lifestyle. That's why you went in the fucking super chats like a bitch and made up countless claims, calling me a rapist and other such things. Here's a newsflash rule. There's something called defamation per se. You don't even need to prove damages when you accuse someone of, of some kind of criminal offense acting like they've been convicted of something. Okay. For the record, never been accused or charged with rape to date. Okay. Therefore, if Rolo is on record calling me a rapist, which we have proof of, okay, he's committed defamation per se. We can sue him and we don't even need to prove damages. Okay. And he has no defense for saying that. He can't say, well, I thought he was. There's zero evidence of that ever happening. Okay. There's zero evidence of anyone ever accusing me of that. And I've certainly never been charged with that. So he can't say that. But he is, and there will be consequences. He was in the chat like, oh, fuck, 60 fuck is this? And he will be the next one to get fucking taken down. Watch. Well, is the fact that you had an entire chat log or a entire chat that got ignored. And if you're going to talk about being, you know, oh, open, a uh, critical debate, right? Uh, was it the, you can't test the strength of an idea unless you have the crucible of. It was defamatory. You'd never fucking. And then putting a chat. You want, okay, joke. It's nothing else to do he's going to come in and try to type defamation and when they won't fucking air it he's going to be like hey where's freedom of speech yeah you're going to fucking end up with a multi-million dollar lawsuit georgie porgy okay keep it up keep trying to get your little defamatory remarks heard say them wherever you want we're taking them up all the fucking clips wherever you defame me i have like multiple assistants on this task right now they're transcribing your videos they're searching for my name this sure guy, but i bro, venture to this guy dumb unbelievable. opinion are you always act like i'm putin over that it's defamatory Shut it down and now he's strategy out here it's not like i'm looking to curate people that are coming to bring drama this is someone that was booked no well one in and you know i don't ask anyone's permission can i bring this person on should i bring this person on if anything i'm here to have completely different voices completely different opinions mm -hmm. so you can formulate who you agree with and who you look at roller when he makes the terse face <laughs> tales from the crypt but yeah, I respect that about him. Yeah, shout out, shout out, shout out to you, uh, 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 John. Anything lawsuit for that? Uh, we're, we're not gonna go any further with that. But like, absolutely, okay. So now y'all, y'all might be thinking, yo, the way Rolo was talking, it seemed like yo Adam Sazik must have owed him a shit ton of money, okay? All them super chats he was saying he spent, and then pointing out the fact that Adam Sazik couldn't even pay for his flight. He couldn't fly him out like an instant thought over to his studio so they could go ahead and get the podcast going. Rolo was making a big deal about how, the, how he had to pay out of his own pockets to go to a show. Well, it doesn't matter because I got Access Vegas anyways, and I was on my way to Access Vegas. But still, I mean, I, I'm the godfather of the red pill. You could at least pay for my hotel. I mean, that, that ain't too much to ask. <laughs> I'll, take a, I'll, I'll take a crown plaza. <laughs> So some of y'all are asking, okay, Duke, it must have been a lot of money Rolo Super Chatted if he decided to act this crazy, so crazy to the point where he's severing ties with Adam Sosnick. How much did Rolo actually spend on Super Chats on Adam Sosnick's show? It was $60. It was $60, bro. <laughs> I mean, high-value men arguing on YouTube over sixty dollars i just want you to let that sink in my boy is willing to sever a relationship all because his former friend didn't want to read sixty dollars worth of super chats that are basically derogatory and baseless that's what caused this entire thing chat if this nigga doesn't make it on round two, <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you. But I would say that was the big one of the biggest L's Rolo has ever had starting off this year. And there are more. OK, so if you want to see more, let's make sure he's on the list moving forward. So the next person I'm going to talk about is, oh, boy, this guy. I, honestly, I struggle with this chat one. I struggle. I struggle with this one, chat. Listen. Uh, this guy, this person, I almost didn't want to bring on here because I'm like, he's not even relevant anymore, right? But why, why, why do we even need to talk about him, okay? But I had to realize that this individual had a sheer amount of L's this year. I mean, it was so bad. It was so bad that it would be crazy not to include this guy on this list. Matter of fact, he's also beef with big content critics out there. Okay, and it, it was just it was just out there, right? It was crazy, and guaranteed 
He lost every single one of them. He's still struggling on with his channel right now, but uh, realistically, it's not looking too good. My prediction, he'll probably be out by 2024, but I'll be happy. I'll, I'll be surprised if there's a 2024 CME, okay? And the next candidate we're going to be talking about is Donnie Boy. That's right, Donnie Boy. This guy, again, you guys are like, oh, two, wait, whoa, whoa, Donnie Boy. <laughs> Okay, I can see that. Yeah, see what I'm saying? Y'all can see what I'm talking about. Donnie Boy had a shit ton of L's this year, okay? But we got to start with one of my favorite ones. It's when Donnie Boy basically severs ties with Adam Sosnick. Oh, goodness. It's Adam Sosnick again. He severs ties with Adam Sosnick. Now, this reason he did this wasn't because he was petty like Royal Tomasi, his daddy. Okay, he wasn't petty like Royal Tomasi because Royal Tomasi he severed ties with Adam Sostick because of sixty dollars. Okay, bro, you wouldn't guess the reason why Donnie Boy severed ties with Adam Sostick as well. He was the third person to do it this year. Okay, <laughs> and he did it because he didn't like the way the women he antagonized reacted to him on Adam Sostick's show. All right, he didn't like the fact that Adam Sosnick didn't put the women in their places, even though he started talking shit to them. Okay, chat, I would be a fool if I didn't include this bozo as one of the biggest candidates for the loser of 2023. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get to it, bro. I feel like I'm having deja vu with all these Adam Sosnick ones. <laughs> sure, I could care less what his boundaries are. Yeah. <laughs> If his girl, his wife, whoever wants to do what they want to do together, that and that's one yeah. of the first things I said. That's his yep. prerogative. Yeah, okay. literally. I'm not sure like why I care what no. I just feel like this portion is a waste. I, I would I never want to I listen. Here's what I'm saying. I'll let him respond. Hey, yo, Jack, listen, this painted on shoe polish hairline alone should earn him the title of the biggest loser of 2023. If this nigga Donovan Sharp doesn't make it into the next round, I don't know what else to tell y'all, chat. I don't know what else to tell y'all. Let's continue. I'll say, a lot to say about it. Because Donovan is actually a very uh, public figure in the relationship space. And a lot of men listen That's, to him. So you may have a son that is listening to him. You may have a son of a friend that is listening to him. So it's uh, not about him you. Him. No reasonable I, person. I literally that know that no not, one that listens to him. <laughs> somebody's lacking self-confidence somewhere. A lot of men and, are. And, are, and, are, and, and, and I see birds of people like him. Flock together That's why they have to people listen like to him. people like him. A no high-value woman is going to ask you four times to be with you. No high-value woman is going to say, hey, like, I want to be with you. Nah, I don't know if you're ready for that. Hey, I want to be with you. A high-value woman knows where she puts her intention. No such thing as high-value woman, sweetie. Okay, great. They they know where they put their intention. They know where they put their their. I mean, we we move with purpose. So why am I going to ask you four times? Hey, take I want to be with you. Hey, what? It's not going to work that way. We're going to grab our stuff and we're going to take it to somewhere else uh, where it could be valued. Unlike you know, having to ask you four times. It's I not no happening. Idea. I get it. I have no idea what you just said, but that's okay. These are my boundaries and these are my expectations. So wait a minute. He doesn't want to listen to her, but we're now having to listen to him. Bye. Bye, Donovan. Bye. So hold on. No, no, I'm I'm we've got five more minutes. Oh, you wish I would leave. Don't you? I'm not going nowhere, sweetie. No, you don't need to stay. Let's have a little respect, guys. Wait a minute. First of all, I'm gonna talk for a second, guys. I'm not sweetie. My name's Claudia Ann Hibbert Smith. Let's we'll go one by one. Okay, sweetie. Linda. He Linda, knew. I don't even have time for this. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't know who he is. Or, I've never heard anybody. I don't Do know anybody that listens. Do you have any no, I don't. For him? I, he's irrelevant. I don't know. Okay. Nope, she's like triggered because she spent. She's triggered because somebody spent fifteen hundred dollars on a date on her, and she's not with him right now. Oh, no, all right, yo, I know we're we're getting into the shorter version of these guys' L's, but I gotta provide context here, okay? For those of you guys who didn't catch the main live stream that Adam Sosnick had with Donovan Sharp on this show, Donovan Sharp came in crazy. He came in talking crazy and he's mad disrespectful this dude thought this was just another fresh and fit episode he he was surely mistaken because obviously adam sosnick does not run his platform like that adam sosnick 
obviously does not he doesn't Frank Castle like Myron does or I mean he did he, I think he did kick a bunch of girls off the show before but it's not to the, the the same rudeness and the veracity you see with Myron and some of these other guys that that are wanna be pod podcast bros okay but Donovan came in crazy disrespecting these women not even addressing them by their names basically addressing them by their by by their body parts essentially yo you with the legs you with the hair you with the tits you with the ass right it's like yo black lady over there it's like yo Yo, bruh, they all have names. So wait a minute. They got to address you by Donovan, but you can't even take the time to address the person or even ask them what their name is as you're addressing them. So obviously these ladies were pretty pissed off and they gave Donnie Boy the business. Now, we got to keep it reality, okay? Here's what's going to happen. If this was Fresh and Fits podcast, this wouldn't fly. This would not fly. And the reason why I'm letting you guys know that, because the next video we're going to play of Donnie Boy is him severing ties with Adam Sosnick because of this very reason. Uh, Adam Sosnick didn't Frank Castle these women as they were standing up for themselves. But let's continue. Um, I didn't uh, want to no. be with that person. I've actually had that's men spend even more than that's that. But you're broke yourself. That's why you have to do this. <laughs> you're broke. So anyways, I don't I don't want to acknowledge him, honestly. He's okay. such, okay. A peasant, okay. such a peasant. I can't. Okay, hold on. I can't well, even... Let me, let me, let me. You're a peasant. You don't need to talk right, right now. Adam's talking. He said I can't. I can't deal with a peasant. I respect all our guests. I respect Donovan. Yeah, go ahead, Donovan. Go ahead. Thank you. Um... Having a guy spend fifteen hundred dollars on a date on you and that is not his real hairline, by the way. That is not his real airline. It starts back here. All right. <laughs> like at least put a hat on my dog. I've had even more, like way more money. On you. Baby, baby, that's not a flex, sweetie. You're not in a relationship. Because you're broke. You got all these dudes spending. Because you know, you're broke. You? I was because you're broke. Not what? Because you're broke. Because okay, why, why, because Adam, you're broke. Adam, would you tell them because would, you're would you, broke, Linda? Would you, why, because why, you're broke, please, just so we're clear. And he's I, everyone, a peasant, I don't want to talk to a peasant. Why do you think I don't want to talk to a peasant? I think he's, because she knows, she no regular broke. man that has a lot of money to is gonna she's care about $1,500. She's rich, she uh, understands, she can walk into any store right now and spend $1,500 the same way she can buy. $1,500 worth of groceries. He can't do that because he doesn't have that money. So I don't, so I don't, I don't, I can't acknowledge him. I don't know him. I don't know who this person so is. You're calling, you know, I don't know so who, I don't even know anybody who listens to this man. Okay. I, I have no idea who he is. I'm sorry. I just don't. And it's, world, sad, it's, sad, it's sad because he's, just don't. he's teaching it's this to men. He's teaching, he's teaching, he's teaching this to, no to men. He's teaching. Yeah, but you have to understand. I said I wasn't married. Like I just, but you have to understand too broke. People <laughs> hurt people. Hurt people hurt people. 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 He doesn't you do have a comment? I mean, I'm just, I feel like when it comes to standards, it has nothing to do with your personal preference. This person has his standards. I have my standards. You have your standards for you. Okay. You have standards for your kids, what you want your kids to do. But it's not a personal preference. He feels comfortable with what he feels comfortable with. We feel comfortable with a whole different ballgame. But it's not, a, it's not meant to get into a heated argument and, like, call each other names and shit. You know, like, we're just having a conversation. Okay. We're on a podcast. Like, there's no peasant... Or broke, or this, or that, because I could be broke yesterday and rich well, tomorrow. Well, those are ad hominems. Sorry. Okay. No, you're right. Thank those you are for that. Go ahead. The floor is yours. How you said the next person was going to speak, and then oh, they, what do you mean? No, I was finished. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, whoever. Yeah. Whoever's, think, whoever's next. That's I think fine. if he has his standards and he has who respects his standards and should be respected, but I don't yeah. have to. You don't have yeah. to. Exactly. Don't, I don't, he wants this, this X, Y, Z. What we all and I can respect it. May I agree with it? So I agree saying may I. So this is great, awesome. Um, now, as far as like the different preferences for different people, this is this is this is something I like to talk about a lot, especially when women. And I for, I keep forgetting your name, the one sitting next to the attorney, the the shorter one, the darker skinned one with the um, uh, with the tattoo. That's kind of <laughs> I mean, just listen to this guy. Yo, they got names, dog. At least if not, ask them what their names are. That's people. Me. I, I, I just, yeah. She has a name. You've been listening the whole time. You should have wrote it down. That short girl, come Lita on. Hantis. I'm sorry, uh, Lita Hannes. Lita. Well, you're now getting okay, Leah Hantis. So now you're getting triggered on me describing somebody. Got it. Anyway, what Leah Hantis was saying okay. is that is it's that a lot of people like to say, well, different people have different preferences, and that's correct. But the preferences that like we're talking about are surface level preferences. So, so for example, hey, yo, chat. I'm sorry, I gotta break the rules for a second. What's her name again? 
What's her fine ass name again? I, I keep forgetting, bro. Is it is it Rachel? Like I keep forgetting her name, but she's fine as hell, dog. Like I, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> some, some guys like blondes. Some guys like brunettes. Some guys like Latinas. Some guys like black women. Some guys don't date white girls. On the other side of the coin, some women like tall guys. Some women like guys have red heads. Some women like hairy guys. Some women like guys that are nice and smooth. Those are the surface level. Uh, those are the surface level preferences that that makes us sexually attractive to one person. But what makes a person an attractive prospect goes below the skin. That's their confidence, their swagger, what they do for a living. And of course, you, you learn about these things by asking and observing these conversations. So while our surface level preferences are all different, by and large, we all pretty much want the same thing out of a partner. No, we don't always, we don't all have the exact same, you know, 100,000 list data points, but most men want a woman who's fit, feminine, friendly, and faithful. And most women just want a guy who's going to be nice to them, take good care of them, be her protector, her lover, and her bodyguard. That's really all there is to it. All the hair color and the height and all that, that might vary from person to person, but we all generally want the same things when it comes to relationships. Donovan, last question for you. Uh, tell us about the CME. What's the schedule? What's going on? What should people expect? Oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Because if Donovan makes the list on the next round, if he somehow makes it to the next round, okay? Listen, you will find out what happened to the CME, okay? We'll find out, okay? Because I, I tell you, it wasn't it wasn't the greatest. <laughs> it wasn't all that he, cra he, he he bragged about it would be, okay? It was, it was ass. It was complete ass, dog. Okay, so let's get to the video of Donnie Boy basically severing ties officially with the uh, Adam Sosnick platform over this incident right here. Now, you guys watch the clip where everything went kind of crazy, right? And it was all because of Donovan Sharp's fault. So even people were rightfully so criticizing yo donnie boy why this is a typical red pill move okay you don't like the way the energy that you dish out and then you cry like a bitch like why what is the point of severing tie with adam sosnick we watched the show he wasn't that all of a dick to you bro you you seem like you started a lot of shit but again it just shows you these guys they can't handle it bro they have they have ego issues let's continue and he for whatever reason i guess he's busy i don't know if he's out of i don't know what he's doing um but for whatever reason we have not been able to we haven't been able to um we haven't been able to make contact. And so eventually I'm going to have to have this conversation with him. Um, I'm not the kind of guy that likes to do stuff uh, via text message or voice note. I like to talk to people voice to voice or face to face. Hey, man, like, et cetera, et cetera. So here's the here's the announcement. Let's go ahead and rip off the Band-Aid. Um, I am disassociating myself with Adam Sosnick and the uh, and the Valuetainment podcast um, indefinitely. Um, and the reason for this, the reason for this is it's not because I don't like Adam. It's not, it's, it's not that I don't think Adam, it's not that I think Adam's a bad guy. Um, I think Adam's a great guy. He's still my friend. As far as I know, my relationship with him outside. Okay, I'm sorry, bro. If this don't give you snake energy, I don't know what else to tell you. He's going public telling his fans that he's severing ties with his best friend, but sitting there saying, yeah, I don't know. I'm still friends with him, though. That is fake, bro. And he didn't even do shit to you, bro. You just you just being a crybaby. I swear to you, chat. If he don't make it to the next round, I don't know what else to tell you, bro. But he's be this is a big loss right here. This is a loser right here, bro. And, and the fact that he's just like, oh yeah, he's still my friend, but uh, I'm severing ties with you in a very public and uh, disgraceful manner. It's like, bro, the disrespect. I, I I wouldn't be able to take that just lying down, dog. Like that's crazy. If I was Adam, I ain't talking to your ass again. Not after this. You couldn't even talk to me, bro. Really? Of uh, outside of podcasting has remained unchanged. Uh, I'm still going to lean on him for financial tips, financial advice, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but when it comes to this community um, and dealing, uh, you know, trying to get the message out, trying to wake up men, uh, valuetainment at this point, uh, it does not serve that end. Um, it does not serve that end. Um, and listen, you know, I'm not going to sit here and blame him for it. He's never, like I said in my other discussion about this, is that uh, Valuetainment, the Soscast, he never purported to be about men's, you know, men's improvement. Like I said before, he said the purpose of the Valuetainment is to is to uh, 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 get laid, show people how to get laid, get paid, and do it your way. Um, so, you know, um, I thought that I, I thought that I could, you know, maybe contribute. Um, because he, you know, and listen, unceremoniously, he showed up at the CME last year uninvited, which was great. It was absolutely, it was absolute, it was absolutely great. He showed up, gave us all the publicity and everything in between. And I said, you know what, this guy, this guy really just gave us publicity. He didn't have to do that. Like he's associated with PBD. Like that was cool of him to do. Uh, but since then, um, you know, having had access to all of the red pill guys and listen, he's had some great shows, the fresh and fit live event. That was a home run. There is no, there, there, there is no doubt about it. That is absolutely a home run. Um, <laughs> But uh, there have been way too many instances. There have been way too many instances where he loses control of the panel and the women are able to just talk and do and say whatever they want to, carte blanche. Like, 
That's why he's mad. That's why he's mad. The whole reason he's severing ties with Adam Sosnick is because the women are just allowed to say what they want. Carte blanche. And they don't control the panel like Fresh and Fit would. Listen, if this guy don't make it to the next list, chat, I don't, I really don't know what to tell y'all, all right? So the next person on the list is also, by definition, actually tied to Donnie Boy, okay? And Donnie Boy actually helped improve her career. And this person is Just Pearly Things. Now, as you guys know, Just Pearly Things has literally, if you want to talk about L's taking this year, there is a lot. I mean, talking about losing the platform, losing the support, getting embarrassed on Pierce Morgan. There's so much more chat even with just pearly things it was hard figuring out which l to put together for this year's streamathon okay but listen we got we had to focus on the main one okay so if pearl does make it past this list okay listen there's a lot more L's coming down the pipeline. But this one we're going to focus on are, are two particular one based off of one podcast episode, all right? And the two particular ones we're going to be talking about is the uh, uh, the Nick Fuentes, the infamous Nick Fuentes episode. Now, you guys know that's where a lot of – I mean, things were going bad for Pearl before that, but it really skyrocketed with the whole Nick Fuentes thing because that almost brought down her entire career. I shit you not. That almost brought down her entire career. And y'all might be thinking, oh, Duke, what? I, I, I'm new to the Pearl thing. What's happening? I'm, gonna, I'm assuming you're new to this, okay? But uh, essentially, Pearl was uh, sitting here uh, podcasting it up with a racist known as Nick Fuentes, okay? And Nick Fuentes said a bunch of things on her show, which was disparaging against black people, Jewish people, and basically just about just about everything else. They just proved how clueless they were on historical topics. And Pearl just proved how racist she was by comparing the Jewish Holocaust because Nick Fuentes was literally denying the Holocaust existed. And then Pearl then turned around and said that, yeah, just like the blacks, you know, embellish slavery, you know, and they're trying to make it worse than what it is because Democrats want the vote. What? <laughs> oh, my God, bro. That was horrible. Like A lot of people, black folks, all right, we were pissed. We were up in arms. This was probably the biggest controversy of Pearl's entire career. I, I, yo, you guys are like, yo, there's more to this? There's more to this. But, yes, this right here was the biggest controversy of Pearl's show. Because, number one, she has a bunch of black employees, mainly from Nigeria, which is Unfortunately, that's the country I'm from. So it's like, damn, y'all niggas just, this is just embarrassing. <laughs> All right. She got uh, Queen Riches and who's the guy that blessings or whatever his name is, who she might be having sex with. We don't know. All right. That's just allegedly speaking. But uh, those two have been seen being awfully close to each other. So it's uh, <laughs> very interesting. And, and listen, blessing is her type because she reminds him. Or she it reminds her of her ex boyfriend, the angry reaction guys on TikTok. Okay, so uh, we don't know what's going on. But the fact of the matter is, she had black employees. Auntie Jenny was one of them. Now she thought it up on YouTube. Right? Somebody come get your grandma. But still, all right. And we and none of them really had anything to say about this racist shit she was doing. And honestly, none of them saw that podcast as something to actually criticize. Okay, it's like yo, this was bad on all counts. You had Nick Fuentes who was there where he literally was denying the Holocaust. And the other thing we're going to react to is him on the same podcast glorifying Stalin and Hitler. And Pearl did not clap back at any of that at all. I'm sorry, bro, but when you get to the point where you're on a platform and somebody's saying, yeah, you know what? Hitler wasn't all that bad. He wasn't all that bad. You know, I mean, <laughs> this right here, it's all an exaggeration by the Jews, okay? The Jews are, are making it seem that, like, Hitler was worse than what he actually was. But realistically, Hitler and Stalin, I mean, it wasn't that bad. The Jews, gas chambers, no, 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 you're, you're wrong. They actually put stuff on the shirts of the Jewish guys that had to work in the camps, all right? And some of them were allergic to the shirts, and they ended up dying. But no, it wasn't as bad as the Jews were making it out to be. Now, if you thought what I just uttered was historically false, and just and just woefully inaccurate. I'm quoting Nick Fuentes, all right? So let's get to the first part of this video where she denies uh, slavery, well, not denies slavery, but says um, slavery was an embellishment. Let's go. Oh, we got the super chat too, by the way. We'll get into it, chat. Don't worry about it. Y'all know I never miss a super chat, but we got to get rolling with the show. Let's continue. They'll use some horrible thing that's going to happen. Like they, they would use the Holocaust, but the environmental people will say global warming. The women people will say, I don't know, grape, um, yeah. <laughs> whatever it is. Um, 
but yeah, that, that sounds really similar. Yeah. And that, that's really, um, cause the thing is like when people call me a Holocaust denier, they say, they make it out like, that's my job. Like, mm -hmm. hi, you know, like I go to weddings and parties, like, Hey, I'm here to like deny the Holocaust or something. Well, like that's exactly I don't even know anything. Really. You don't oh, deny you're on your podcast and you're denying the Holocaust. I, I, and the fact that she built her platform with black people and this, this was, she had the show for it. Oh, oh my goodness. More deep said, take can be considered until he starts serving his time. His simps are still paying for his program. By the way, JBT is just pearly things. Yep, yep, I got you. Hey, hey listen, if Pearl doesn't make it to round two, all right, I don't know what else to tell you guys, bro. All right, Tony Pray man, this shot you for the five sets up, dude. The biggest loser of 2023 is MLD. Hey, you gotta vote. You gotta vote. I think so too, but you gotta vote. It says exposed by Angela Knight. Oh, there's more. Oh, there's more with MLD. So if he makes it to the next round, we just might see that. All right. But he says, uh, exposed by Angela and I when he couldn't stand on what he said in the chat that Angela was fat. That's fact. You call somebody out their name and call them out, make fun of them. And then when you're there face to face, you can't handle the heat, bruh. That's if that that's a, that's an L if I hadn't seen one. But like again, if he makes it to the next round, we'll see. Okay, but yeah, you're absolutely right. It, it was just completely it's completely bullshit, right? But yeah, he, he, he guaranteed he was the fourth one this year uh, to cut ties with Adam Sosnick. <laughs> yo, yo, y'all notice all this shit? Just Adam Sosnick is right there in the middle with all these bozos. It's just it's just so telling, bro. Yo, CD with the five shots. He says, if you can afford 30 grand an hour to consult someone, you must be doing pretty well in life. So what would you need to consult him about? Facts. What? what and this is Patrick Bedeva we're talking about, right? The guy's charging $30,000 an hour. Thirty thousand dollars an hour to talk to them. All right, I don't. If you have the money to pay thirty thousand dollars to talk to this clown, okay. What are you? He's not. He's a dating coach, so he's not teaching you how to get women. What? What exactly is he consulting you about? It's not. Like he's consulting you how to start a business. All right. He ran an insurance company that is riddled with fraud allegations. Okay, and he ended up managing to sell it. So it's not like he's like a super smart businessman because the nigga's on YouTube right now. So he doing the same shit with us. All right. He over here covering election cycles and shit. Okay. So we, what what exactly are you paying Patrick McDavid thirty thousand dollars for for an hour? That, I mean, that, 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 if anything, y'all lose for that. <laughs> y'all, whoever paid that amount of money to talk to this clown for an hour, you lost. This guy got exposed by CoffeeZilla for the fraud. He couldn't even explain his sham insurance company that he sold, okay? He couldn't explain that to uh, to CoffeeZilla, and CoffeeZilla was hot on his tails. And you know what he said to CoffeeZilla, Amish? He called them trolls for calling them out. So let me get this straight. You would rather pay $30,000 to an alleged scammer for one hour of what type of consultation exactly, I don't know. But CD, you're freaking right, bro. Like, if you're that rich, what? Why are you paying this dude? Like, what? What can he offer you that is going to be beneficial? I, I, I don't get it, bro. Again, a lot of the people on the internet, they're pretty stupid, bro. <laughs> don't 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 underestimate that. They're pretty goddamn stupid. I, uh, no, not really. No, I mean you. you you agree that it happened you just think it wasn't just jewish people i just think they're like i don't believe in the six million number i don't believe in the gas chambers thing i don't think that happened you don't believe in the gas chambers no that's fake uh, well, well, now, again y'all thought i was making that shit up he doesn't believe jews got gas even though there are photos of it there were accounts numerous accounts of even nazi soldiers themselves who were arrested okay testifying that this is what they did even in the trials afterwards when they went through a lot of this nonsense they the gas chambers is pretty indisputable but here is nick fuentes on just pearly things podcast basically denying that this ever happened. And again, this is a dangerous precedent that it sets because look at the world now. Everyone shares this. I mean, a lot, I don't say everyone, but majority of people kind of share the same opinions Nick Fuentes is sharing right now. And back then, we said this was crazy. Today, apparently, is normal. Just check. Okay. <laughs> That's totally fake. Okay. That just sounds like ridiculous. Because think about it this way. You have like a war going on. This is like this is Hollywood stuff. So the idea is they tr they created a chamber that looked like a shower, and then when they got in, they locked the doors. Surprise! We tricked you. Actually, it's a that just to me just sounds like Hollywood, and there's no evidence that that existed. Like as you go to the remaining death camps, two of them I believe were like destroyed, and then two of them remain, and they don't even have anything that resembles that. The the stuff that they say that they used as a gas chamber, they use Zyklon B. 
Zyklon B gas was a delousing agent. You know, they would bring in the clothes and the disease was rampant at that time. It's a prison, you know, it's like all these people are stuck together and there was a war going on. People get typhus and they get sick. So they would delouse the clothes. And so they put clothes there and they'd use Zyklon B as a chemical agent to clean the clothes. And then, and then years, decades later, they said it was a gas chamber to industrially kill people. I just think that's why would, load. why would they make this stuff up? So to make it more compelling. That's why they make that's why they make movies about it. That's why they write these dramatic fictional accounts of it. But don't they have people that were actually there that could speak on it? Do they not talk about it? No. They they because all the people that Oh come on, there are Holocaust survivors. They didn't sur- they didn't survive the gas chamber. They just talk about people. They talk about things they saw when they were like little kids and you know, they didn't even understand what was going on. Mm-hmm. So, and there's also this thing where if you look you at don't the, think any adults made it out, none. The, all the survivors we hear today uh, no, that's one. And two, I think that with a lot of them, they embellish the story. Because if you look, there was a survey that was done in Israel of Holocaust survivors, and there was like an absurd number of them that said that they were operated on by Joseph Mengele, the Nazi scientist. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, did like millions of people get operated on by this guy, or did they just like come up with that? Did they, is that just something that happened in their imagination? Nick Fuentes can't fathom the fact that uh, this guy is can be in charge of multiple uh, chain gas chamber institutions or outposts out there. He couldn't fathom the fact that that's something that someone like that could be the architect of, right? He just thinks, oh, well, how can millions of Jews see this one guy? No, he had a whole operation and system behind him, bro. Like, again, the ignorance just allowed to spew on Pearl's podcast. You should not feel sorry for this woman about the backlash she got for this okay it was pure hatred and on top of that she came out with a song talking about why can't we talk about the jews right singing that shit and got busted on pierce morgan for that dumb shit okay listen uh, she deserves every criticism because if somebody was knowledgeable you can easily combat this idiot and with facts like this guy doesn't know what he's talking about so she pretty much allowed this racist all right and this holocaust denier to just sit there and just say yeah you know the gas chambers it's a myth hollywood make that up hollywood is created by the jews i mean come on think about it pearl i mean it is what it is and she's sitting there just shucking and jiving oh yeah oh yeah wait really what i mean the idiocy bruh Where's the responsibility to your audience? And I think that with a lot of it, that's what's going on. Because there's no, there is no, um, like, hard evidence that there were well, why gas would they, Why would they make that up? Like I said, that's, that's why they make, that's why they make Boy in the Stripe pajamas. Because it's the Jewish people in the media. It's about creating this narrative that the, that the Jewish trauma is the worst oh, trauma that anyone's ever had. The same way had. they do that with Roots, because Roots, the, the founder of, of Roots said, or the, the guy who made Roots said in quotes, I wanted to make a myth for my people to live by. That was, yeah. that was the quote that he used. So like that kind of sounds similar. It's like the system. It's the same system. Well, and here's what the Jews say. This is what they say about the Holocaust. They say, and they will literally, like, for example, in the Ukraine war, Zelensky said, this is like the Holocaust. And the state of Israel came out and said, that's anti-Semitic. You cannot compare it to the Holocaust because it's part of their belief that the Holocaust is the wor- literally the worst thing that ever happened. Mm-hmm. Why? Okay. So y'all, if y'all missed what Pearl said, let me just rewind that back. Okay. I, I actually am not going to rewind it because it, it's actually going to not make me feel the greatest. Okay. Because I can't believe she compared the fact that this guy was denying the Holocaust to roots and saying that the guy who wrote roots was basically saying, I want a myth for my people to live by. That's why. Okay. So we embellish the stories that happened during black slavery because, how, because, you know, we want to make it, we want to trigger black folks, especially when the democratic election comes comes out we got to trigger the black folks that's why they embellish roots all the damn time and here's the thing alex haley is the guy she's talking about not not a who, who's that guy i keep forgetting he, he needs a he desperately needs a fade i forgot what the dude's name was bro uh put it in the chat if you remember but alex haley is the other guy that actually wrote roots okay and the quote that she's referenced to is basically her uh alex haley saying that he didn't really know exactly what happened in the past right and he wasn't there to experience it but what he the, the knowledge that he does know is from accounts that were written and even people who were descendants of people who lived through those periods of time that can accurately attest to the kind of abuse black slaves went through during that time so for pearl to look at that whole scenario and say yeah no Alex Haley just purposely embellished that so that way it can trigger black folks whenever, uh, you know, 
we want we want we want to get black folks mad and remind them not vote Republican or whatever the fuck it is, right? Because again, these guys are super super far right. This is the alt right we're talking about here. Okay, so they they obviously don't like Democrats. So you know they, they think that it's a conspiracy. Every time you know voting time comes around, all right, we got we got to parade you know uh, black folks out there and we got to do roots and stuff like that. So clearly this is an L, all right. But if you think that was bad, all right, we got to play the part where this guy literally glorified hitler and stalin on her platform meanwhile let me let y'all know this okay this is someone who uh the person i i i uh, i criticize uh king riches i'm sorry queen bitches um, i'm sorry queen riches all right this guy will sit there and deny because this is the very same podcast where his girlfriend was on where he wasn't on, right? He wasn't, he's claiming he wasn't there. But this same racist who denies the Holocaust, who then glorifies Hitler, then turns around and says, hey, Queen Reaches, your girlfriend, her people, Italians, would be ashamed of her for dating the likes of people like you. And King Riches let that all slide. And his excuse is, well, I wasn't there. Uh, why, why do I, he, he's not even worth my time. Really? But apparently it's worth three hours and 20 minutes of Pearl's time because that's how long she had him up there giggling and laughing about how they can ridicule black folks and Jews out here. It's just ain't that funny. Ain't that real funny? Like, 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 listen, if this woman doesn't deserve the biggest L of 2023, listen, if she doesn't make it to the next round chat, I don't know what else to tell you. But I digress. Let's continue. Ship with Stalin. They don't repudiate Stalin's legacy. They actually honor Stalin's legacy because Let's Stalin won this. World War II. And Hitler brought Germany back from the catastrophic ruin of World War I. Germany was destroyed after that war, and they were literally destroyed for being great. I'm not even German. I'm not even really pro-German, necessarily. Germany was destroyed for being great. It's not like they were trying to take over the world twice and almost succeeded twice. All right? No. We, we just... We just... We just... Uh you know, destroy them because they were great. No, they represent an existential threat to the rest of the Western world at the time. They were a real problem. All right, we failed to neutralize them in World War One, and then Hitler popped up in World War Two, and shit got worse. All right, so no, it wasn't because the Germans were great that we 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 attacked them or or we had a war. No, that's not how that worked. They literally tried to dominate people, and people weren't, and the coalition wasn't having it. OK, this guy is an idiot. He's an idiot, bro. But Germany was destroyed for being great. It's because at the turn of the last century, their industrial output was outpacing Great Britain's. And Great Britain is the hegemonic power in Europe that kept all the other countries in check. They were so powerful. They kept everybody in check. That's the idea. And so World War One and World War Two was about how Germany became unified and then was able to challenge Great Britain. And so it's about this this power clash between two superpowers. And and so, in, a, in effect, what happened in World War I is they fought it through to a stalemate. America enters the scene and decisively, on the side of Great Britain and France, and decisively wins the war. And then Germany is destroyed and punished for the whole thing. So they were destroyed for being a great country. They were destroyed for challenging the British. Yes. Oh, my God. Okay, it's not about Nick Fuentes. This is about Pearl. So we're not going to get into this. But just this guy. If you tell me you're a racist and a fucking undercover Nazi without telling me you're a racist and an undercover Nazi, this man is literally saying that hey, Germany was just destroyed. It's not like they tried to take over the world. Like that. No, 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 no. They were destroyed because they were simply just great. I mean, their industrial output. Can we just talk about that for a second? This guy is an idiot, bro. And the fact that Pearl is ill-equipped with the information to combat this nonsense, it's very telling why she shouldn't be hosting idiots on a platform if she, if she isn't ready for that uh, kind of uh, energy. Hitler comes in and say it was a miraculous thing. Nobody will deny this. He saved the German economy. Listen he to made this. people feel proud to be German again. He went after her because Germany was also open season. It was communists and anarchists fighting. They wanted to do the same thing in Germany that they did in Russia. Russia for decades was chaos because an, you know anarchists killed the czar. They killed Alex the Third, and then Nicholas the Second took power. Again, Anarch this guy, what he does is he takes different uh, points of time or events that happen and connects them together and says, "No, this is the reason why." No, no, no. there are a bunch of lead ups to all of that. All right, there was a bunch of lead ups to that, and you're not you're you're basically being disingenuous by not even talking about the nuances of it. But again, this is how they brainwash a lot of young kids to become alt right fucking crazy people. All right, because then they're not telling the full truth of what's going on. He's saying, "Well, Germany was attacked because they were just being great." What? 
what? And then Hitler, when he came back, he just, I mean, he just revived the German infrastructure and, and the German people loved him. And all. it's like, okay, bro, it seems like you're romanticizing this a little too much because uh, Hitler did a lot of things to take over. No, uh, listen, Nazi, listen, Hitler didn't just pop up on the scene and says, hey, listen, I'm going to make everything great. And uh, yeah, you guys just follow me. It's going to be, hap- it's going to happen. No, there were a bunch of parties before that that were actually more unified that rejected Hitler and the Communist Party, right? And even there were multiple times where he tried the uh, Nazi Party, not Communist but like that um I mean, you can you can kind of say they were they were weirdos. but like still right but, but he he uh he, he the, the rejection okay it wasn't it wasn't just that because they they vehemently were uh, were opposed to what Hitler was doing what Hitler ended up doing with his party is after he hijacked the party what he ended up doing was actually putting out what what do you call it, propaganda he had uh, the, the the not the, the, his political party had their own police out there that were basically a bunch of thugs they would go out there and beat up people and intimidate people to become Nazis or essentially, to join the party. So it wasn't this smooth sailing when Hitler just came on the scene, said a few rhetoric, and everyone decided, oh, yeah, this is our guy. This is the new... No, it wasn't that. He did a lot of shit and a lot of grimy underhanded bullshit with the Nazi party in order to achieve power. And even then, when he was getting close, it was a bit underhanded because the uh, the person in time who was in charge basically ended up getting duped out of his own position because he gained so much power underhandedly so it, it, again there are a bunch of nuances that this guy is missing out on but he's just making it seem like no 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 after world war one and the german defeat because the germans were so great okay world war ii came about and hitler the reason why is because german became great again and hitler came out and revived no it wasn't that bro it wasn't that Okay, and a lot of people were forced to do things that they didn't really want to do, but it was in belief of the party itself. And if they didn't do it, guess what? They'd be taken away by the secret police into camps and never be seen again. That's how crazy shit was back then. So for you to just let me just get back to this. Markets were bombing things. There was a communist revolution. They slaughtered the royal family. It was a disaster for years. They became a pariah state. It took them a decade to normalize relations with other countries. And so the communists and the leftists wanted to do the same thing to Germany that they had done to Russia. And the Russians were sponsoring it. You know, the Soviet state, which is a very rich and powerful state, was sponsoring the communists in Germany. So Hitler comes in and the country's like a war zone. The currency is worthless. The economy is destroyed. Degeneracy is rampant. There's transgender stuff, licentiousness, prostitution. There's transgender stuff back then? Yeah. When was that's that's why they were burning books. Wow. Those were the books they were burning. Oh, I didn't. Wow. I'm just shocked there was transgender stuff back then. Yeah, it's uh, it's Mansfield or Hirschfield. It was called it had some really innocuous sounding name, but it's mm-hmm. this Jewish guy who had this like research center. And they they were the pioneers in transgenderism, in early transgender surgeries, homosexuality, all that stuff. Like it was all coming from Berlin. Mm-hmm. And uh, and it was horrible. And Hitler comes in, and that's what the book burnings were about. They they were burning all these research books about transgender stuff because it was like morally repugnant. It's the same stuff that's going on today, mm-hmm. you know. Um, everybody says the book burnings. They were burning knowledge. They weren't. That wasn't knowledge. That was that was perversion. Mm-hmm. That'd be like if they started bor- burning pornography. Nobody nobody would. Nobody would say that burning pornography is uh, some some sick, tyrannical, like backwards. They don't want people to be educated. They would say that's filth. Same deal there. So so anyway, so he goes in, revives the economy, drives out the communists and anarchists, brings organized crime under control, builds all this infrastructure. It was amazing. He was Times Man of the Year. Now, he was anti-Semitic. We have to recognize, though, one, everyone was anti-Semitic back then. That's just true. Mm-hmm. Henry Ford. Uh, Charles Lindbergh, you, all the presidents, all the leaders. We know America is super anti-Semitic. We know that. that. That's why it's no surprise. That's why, like, when the Jews had to do their propaganda to make sure that shit was it was good over here, all right, and they can have their shit going on back there, okay, it was very evident to them because they knew how a bunch of Americans felt, okay? Matter of fact, it was something, some people might even say that if, it, listen, if the Nazis end up winning, because there were key moments in the uh, in the war where they, they the Nazis would have actually dominated a bunch of people, and there were what if scenarios out there basically saying if the Nazis actually won, America would have no problem switching over to to, to that kind of policy because a lot of people were already anti Semites already in the. United States and all over the place. Matter of fact, don't get it twisted. The, the alliance that the Jews had with the West 
it wasn't an alliance of like, oh, let's help the Jews because we care about the Jews and the persecution. No, it was basically an alliance of convenience, okay? Because they knew that, listen, uh, in some other regions of the country, they're not too friendly to Western uh, help or Western influence, all right? Except for these individuals over here who are actively trying to undermine the German economy and the German state and whatnot. So we're going to ally with them even though we don't like them. So that's one thing a lot of people got to understand about the world. It's not because people aren't doing stuff because of kitties and rainbows and altruism and helping people out. No, no, no. There's always usually backhanded deals when it comes to politics. Nothing's usually done for free. OK, so just because they don't like you don't mean they won't help you because at the end of the day, it's going to benefit their bottom line. Europe, you name it. Not only that, but also the Jews were extremely influential and did inflict a lot of those problems. You know, all that there we go. transgender stuff was coming from Jewish intellectuals. People blame what's happening in America today on the cultural Marxists. That's real. The cultural Marxists were all Jews that came from Berlin. They were driven out by Hitler. Mm -hmm. So when you look at, when people look at the legacy of postmodernism, cultural Marxism in America today, it all came from Colombia. It all come, came from these guys at Colombia who originally came from Frankfurt in Germany. And they got kicked out because they were Jewish communist radicals. Mm -hmm. So, and anyway, this is not like a defense of everything Hitler ever did, but you know, when you- Even though it is a defense of everything Hitler ever did. After you preceded that by denying the Holocaust and the gas chambers ever existed. I digress. Rip away this- uh, the, this... Whole, the whole point is that he was a visionary and he did good things too. That's yeah. what he, but nobody's ever heard that in media ever. Mm -hmm. So it's crazy to someone who. Yeah, it is crazy, Pearl, how you could end up being convinced by a lunatic like Nick Fuentes to think of Hitler as a visionary, someone uh, worthy of respect. Yeah, that that's that's what we've come through in the alt right space here today. Uh, so, so listen, if you don't think that was a big L, listen, the backlash Pearl got from this was insane. OK, a lot of people were going in on Pearl and she damn near almost lost her career on this, but somehow managed to hobble along and there were more L's to be taken after that. And we're going to discover that. Uh, listen, if she makes it to the next round, that's all that has to happen. So we're going to move on to the next candidate and the next candidate is going to be, listen, it's, it's like not talking about these individuals would be crazy. They definitely made this list. Okay. Cause I've never seen another platform aside from Pearl take bigger L's than these two bozos right here. We're talking about fresh and fit of the fresh and fit podcast show. Okay. Now, although this one's going to focus mainly on Myron cause fresh, eh, I mean, I still don't even know who he is, to be honest with you. <laughs> like, I mean, he's just that guy on the B mic. All right, so he's not important. All right, he's irrelevant. But we're going to focus on Myron over here because Myron, since he's the, the leader of the podcast and the one everyone pretty much thinks runs the whole thing, I mean, no one pays attention to the other guy. That, that's just how it is. So he's not important in, this, in 2023, I guess. But still, okay, I, I, we're focusing on Myron because Myron took a lot of L's. Okay, matter of fact, Myron did a lot of things that single-handedly got their platform demonetized, which was a big L that they took, okay, this year. But it wasn't just that we're talking about. We're going to talk about the event that they decided to do that caused them the big L. And for those of you guys who don't know, this had this event stemmed from an age-old beef that uh, goes between another duo uh, content creators, uh, ABBA and Preach, okay? If you guys don't know, ABBA and Preach and versus Fresh and Fit is the it's the beef is oldest time at this point as we're celebrating 2023 going into 2024. All right, these guys have been at each other's throats that's how crazy this shit has been okay it has just been insane how crazy they've gotten okay so uh, uh abba and preach end up exposing fresh and fit fresh and fit didn't like that they end up flapping back trying to fight them when preach accepted they ran okay it was just it was just all over the place i mean these guys have been taking l's every single year okay it's just this year what we're finalizing it <laughs> or, or that's up to you guys okay but still uh so again abba and preach clap back and they, they did a video reacting to, to Fresh and Fit, and that was the last freaking straw. Myron could not take it any longer. And he ended up going the Nick Fuentes route, which is donning a clan mask and, you know, basically insulting Abba and Preach as a Ku Klux Klan member. But he's Sudanese from Sudan who is an, also an Arab. So technically, I mean, I guess you could call him a, a black person or an African, but he doesn't consider himself an African. 
he considered himself an Arab, all right, even though he's in Africa. But he feels it's okay to put on a KKK mask in order to get back at their rivals. And somehow these two bozos thought that it was going to be some kind of W. Yeah. I, so, chat, y'all talk about, yo, dude, dude, it's getting mad racist in here. <laughs> What's going on? Yeah, ask these guys. This is why we criticize them. Because if you don't check all these ideologies that people are allowed to spew on here, they get racist and anti-Semitic pretty quickly. That's why you got to do that. So it's no surprise to me that Myron harbors these thoughts on, you know, black folks, especially donning the KKK max. Uh, he's took numerous L's previous years when it comes down to black women and dating prefaces and things like that. Even how they insulted preach before and, you know, making monkey references and all that stupid shit. All right. It's just really cringe, cringe stuff. OK, but but that that's what we have. These guys deep down. I don't know. Again, think, when I think about racism, I think of ignorance and hatred or anger, right? Those are the two different things I think about. Somebody's angry about what's going on in their life right now, but they're ignorant about the source of what it, the cause of it, right? They don't know what's going on. So instead, they 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 blame the low-hanging fruit, whether it's immigrants, black folks, it, it doesn't matter, all right? These guys are ignorant, so they don't want to think, and they're angry, which blinds their hearts, this is how they also feel about certain women they deal with. So you got to understand the anger. So without further ado, got to switch up the energy in this room. All right, let's go ahead and get to the video. And who else not to react to this than Abba and Preach? Because this is the beef that they were directly involved in. They were directly involved in this, and they were making fun of them wearing clan masks. So I mean, why not? So let's go ahead and play the video, chat. Um, Fresh and Fit ended her career with last night's episode. <laughs> Yeah. I think we're the first ones really calling them out at this point. They've been lying to y'all for years, and they're dumb fans in the back. Oh, fresh and fraud, fresh and fraud. Yo, Prince is like a oh. it looks like a fucking. You should see him build momentum. What the? <laughs> 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 Yo, every time this thing got a problem with you, imagine them. <laughs> Yo, Yo. 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 looks like a monkey. <laughs> Preachers over there looking like McGilla Girl and Donkey Kong having the baby. Bro, like, <laughs> That these dudes have been talking shit for years. And I think the thing is that they've been kind of coasting on is you got to fight fire with fire. And we're going to be yeah. nice guys. We're going to toss your salad out. <laughs> oh, no. We got some accessories here. Ooh. Okay. I got some apples and peaches here, as y'all can see. Okay. Mm. Some great fruit. Yeah. Then we also I got some peaches, some milk as well. Have you seen how Reach goes clubbing? <laughs> he clubs the bitch over there like a fucking gay man. <laughs> yo, yo, Reach, I don't even believe in this theory, but you gotta evolve. <laughs> you gotta evolve, bro. No, no, no. I'm not, not racist. I'm not racist. I'm not black. I'm not black. Wow. Look, you, you even got discount Terrence Howard all, all, all crazy about this. I mean, they they get real fucking racist. If you guys forgot this happened in 2023, allow me to remind you, bro, because I already know just based off this alone, they're already making it to the next round. I already know, bro. I like this is like it's just so bad. It's so bad, bro. Just look how they're speaking to people that share the same skin color. It's absolutely embarrassing. Oh, Welcome to Fresh wow. and Fresh, brother. Yo, we don't give a fuck. Yeah. If you guys didn't understand the stereotype, it's that black people are not evolved. And so you're saying preach is an unevolved black person, essentially doing. Preach, you look like. Now, Alex, we say Bunny Batty Man. Strict. Do you boo boo? Do you boo boo? Oh, yeah. I'm looking preach. Hey, wait, look where those were fun. Retard. Hey, let me talk shit on the leader. I'm for you. I got a problem with you. Yo. 
That nigga call me Goofy? Look at you, bro. You're Goofy. Gay. And he's mad that boogie his arm. Chat, bro. this comes in handy, okay? Because Abba and Preach were sure as hell re no no they were being ridiculed for the fact that Abba dances and Preach dances too as well. All right, these guys look, look. First of all, they don't realize how much cardio and stamina it takes not only to move your body for how how forever how long on stage, but also to work with another person's body, like another woman and their dance moves as you're moving on a stage. So it takes insane amount of cardio to be able to do that. Fresh still hasn't lost 30 pounds. He's been losing the same 30 pounds for the past three years, okay? And it's, look at his face. I don't know. Whatever pounds he lost, his face found it, okay? But these guys are ridiculing the fact that these people are dancers or these guys, you know, they they they're, they're, they venture towards the arts and things like that. They're calling it homosexual. They're calling it gay, right? Pay that. Pay attention to that because if they, if Fresh and Fit makes it to the next round, okay, this is going to come in handy because Myron gets accused of a lot of things, and it's similar to what they're accusing Auburn Preach of right now. But just pay attention. First things first, ain't nothing gay about this, bro. Like, if anything, it takes a lot of cardio. That's why Preach's calves. Look at his calves, bro. His calves are bigger than King Rich's over here. King Queen Rich's had he wishes he had calves like uh, Preach's over here. He wishes he had calves like that. Do you know how he can get calves like that? If you dance on stage and you know how to move another woman's body, you see what I'm saying? So I don't know what's gay about these, but like, yo, fresh and fit, this has got to be the biggest L you ever had, dog. And it's not even it. Oh, you are a fucking. <laughs> Yeah, he's chewing his Ethernet. Hey, Rich, yo, Rich, you're overdosing on the warrior gene, bro. <laughs> That's in my language too, actually. It's not a reach. I could KO you, but don't fucking throw that spear. These are disgusting animals. That's why they look like animals. These guys are fucking animals, bro. Dude, he fucking runs with all fours like a fucking animal. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what in Clayton Bigsby you guys were thinking. Yeah, that shit's okay. crazy, bro. Like, like I can I can call him a black dude. Like, I, I I'll make fun of maybe if he if he's if he something it's something right. But the last thing I would you see me making fun of another black dude about, especially if they share the same reflection as me, is like racist stereotypes, bro. Like. Especially if you had shit like that done to you, why would you do that to somebody else? That's why it never made any sense. Listen, you can clown their talking points. You can clown their their ideas sometimes, right? And you can clown, you even clown their attire. You can clown certain things. But when you start getting into stuff that they can't control, like their skin color, like that's crazy, bro. That that's a that's gotta be a massive L. Don shot to you for the two dollars which had Don says Duke Myra Lames once called himself white. Bro, listen, there's certain Arabs that don't consider I'm by Arabs, I mean in Africa. I'm not talking about in the Middle East, because yes, there are Arabs in Africa too. You're talking about Libya, like northern Libya, Tunisia, uh what's your Algeria and Northerners. Um, you got Libya. Did I say Libya already? All right. Some of these Arab countries um in Africa, a lot of the northern versions, they don't even consider themselves african like they at that point they're like southern european that's the way they see themselves all right especially guys from tunisia and northern tunisia uh, what's the other morocco is another one right a lot of these guys they're they're, they're roman babies all right uh, I, I shit you not i mean all of that shit was roman territory for a long time so you you know may, yeah you got some arabs in there right but a lot of that stuff is because you got the caliphates that came out after muhammad and whatnot and you know they basically took over a lot of those regions i mean i mean uh, muhammad they, they had a massive caliphate bro except for turkey you believe it or not except for turkey turkey them turks are crazy dog <laughs> like them turks were not joking because like they're the only islamic nation that isn't arabized and the reason they weren't arabized is because a lot of these turks were out conquering people themselves so they didn't so they they, they conquered so many people bro 
and they, they they won a bunch of wars. They didn't win with the Arabs, especially when Muhammad was coming around, right? They didn't win with those guys, but they did a bang enough job that they, they basically were considered their own caliphate, right? They didn't even have to be Arabized. That's why when you go to Turkey, it's the only Muslim nation that's completely different from every other Arab nation. Like, like, Turkey is completely something different. It's because, I don't know, something, I don't know if they, they eating something different. I don't know what they feeding all Turks over there. I don't know, bro. But, like, them motherfuckers are bred different, dog. They weren't having that. They're like, hey, listen, listen. How about we start our own caliphate? <laughs> How about that? We, we don't, yeah, we got the Turkey culture and stuff like that. We'll, we'll, we'll be ourselves. How about we just have our own caliphate? Y'all y'all do the Arab thing, but we're we're all Islam. That shit was crazy, dog. Don't, don't fuck with the Turks. But, um, again, the, when we talk about Arabization, and again, Myron, he, he doesn't think himself as a black person. It just is what it is, bro. Let's continue. Uncle Ruckus, no relations. <laughs> I don't know how you guys did it, but you guys made a more embarrassing response in history, history by like a long mile. Oh, my days. They don't even know. I don't think they're smart enough to understand what they just did. They're not smart enough. I think they know that they have negative feelings about black people. That's a, no, I don't think they do. So to them, they don't. I don't think they even comprehend that. I disagree. Um, I think some people just got anti-black sentiments and they just don't want to acknowledge it. Just because you don't want to acknowledge it doesn't mean you don't know it's there. It's like you know you got a mess under the table, bitch. Just because you didn't look, don't mean you don't know it's there. What you saying? You got, you, you, got, you got you got you got a white dude coming on talking about spear chucking, like using yeah, every cis trope I'd ever heard from a white that's cis crazy. in regards to black people. Mm -hmm. You're out here making monkey noises about mm -hmm. a black person. Yeah, I mean, you could just drop the hard end e r on, on the n word because it's the same shit. Might as well spear chucking. That's messed up. But whatever. even the warrior gene, they're I, basically trying to say black or animals. I understand. You just, He's you using just, scientific languages. Yeah. You already said that. Yeah. You already said that. Yeah. yeah. And you enable that fucking goober to say that. Watching them run around and, and, and do these kinds of poses for 30 minutes. I'm like, okay, I guess this is just how high value men act in the privacy of their home. <laughs> Yes. When they mad about something, they don't make business moves. They no. don't do things strategically. They no, just run they around make, like monkeys. They they make monkeys. That's a high value. That's man. a high value. Man. That's this, a high value. This, this guy's apparently now the new leader of the red pill. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and this is what he's like. That's how high value. On camera. God. Imagine behind closed doors. So I'm just saying. I mean, monkey noise and put a wig on and parade around. I've known many great leaders. I don't think I've ever seen one act as embarrassing as him. Bro, <laughs> you are a fucking homo. That's, that's a rebuttal. You do contemporary dance. Therefore, you're gay. That's Abba the Salsa. So that's it. Imagine doing a dance with women where you go out to a place and you dance with women pretty much the entire evening, and that's it. I don't get how Fresh and Fit can look at this and call this gay. Ain't nothing gay about this. Y'all crazy as hell. Six dudes, probably six dudes in there. Six dudes in there doing monkey noises and laughing and high-fiving each other. And to you, the apex of masculinity is you chilling with a bunch of dudes off fiving each other in a room. Well, meanwhile, we dancing with girls, and that's what makes us gay. That's how you think. That's your logic. I think they mention that because they think it hurts us or they would hurt our fan base. But if you're secure in who you are and your masculinity, it doesn't bother you whether someone calls you gay or not. Nope. It's never bothered me. Because one, I know I'm straight. Two, I don't need to project that outward. I don't care if you think I'm straight or not. Because I'm not trying that's to you. Who cares? Why would I care what random men think about my sexuality? <laughs> Sometimes I think it's funny because in the black community, they're like so obsessed with not seeming gay that yeah. they like pause. Even I like to play to that because it's just funny to me to like be like, oh, that, right? It's a character of a character. But if you ask me like, oh, Abba, are you gay? I'm like, you think so? Sure, whatever. I really don't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. That has never been something that bothered me. But anyways, um, as for all the whole racist tirade. It is what it is. I mean, it is what it is. I'm just saying, if a white person had said even half this shit no. on, on their own podcast, that shit would never fall. But a white person did. A white person could never weigh it away with coming up here and let me also say this it's not better because it comes from a black person no it's not better in fact i think sometimes it's even worse uncle ruckus because under the veil of like this is somehow acceptable we're perpetuating and thinking it's acceptable to refer to black people as monkeys even if an asian person wants to come out here and do braided eyes and going ching ching i don't think that's acceptable either it's yeah black people can be racist to black people like i don't care what what anybody says it's a thing that that i've seen I've seen it. I, I, there's some people I had to check them out in my life, and they're black. And like, yo, that shit is fucking crazy, bro. Like, you can't be saying that, okay? And, and just like other races can be racist to each other. And one thing I've always realized, too, is like some of you guys who travel, y'all let me know in the chat, too, as well, right? Because when we talk about racism, I think America, it, it's a unique thing. I and mean, in the UK, now that I'm here in the last stream, it's another thing that's going on there, too, as well, right? But all parts of the world, like you go to China, Japan, they put that racist shit in your face. 
especially if you're black. It's in your face, bro, front and center. And guess what? Ain't the damn thing we can do about it. Who are we going to complain to, right? They, they they kicked you out of the country so fast your head was spin, dog. Like, it's crazy. So a lot of times when we, when we see things that are happening here, we also got to put things into perspective too as well, right? Yeah, black folks. If don't if somebody out there who's black saying, yeah, black people, we can't be racist to other black people because, you know, power dynamics. Uh, stop. <laughs> no, 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 no. It happens in a black community a lot. Homophobia. It's in a black community a lot, which, ironically speaking, uh, a lot of blacks are homo homosexuals as well. So it, it's prevalent in the black community as well. So it's all over the place. So I, I don't get how we could be something that despise what we are right we can hate our own skin color we can hate our own sexuality we can hate our own women i i just i just never understand it now this stuff exists in other communities as well but i'm in the black community and i see this happen all the time too as well so it's like especially in the manosphere we see men go after black women all the time and they have no problem assaulting black women just to elevate another group it's just it's just weird how we see that happen why is that it's not because you belong to a group that all of a sudden all your credibly racist actions like i don't think youtube would ever allow people to get up here and call other black people whether it's a black person or not that n-word with a hard er right why because we all recognize even if it comes from a black person that shit's still wrong so there's just a bunch of weird stuff that's happening here but y'all roll how y'all want to roll if that's the kind of heat that you want to bring on yourselves go right ahead so there's really not go watch it yourself so you guys can go make your own judgments but uh this is the only part that I thought was worth addressing because I think there might be a bit of a misunderstanding, but let's play. Wow, then bro. he makes this accusation right here. My other boys, you won't fuck me, then you can't get on the platform. So wait, you want to bang a girl who just wants to come on the platform for clout? And you think that's burning desire? But he doesn't show y'all the entire conversation of her talking shit for hours on hours on hours on hours to me. It wasn't a conversation of her talking shit on hours on hours and hours. It literally starts with her, him saying, yo, we should collab. She says, hey, sure, what you got in mind? Interested, interested in a YouTube collab in Miami? Sure. I'm not sure when I'm going to be in Miami, but I can definitely let you know the next time. And the person we're talking about is Anna Quinn. Anna Quinn is a content creator. I don't know if she's still content creating, uh, but he wanted to bring her on the show. And, you know, because Myra has a thing for women to look like her. And he, in order for her to get on the show, he wanted to have sex with her. And that's actually when the, the conversation went south. But when Myron says, oh, well, they missed all these other conversations when she was talking shit to us, it was a blatant lie that he told to his audience. That alone should just earn him the biggest L of 2023, and we should just end the show right there, right? But, like, the fact that you can just willingly lie to your audience and, like, not be held accountable to it, it's just absolutely shocking to me. But, yeah, he's lying to their face while showing the lie right there and his audience can't even pick that up it's it's actually it's, just, it's actually just so fascinating I, i'm still trying to figure out how that works i want you guys to pause right that moment he initiates contact with her so just a collab he asks her multiple times she's single and married she's thinking oh she's being invited to be on a dating show to talk about dating she finally says like okay yeah after the third time he asked like oh or second time so yeah, yeah you know what i am single and he's like perfect well listen i don't collab with people who i'm platonic with out of nowhere it's in the text message but she says what do you mean she's like well we're not just going to be just friends if you want to collab. You are doing sex for a time on the podcast, which is what we initiated initially said. So I don't know why he showed this conversation as if I'm lying about what happened. Then I respond. I'm just being honest and standby. I'm not collaborating with you unless we fuck. <laughs> why do I say that? <laughs> you guys say, oh, yo, Byron, let it go. Let it go. Would y'all let it go if someone said some bullshit like this about you on a big ass podcast with 4 million subscribers? Fuck, well, what am I going to spend my day socializing with somebody who's like a... Like, Wait, what? Like, Whoa. Hold on. This clip is taken out of context. You guys can go watch on the No Jumper podcast. Don't take my word for it. At some point, Adam asked me like, yo, you guys can totally be friends again or whatever. I'm like, I ain't, I ain't fucking with people like that. Yeah, I don't want to be with people who harm their communities. I don't want to be involved with people who are like... I give an example of somebody I wouldn't want to be associated with. One of them was... A, another one was someone who goes around stealing from people, okay? You can see right now DJ Envy getting in trouble because a person he associated with goes around stealing from his community. Nah. I don't want to be associated with people who will harm folks from my area. That's the same nice. way I don't want to be associated with a podcast like this that I think is harmful. That's it. Because if you guys notice, whenever the allegations came out, well, I don't remember when it was, he did a live stream about it. It came out after I did this interview. So I didn't even know about that stuff. And also, if I hated you guys so much and I want to take you down so badly, why wouldn't I ever mention that kind of thing on our videos? Why would I make, yo, Myron, he goes around. I've never done that. I've never made a video like that. I've never said it in a single YouTube chip video that we do ourselves, okay? But in this offhand comment where I'm talking about not being associated with people who harm the communities, and I use an example, you think that's directly you. And I can understand. Probably with everything going on and hearing that from me, I can understand why you could take it that way. But it's not what I meant. Nor, if you look at the greater context of everything I said about this whole ordeal, it's never been something I've said. I mean, so let me be clear. I don't know if this guy is. I've never alleged that he is. And that's not my position today. We're actually defending on that. So 
Um, we were defending them on that. So, so yeah, it would be stupid a- to call them one thing and defend them on the, on the same thing. So yeah. he, he's saying it's political. He's saying we're doing it for liberty. Sure. Which is sure. You can, you can believe that. Whatever. You're going to believe whatever you want to believe. And I think that's partially my fault because the way I left the door open with not being abundantly clear. Yeah. Honestly, guys, um, it wasn't even entertaining. And I was like, Tom Brees, like, do we really want to do like a whole thing where we roast every point? It's, it's not worth it. No, because what we're doing is for, we're doing that for people that are not smart enough to comprehend, not smart enough to have a conversation. It's like, it's okay, man. So- <laughs> They're absolutely right. Like, why? Why? Why pay, Why even keep talking about these guys if their main response is for just for them to be super racist to you and never and, and deny everything and never actually get to the point of the matter anyways, right? So what's the point of even having conversations with people like that? So now, chat, this is your chance to vote, all right? And you got you to gotta put the name in the uh, chat, all right? Because we're going to be looking at the chat right now to see who wins, okay? Who do you want eliminated? Okay, we got eight candidates. We just watched all their L's. All right, we, three of them have to go. Three have to go. I'm sorry. We got to vote out three. It's just how the game's going to work. All right. So I know some of y'all are like, yo, this is tough. <laughs> yo, this is hard, Duke. Yo, all of these guys deserve the biggest L of 2023. I'm sorry. But three of them right now have to go. And I'm going to relist your choices, okay? I was going to do a poll thingy, but they won't let me list more than um, four people. So I guess we're going to do it uh, the old-fashioned way. You guys are going to go ahead and put the name in the chat, and we're going to see and count that out, all right? But let's go ahead and list them off. Number one, MLD. Number two, Saint the Sinner. Number three, Sneeko. Number four, Roll Tomasi. Number five, Donnie Boy. Number six, Pearly Things. And number seven, Myron. Oh, oh, shit, 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 shit. We forgot one person. Chat, I almost forgot this clown. Hold up. We got it. We got it. We got to go over Andrew Tate. <laughs> we got to go over Andrew Tate. I almost forgot Andrew Tate, chat. All right, hold up. I was going to say, we got eight people. What was we Counting all seven. Hold up. Somebody's missing. All right, before you vote, before you vote, hold up. Stop right here. We stopping it right here, all right? We stopping it right here. All right, we got to go through Andrew Tate first, okay? And you guys got to vote because we almost left him in there. All right, so let's let's uh, let's uh go ahead and uh, go over Andrew Tate's situation, okay? Now, Andrew Tate's situation is an interesting one. The reason being is because the tater tots. That's right. If these guys who forgot what tater tots are, they're basically the people who are followers of Tate no matter what. These guys are the ultimate skittle guzzlers of Andrew Tate's nutsack, okay? These guys will hang on on every word, even though there are multiple evidence out there proving he's completely (laughs) and totally wrong on the issue, okay? Now, here's the thing. Andrew Tate has took multiple L's, all right, including when he got arrested. But to be fair, we can include when he got arrested because that was before the, the 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 year coming up here, right? That was before this year, okay? But he was held in jail and you know released over time from you know jail to house arrest to then you know city lockdown and then he could fly around the city up until he got officially charged and that actually happened a couple months ago all right we all covered it it was big news and the reason why it was big news because a lot of the tater tots said we were wrong a lot of tater tots says there's no way andrew tate would be convicted of crimes okay because he's absolutely innocent now just like any tater tot they just don't know how to do any type of research whatsoever okay and then when we were finally proven right and he got finally charged it was a massive l that a lot of theater tots had to eat. And until this day, they haven't really figured out how to reconcile with the fact that their daddy might be going to prison for a long time. Let's go ahead and roll the video of them taking the biggest L, I would think, in my book of their entire careers of 2023, when they finally realize, yeah, motherfucker, there's a big chance you're going to prison. Let's take a look. And you know what? I have faith in the Romanian judicial system. I have faith in the system, and unfortunately, the reality is in every country in the world, this is not an anti-Romania podcast. The thing is very clear. In every country in the world, innocent people get caught up in the judicial system, and they have to prove their innocence. Andrew Tate and his brother, Tristan, defiant and proclaiming their innocence as Romanian prosecutors up the ante, charging them and two other women with rape, human trafficking, and forming a criminal gang to exploit women. Thanks for joining us here on Law & Crime. I'm Anjanette Levy. Prosecutors in Romania announced today that they filed these charges against the Tate brothers and those two women. 
The allegations involve seven women who prosecutors say were misled and transported to Romania for trafficking, and that some of this occurred in the UK and also the United States. The Tate brothers had been called to the Directorate for Investigating Organized Crime and Terrorism last week. They learned then that some of the human trafficking claims were being dropped, but prosecutors told the Tates at the time that they were planning to add charges. Tristan Tate addressed the allegations during an emergency meeting with his brother on Rumble last week. In 2021, two years ago, my brother and I formed an organized criminal gang with the intent of moving women to Romania so we could steal money from their TikTok accounts to enrich ourselves. The Tate brothers say these claims are ridiculous. Andrew Tate retweeted a tweet that states, the Tate brothers had over a hundred million in wealth in 2021. Decott alleges these crimes happened in 2021 to enrich themselves from TikTok accounts. These are all lies made up by Decott. Tristan Tate addressed some questions from his fans during that emergency meeting. Hey, Tristan, you used to run a webcam studio. I no longer run one, but yes, I used to. How is this linked into the case? That has nothing to do with the case. Tristan Tate says the webcam studio closed four years prior to 2021. He and Andrew claim these allegations are fabricated, part of a conspiracy to take them down by what they call the Matrix. <laughs> I mean, it's so pathetic even hearing it now. The Matrix, really, buddy, the Matrix is responsible for you trafficking women. The race, the, 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 the Matrix is responsible for you trying to in, contact the politician's daughter or a high-ranking uh, civil official's daughter for recruitment in your little fucking sex scheme you got going on there it, it, it's completely fabricated the fact that they exposed your war room and all that bullshit uh, just associated with it where you teach other young men to be little traffickers just like you and it's even worse than that chat he teaches these men how to beat these women or discipline them when they refuse to obey orders and some of those orders can include getting tattoos of their names on these women's body, you know, to show that they own them because these women are properties. Kind of the, how Andrew Tate preaches his rhetoric nowadays and how he views women. Not nowadays. He's trying to, he, he changed a different tune. But before he got arrested, okay, the before pre-arrest Andrew Tate, the, the rhetoric he was spewing, okay, that was all that kind of nonsense where, you know, you devalue the contributions that women bring to the table while overvaluing what men do and then when you actually look at the things that they're actually performing or putting down on paper it turns out it's the most degenerate crap out there they're basically internet pimps that beat women and brand them so they can go ahead and get naked for possibly minors on only fans and the reason why i say possibly minors is because the main reason or the main re avenue that leads to the the only fans page or the webcam page is tiktok and you guys understand tiktok is open to kids and you know a lot a bunch of young men and you know out there it's, it's open to a lot of people and who is the big target demographic for a lot of these fanboys for andrew tate it's a lot of these kids, men, boys, often underage, all right? So when they're in this mix over here, a lot of these guys can lie about their age, get an OnlyFans account, and then go ahead and watch one of the uh, girls who are on the, uh, on the show, right? And all it can be done through the war room that these kids end up paying credit cards to sign up for. It's by the, uh, the price of a used Camry, by the way, $8,000 to be part of this war room. Okay. Or, or they can join the real world where they get more indoctrination. So I think this is actually worse because this guy may have possibly introduced a bunch of young kids, you know, to adult content. And it's actually it's actually sad, right? And this happens because a lot of people around these guys' orbit, like Aiden Ross. Aiden Ross actually he he showed porn to his audience too. And then later on, he asked how old these audiences were, and they all said they were between the ages of eleven to fourteen years old. 
So these guys are fucking bums and degenerates, okay? If Andrew Tate doesn't make it to the next list chat, I don't know what else to tell you. Let's continue. Andrew Tate is a world champion kickboxer, social media influencer, and former Big Brother UK contestant. He has millions of Twitter followers. Some of his philosophies have led to other social media platforms banning him for what's been called misogynistic content. Tate says he uses satire to convey his message and that it's twisted by those who want to destroy him. These people are absolutely not really controlled. Most of our detractors are controlled by what they see on the news, and they don't even have any interest in finding out the truth. It's amazing to me. I'm the most famous, most Googled man on the planet, right? I'm the most Googled man on the planet, and image and videos of me are being presented out of context. And every single time I do a podcast, I say, that's shown out of context. Oh, look, straight away, first here, out and Oh! <laughs> Andrew and Tristan Tate have been on house arrest since their release from jail on March 31st. They had been taken into custody in late December. Tate Is that their lawyer? <laughs> lawyer out here doing karate with them? That's all I need to see. All right, chat, voting time. Vote in time. But before we do that, let's go ahead and address the sponsorship of today's show. Okay, that is the YouTube like button. So if you guys who are watching right now haven't gotten a chance to sponsor the show, please go ahead and do that. It's so easy. Just smash the like button, YouTube like button at the bottom of the screen. Chat. Shout out to you, Don, with the five dollars super chat. He says, uh, "What? Where's the? What's the video where Myra calls the cops on Allende on the streets? Zerka had an L in the streets, LMAO. Pearl two L's and her investors. Yeah, like Zerka. Zerka is more of an honorable mention type. Okay, and he will be an honorable mention type. Uh, Zerka." <laughs> We kind of knew his L was coming. Like, we knew his L was coming. Let's just be real. That's why I haven't really even talked about Zerka. It's like, whatever, bro. You're a loser. Yeah, it just is what it is, right? He came in a chat one time talking mess, but didn't want to come up and uh, talk about it. So he's a little, a little loser, all right? And we know why. Because guys like that get absolutely get their backs blown out <laughs> in the middle of the street when they challenge people they have no business challenging, all because they think they're physically better than them. It's just it's just weird how these people think, okay? So he's more of an honorable mention, Zerka. I don't think he's a real contender. I'm, I'm just being real. And is he demonetized already? Isn't he canceled? Did he get – yo, chat, let me know if he got canceled or not. I, I actually don't know, but I've been – I've been thinking Zerka is a topo. All right, voting time. All right, chat, let's do it. So we got eight candidates, okay? Andrew Tate's number eight. We got MLD number one. We got um, we got Saint the Center number two, Sneeko number three, Roll Tomasi four, Donnie Boy five, Pearly six, Fresh and Fit seven, and obviously Andrew Tate eight. Okay, I'm gonna keep reading this out. All right, who do you think? Some three gotta go. Three have to go. I'm sorry, chat, but it is what it is. Okay, we gotta eliminate three out of the running for the biggest L of 2023. I know it's hard for you guys, but we got to we got to keep it fair here. So, I'll give you guys a little bit of ch uh, time to go ahead and uh uh go ahead and put your votes in while we uh count up the votes here. Let me go ahead and put this uh feed on. Anybody can vote. What are you talking about? We got we got everybody in the chat vote. We got 10 more seconds. Let's go. Voting time, it is over. If you didn't get a chance to vote, I'm sorry. I don't know what else to tell you, but you better not next time, okay? But let's go ahead and look at it. A lot of y'all want – okay, so we had a lot for MLD to get out the first round. So y'all ready to get – whoa, there's a lot of MLDs. So, okay, MLD's definitely out the first round. Okay, we're getting – he's a first-round knockout. I guess we're not going to see the rest of the, <laughs> the, the L's that MLD took. 
for 2023. Sneeko is another one. God damn. Yo, Sneeko. Wow. All right. So Sneeko, it seems as though, is out. Okay. So that's number two. Let me count up the, the third one here. A lot of you are saying Rolo. Whoa. Somebody just said MLD and Rolo. <laughs> MLD and Rolo. MLE, Donnie, and Rolo. Surprisingly, not a lot for Donnie as much as we see Sneeko and Rolo. I thought Rolo was going to make I honestly thought Rolo was going to make it. Yo, chat. Whoa. Yo, that's crazy. Yo, all right. So it looks like we got the elimination round. Three have to go. And the three that are gone is MLD. Sneeko and Rolo Tomasi. That's crazy. Wow. I, I thought I thought I thought Sneeko was gonna make it. I thought Rolo was actually gonna make it. So that means we gotta go into round two. Okay. So round two that leaves us with Saint the Sinner, Donnie Boy, Pearly Things, Fresh and Fit, and Andrew Tate. Let's get into round two. Okay, let's get into round two, all right? We got a lot to cover here, all right? So let's get back with St. the Center. We got to talk about the second biggest L that Sus Marquad has ever gotten for 2023. Now, chat, I'm going to be real with you. This one actually takes the cake. This one is, this has got to be the, the main sauce right here. And the reason being is because, okay, St. the Center, AKA Sus Marquad. There's a reason why he got the name Sus Marquad now, no longer Lord Marquad, okay? Is because he showed up to another influencer's house completely unannounced with cards and chocolates, all right? And it was so bad that he got called out by Fresh Prince CEO of all people, Jack. Of all people regarding this sus behavior because no one could comprehend why on earth someone who considers himself the greatest technology of our time someone who considers himself being capable of creating an nft from the command line why would someone of such prestigious stature stalk another content creator like andrew tate who's also on this list okay and better yet, go to his house completely unannounced with cards and chocolates. My goodness. <laughs> hey, if you think that's embarrassing, this idiot actually vlogged the entire thing, thinking it was like gonna be cool or some shit, right? The audience was gonna were gonna be like, yeah, you know what? You're you're totally great for doing all this. You're totally great for uh vlogging your entire experience on your journey to meet Andrew Tate. And if you guys think I'm joking, this guy literally found his address from a Google image from a Vice News reporter. Keep that in mind. You want to talk about stalker energy. Let's go ahead and get to the video. I couldn't see I his it. face through it. the gates. He was like five meters farther away. Well, that's good. That's their part that's really intelligent. You never want to have when you have security person, you want to have just one guy. You know, you don't want to have a point of failure in any system. So that's really good. That's intelligent. I like that. That's funny. They answered the door promptly. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see the chat? For me, the chat is not working. Yeah, I can see that right here. When was the last message? Harvey writes you at his front gate and talking to his guard was recorded, though, saying it's still a success. Oh, yeah. It was fun. I had, <laughs> had a lot of fun. Oh, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Uh, open rights. Uh, is that possible and take us back? No, I won't take too long, and I'll tip you in cash, in euros. Is, is that okay? It's okay, but uh, don't take too long. I won't take too long. I'll give you 50 euros if you, you wait. It won't be too long. Deal? All right. I uh, have to close. Okay. Okay. I'll take you when, uh, where uh, you need. Yeah, yeah, back to where we were. 50 euros is fair? Yes. Cool. Okay, folks, so here we are. Let's take a look around. We're at, we're at the compound right now. And completely unannounced, chat. Chat, this is this is all completely unannounced, dog. <laughs> he's, he's, he's at this dude's house unannounced, bro. He didn't get invited here. And you might recognize this. 
And uh, I should probably take out my AirPods so I can actually hear what's being said. You got some pretty curious accommodations right there. Wonder was this a repurposed building? So here we go. Chocolates on deck. We're in the spot. These guys are secure. Like that's what I, I can tell you. Like these, these guys are secure. I don't know which one of these to push. This one is more, but I don't know what that is. So I wish we had that nick and that map to change. Yeah, so we can see which to press. So somebody can check and tell me which one he pressed. Okay, press that. Somebody works. Look, look at this. Just If you ever think that your life's not going well, just picture this image of Sus Marquard standing outside another man's house unannounced with cards and chocolates in a gift bag. Okay? Just so you know, for those of you out there who feel low in life, just know there's somebody out there who's not doing so well because this happened this year. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. Okay, this got to be an L. I'm sorry. He, he's got to make it into the third round, bro. He's got to make it into the third round with this one here. Shout out to Willie for becoming a YouTube member. Let's welcome Willie to Duke the Don family. We appreciate you being here. Shout out to you. Let's get that W in the chat for Willie, all right? But again, if you ever feel low in life, just remember, Remember, there's a YouTuber here claiming to be a millionaire, multi-millionaire, that showed up to another man's house unannounced with cards and chocolates. I, I don't know if that's an L or just an embarrassment. Someone is coming, by the way. What's that? There's coming. People are coming. Look at that cheesy smile he got. Look at that cheesy smile he got on his face, bro. You notice that skip to the car? Y'all notice that nice little clip skip edit to the car? Uh, yeah, a lot of people, yo, dude, what happened? Why, why didn't we see what uh, when the security guard came to the gate and we were able to see what was said? Oh, no, no, no. For some reason, according to Sus Marquad, if you believe any account this guy mentions in his, in his videos, okay, he said that Andrew Tate had some kind of, like, Wi-Fi blocker. Okay, or internet blocker on his uh, uh, compound. So, like, you, you couldn't get internet service out there. It wasn't the fact that, you know, maybe the security guard said, hey, bro, you're not on a visitor's list. <laughs> How did you even get here? We'll take the chocolates, bro. But uh, we're not letting you in here. You're not on a visitor's list, bro. It, no, it wasn't completely due to that at all. It was due to that Andrew Tate has internet blockers at his compound. That's why he wasn't able to get the interview or get the, the 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 footage between when he showed up at the gate and the guard pulled up and when he ended up at the car right here. So, chat, that's the L right here we got for Sus Mark. While Chris calls out with the five shots, he says, yo, Duke, remember when you were beefing with Sus and he in, in his video said, imagine this ninja as a big booty hoe. Yeah, yeah, that was mad Sus. All right, you know what that, you know what that reminded me of? But ass. <laughs> yeah, this dude, this dude is a weirdo, bro. Like he 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 goes hard against homosexuals, but yet this dude, like, he 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 talks about men who don't have who have their button or shirt buttoned down too low. He he talks about like he's obsessed with destiny sexuality. He does a bunch of such shit, right? I mean, it's just it's like, bro, like I, I think I think you're projecting, dog. I think there's a lot of things going on deep down. You got feelings that you can't really reconcile with and you just have to let it out somehow i mean even look at his celly mate <laughs> that he put out there in that video oh my god bro it's like yo tell me your sus without telling me your sus dog your celly mate definitely telling me a lot dog. <laughs> like you thought i was a win oh i'm sorry yeah that was a, there's a, there's more l's this bozo took the, you you thought this was bad no 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 saint the center had way worse l's than this it got bad bro and this l he took if he makes it to the next round literally goes against all the shit he's been talking about when it comes down to you know abstaining from drugs and all these other things right but there you go yo Raphael Samano with the two shout out to you says imagine getting called out by a walking turd exactly fresh i mean fresh 
again, yeah, being called out by Fresh, it's got to be embarrassing, especially if you're supposed to be a multi-million like Sus Marquand. It's absolutely cringe, dog. All right, so we got to move to the next candidate that made it on the list, Donnie Boy. So we got to talk about the – L, the biggest L for Donnie Boy, uh, again, you guys got to understand, he went through multiple, multiple, multiple Ls, okay? One of the main ones was the ones we uh, talked about before, but also the one he's been bragging about for a while, okay? And what he's been bragging about for a while is his CME, okay? The C, the CME is one of the things that Donovan Sharp prides himself on because, A, the first CME he had was actually pretty successful, all right? It, was, it, it did some things, right? He had a bunch of quality with it, okay? It, it was absolutely great, okay? He, he, he can attest to that. A lot of people can attest to that, okay? But then the other CMEs that started coming after that, the quality a lot of people start to notice – was a little a little different, okay? It was not the greatest quality, all right? And he blamed a bunch of people for it, right? And one of the main ones he blamed for this was Anthony Johnson. Now, oh, my goodness. If you guys don't understand the beef that Anthony Johnson had with Donnie Boy, it's absolutely insane. But I wanted to find this video particularly before we get into the main one that I want to react to, which is the actual disaster of a CME. Okay, but first we got to talk about the Anthony Johnson one because the second CME was an absolutely disa absolute disaster. If you think the first CME was glittered in gold and um, Donnie Boy yeah, went I all out with it, the second CME was bad. All right, it was like they went from a a high value hotel to a closet shack. Like it, it was bad. Like the dude went from high value to great value in a span of a year. All right. And he blamed a bunch of people. He blamed Anthony Johnson. He blamed COVID. He blamed everything else but his dwindling channel and like the less success he was get with that. Right. So fast forward to the CME three, which is this one we're going to be talking about. He was talking hella shit. And one thing we noticed is some of the same patterns that we noticed before right where he would he would talk shit about he would talk shit about uh what, what's his face he would talk shit about the 21 studios right the 21 uh, convention was part of 21 studios which launched a competition to a cme now here's the thing i gotta tell you about this right a lot of you dudes paying twenty five hundred dollars going out to these events what are you going to learn? Matter of fact, I think one fan got wise up to Donnie Boy's tricks and said, hey, listen, dog, why spend $500 on a baseline ticket when I can buy a PS5? And Donnie Boy didn't like that. He actually went on and tried to shame his fan for saying that, hey, I would rather, if I, listen, times are tough. If I would spend $500, I would rather go buy a PS5 because it's going to offer more value than spend it on a ticket to go ahead to visit your CME, okay? That was what was said, and Donnie Boy went crazy because he didn't fathom a fan of his not wanting to visit his coveted CME. Matter of fact, he said this was the destiny effect, folks. This is what happens when you're spoon-fed on video games. This, this idiot wants to play video games and visit my CME. I'd have you know it's going to be a success this year. No matter what you say, right? And it turns out it wasn't. It was actually a, a complete disaster. But all the shit he was doing before that was hilarious because he was mainly directing at his main rival, Anthony Johnson, who was running the 21 Studios. And I believe he canceled it. It didn't run. And Donnie Boy was celebrating because he was saying, I had all these thicker sales. All these people are flying out to see me and do this and do that, right? And then come to find out, well, we actually saw the CME. Oh, boy, it wasn't the greatest. But before we do that, let's see all the shit talking he got down to with uh, a discount vanilla ice over here. Let's go ahead and get it. To worry about anyway, because now I have to start my marketing campaign. My marketing campaign for the CME3 uh, goes in full force uh, in two weeks. So I can't be, I'm not going to be on this. I'm not going to be on this smear Anthony Johnson tour. He's done enough of that himself. But from the outside looking in, I agree with you, Yale. I think it is, I think it's, I think it's unfortunate. Um, and I think it's a travesty that, I mean, 
the 21 convention was the gold standard in terms of the the mm -hmm. the, the red pill summit like it was the red pill manosphere event and i remember when i went back and i spoke in 2018 it was it was a fantastic experience yeah it was mm -hmm. at that same venue but i had never been there before um i think i'd been to orlando maybe a handful of times when i went down there i was treated with respect uh the speakers mm -hmm. were great the attendees were great etc mm -hmm. etc et then after i spoke in 2018 i want to say that fall that is when he decided to uh, the very next fall rather so i did the 21 convention in 18 then i think i did it in 19. what ended up happening uh eo is that he decided to make an enemy of rollo damasi one of the guys over my shoulder and he went on this two he went on this two-year campaign just absolute dude he he doxed him he put out his real name put out his wife's real name dude he told people where his daughter went to school rollo's daughter had to transfer schools i mean eo this is not this is not new that's not true, by the way. That that that's that's not true. Roll's daughter by that time was already a grown ass adult running her own pageantry business. These people lie. They're trying to make a grown woman out to look like a little kid. She has agency, bro. She's a modern woman. No, I'm not. I'm not saying this to throw dig anybody. If you look at his daughter's Instagram, which is a public thing, by the way, because she runs a business of pageantry. Okay, she's a grown ass woman. So it's so disingenuous. These red pill poppers come out here and make her out to be this little girl to make it seem like Anthony Johnson was a predator or whatnot, preying on these kids. It's like, bro, she's fucking over the age of 21. And not even that. She's middle, she's mid mid 20s or late to mid to make late to mid 20s, whatever you want to call it now. All right. So she has her own business. She she's fine. She don't even pay attention to this red pill shit. Matter of fact, if we were to interview his daughter right now, she'd probably think whatever her dad is doing. It's cringe. No, think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Your grown ass dad who's married is going on podcasts like Fresh and Fit and hanging out with girls who are his, uh, his daughter's age. You got to think that's cringe. Okay, so again, if his daughter isn't proud of what Rolo Tomasi is doing either, okay, neither is Rolo Tomasi. But again, this narrative that she's some little girl that got docs or whatever the fuck it is, even though we know for a fact she's a pageantry business woman who runs her. She's an independent woman, bro. That's that's the one thing that these guys. That, that's why they, they make it look like she's some kind of defenseless girl, right? Because they don't want to they want to hide from the fact that Rolo raised his daughter to be exactly like the modern women he complains about. That's the truth. She's a single or, you know, a businesswoman running her thing, living her life, not caring about nothing, going to school, doing what she wants to do, all right? She got it going for her, but that goes against the narrative, especially if you're the godfather, godfather of the red pill, right? You're the godfather of the red pill, and it turns out, that your daughter is the same kind of modern woman you're out here complaining to all these young men about. So then what the fuck, what, what I mean, if you can't even live up to your own example by raising a traditional daughter, like you want all these other men who are horny and can't control themselves to go out and date, why couldn't yourself, why couldn't you raise a woman who could be traditional? And not be a businesswoman and not run her own show and not be out there on Instagram, right? Again, these guys are just weirdos when they do this crap. Normal. Mm -hmm. You understand what I mean? I think mm -hmm. people need to understand that his behavior mm -hmm. is not normal. There's nothing presidential about it. There's nothing professional about it. It is absolutely not normal. You don't tell people where his daughter goes to school. You don't do that. What's more is mm -hmm. that he sent Rolo... Uh, a fake uh, uh, a fake letter. Now, I talked to my attorney before I came on here, and I can't talk about all of that stuff while I have you on for legal reasons. So I'll probably have to get into that a little bit later. But but he sent Rolo some some fake threatening letter um, telling him that he wants that he is in violation of some sort of statute or this and that or the other. Well, he did exactly the same thing to me after he ran this hit piece on March the 20th. The, the, the truth about Donovan Sharp. But dude, it's just dude, lie after lie after lie after lie after lie. First, it was uh, first. It was I was going to adopt Devin's niece. Then it was, well, Devin's niece is really Devin's, uh, you know, Devin's daughter. And then he went back to this. It's like it's like which you, you notice how he's lying about this, right? Because fast forward, we like the fact that. It's 2023, bro, and you're still trying to pretend that Devin's daughter was her actual niece? It wasn't her niece, bro. You dated a single mom. It gets worse. It gets worse. He did more than date her, but that's if he makes it to the next round. If he makes it to the next round, you see how bad it gets because I think that's actually the biggest L of 2023, this, what, what this dude end up doing, especially after bashing single mothers for the majority of his career to turn around and did what he ended up doing. It was a, a complete – I think that destroyed his entire channel. 
It destroyed his channel. He doesn't know it yet, but he's done. 2024 ain't no CME. <laughs> There's no CME4. You're done, son. It's over with. You're not coming back. Okay, after this bullshit you pulled in 2023, after spending years telling these young men to avoid single mothers, you're done. But to sit here and lie after we done already know the truth that you, Donovan, you, your girlfriend, your wife, her daughter is not her niece. And Devin's a piece of shit for allowing you, another piece of shit, to basically have her deny her own child. All for you to go ahead and keep your internet status. Just let that sink in. She's sitting there agreeing to say, yeah, my daughter's my niece. Yeah. That's my niece. <laughs> You're running with that because Donovan wants you to do that. Right, I mean, it's just so cringe, but him, he, him sitting there lying about that is insane, is it? But going back to what you were talking about, I think it's a travesty that it's come to this because he really he he had a chance. He started this thing when he was seventeen, which is impressive in mm. and of itself. At seventeen mm. years old, I didn't have that drive. I didn't have that know how. It took me all the way up until my early to mid forties to even figure out half of what he has he has figured out in terms of uh, in terms of putting on events. He even told me before he decided to you know throw me under the bus. He said, "Hey, if you would ever like to." If you ever want to do an event of your own, yeah, you know, I'll help you out, blah, 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 blah. That, of course, was a lie because as soon as I announced, uh, as soon as I announced that he was, that I was doing the CME, that's when he went into, you know, into his little cave and, and decided to do his little hit piece thing. And here's the thing, man. It, it, it's just like I talk about with women in relationships. Whenever somebody gets the jump on you, when somebody acts in bad faith without your knowledge, because what he did to me was betrayal. I didn't see it coming. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any reason mm -hmm. to believe that it was coming, even though he had done the same thing to Rolo. Surely he's not going to do the same thing to me. Well, he did the same thing to me, but he he, but he tried to do it worse because I now had a competing, a competing CME. Here we are now, two years later, two years later, EO. Anthony has burned literally do just about every bridge he has. Nobody wants to nobody, not only does nobody want to speak with this guy, if you yeah. cross him, then he has the potential to try, try to turn your life upside down. Putting out personal information about you, about your kids. Like uh, uh I think he exposed uh what's his name? Ivan Throne a while back because Ivan had the audacity to push back. That's not what leaders do, EO. Go ahead. Man, I think that was his boy too, Ivan. Anyway, yeah. his boy. Yeah, that was his boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm sorry. I don't want to hear from discomfort and lies. Hey, listen. We you, we probably we, we we get to him. All right. Donnie boy is celebrating the fact that Anthony Johnson, my greatest rival, he's done. He's not gonna run a 21 convention. And to be honest, I don't know. I don't think he. I actually, I don't think Anthony Johnson actually ran the 21 convention this year. So Donovan Sharp is kind of right. But was he also right to? celebrate the way he celebrate that's very interesting right because he's sitting here talking about yeah I mean, two years later he's done and i'm still here well let's take a look at the results of donny boy cme3 that he promotes so freaking much here, here here's donny boy on stage okay and, and, and remember okay if you guys don't know cme1 was completely different ball game matter of fact i'll actually pull up an example for you guys to take a look at, okay? And then you look at the CME3 and you tell me if this was a dub. To me, it seemed like all them tickets that he was bragging about were sold was cap, bro. He lied about the whole thing. Let's continue. Oh, quick, I'd like my three ambassadors to come up here, including Miami J. Come on up here, guys. Come on up, let's go. Give me a hand. Come on up. <laughs> Stand on this side so they can see. All right, so, um, so these guys are... Well, King Life is also in there. There we are. He's, he, he's, he's our unofficial security. There he is. There we go. Like, like we're doing in Philly right now. I don't know what the hell that is. Hey, hey we're, we're, we're in the NLCS. Um, thank you guys again very much for coming out. Uh, this is the first CME. And you guys will quickly figure out, a lot of you young guys, the older I get, the more valuable the commodity of time becomes. There you go. All right. What do you notice about Donnie Boy here? Can we, can we break down what we see about Donnie Boy here? Donnie Boy, especially the attire he has on. This is the first CME. The first successful ever CME that everyone can scream to the heavens and say, yeah, this one was pretty good. Donnie Boy went all out. Okay? And I'm going to tell you this. It's never been the same since. It's never been the same since okay we got donny boy in a three-piece suit all right on a massive stage and he, he's delivering whatever nonsense he's delivering fast forward to the cme3 that he's bragging about 
I don't even know what the fuck the court is, bro. <laughs> like, it's like, it's like you go from a massive studio or not studio, a venue to a shack, bro. Like, what is this? Like, what is this, bro? Like, what are we looking at? Who, who, who are these bozos back here? Why, are they, why is he the only one wearing the suit? Like, where's your suit at? You're supposed to lead by example. Listen, I go to events outside of this, okay? People don't know. No, I, I get real political. Y'all, y'all don't know that. See, that, that's part of my life. I, I keep it hush hush. But I get real political. When I go to events, I go to events. Okay. So they're they're, they're events. This guy hosts events. All right. We see the first event. We, we, we see the, the fruits of that. We see how he's able to go all out. But then one has to ask the question. Between the first CME he hosted and whatever the hell this is, the CME 3, what happened? You go from high value to Walmart brand in the span of two years. Matter of fact, we're saying span of two years, but the CME 2 was an absolute disaster. You want to talk? Hey, this, 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 this studio was actually better than the one they had at the CME 2. Their CME 2 was literally a broom closet. It was that bad, bro. It was that bad. Dude had a wife beater on and a, a bowling shirt. That's what Donovan Sharp was wearing to the CME2. This was considered an upgrade to the CME2. The CME3 we're seeing here was an upgrade to the CME2, okay? Because he's not wearing his bowling shirt no more, all right? he I don't know what the fuck you call this, all right? But none of them will ever compare to the CME1. The quality, you guys have to understand, is it's never been better ever since the CME1. And that's what Donovan has not realized yet. You lost, bro. Like, nobody's paying attention to your shit. And there was one other thing he did with the CME3 that if he makes it to the next round, we absolutely have to cover it because he gets clowned for this. But he somehow decided to merge these two things in one night. And it absolutely destroyed his career. But let's play a little bit more. Um, this has been... It hasn't been as stressful as I thought it was. I think the planning was a lot better. Uh, the execution was much better. I decided to shrink things a little bit. I capped the tickets, I think at 50 or something like that. I know that there's some Cap people uh, missing uh, uh, here that are you know probably on the way they're gonna meet us at the cigar bar. But <clears throat> what I really wanted to what I really wanted to highlight these guys for is because these guys have been with me through thick and thin. My voice is a little it's a little weak right now. Mm, okay. <laughs> but uh, these guys have been with me through thick and thin. You guys remember all you guys remember the summer of 2021. That was absolutely crazy. Um, everything, everything was, everything was nuts. Doctor B eighty four. Uh, did I already make you stand up? Oh, my bad. I'm, I'm bro can't even get a decent camera angle, bro. Like we can't even get a decent camera angle out of this, bro. <laughs> this is crazy. I'm starting. I'm starting to get dementia. <laughs> I'm to get dementia. No. That's not a good thing. Uh, but these four gentlemen uh, have they? They these guys are ride or die. Uh, they really, really are. Um, a lot of things have been said and written about me. Um, some of them, some of them true. Most of them mostly untrue. You guys know how that goes. But uh, through it all, we still made it happen. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I just wanted to personally thank each and every one of you guys because I don't really consider you guys to be attendees anymore. I honestly consider you guys to be my friends. So <laughs> give you guys. <laughs> How pathetic. All right. Yo, your CME was trash. The tickets didn't sell. All right. And, and, and this right here single-handedly probably ruined you if you didn't have that other event that you attached to this shit. All right. And what event it is, you'll find out at round three. Okay. All right. But listen, that was Donnie Boy. The biggest L he also took of 2023 because he took multiple and he even took more than what we had to put on the show but for the sake of time listen bro we have to limit it we got eight candidates and there are a bunch of shit that they did we have to limit it okay but the cme was one of the main ones he bragged about and he absolutely lambasted anthony johnson who was his competitor who ran the 21 conventions okay and he said oh you you were doing this and you tried to do this to me you ddos my servers you blocked my payment payment processors you did all every excuse in the book right and then when anthony johnson canceled his all right donnie boy was celebrating say ah listen i didn't cancel mine hey listen I, i'm even lowering the price we're doing a price cap and then we look at the attendance on that shit and barely anybody showed up it's like so the whole time, bro, you were lying about your ticket sales. And when we saw the results, nobody showed up. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's so sad.
It's so sad, bro. <laughs> like, it's so sad. And this is the same guy that called his mother a whore on Pearl's channel. Like, this is crazy. This guy, this guy has enough disrespect to call his own mother a whore. Like, you know, listen, I don't care if your mom's a natural whore, bro. The fact that you went out there and disrespected your mother on somebody else's platform, a white woman's platform, you're a fucking loser, bro. And then you come out with the CME3 and it's his trash. I think, I think you gotta understand by this point, Donnie. Your channel is not going to make it to 2024, and at least not the way you expect it to make it. All right, you're not, it's not going to go past 2024. I think this is the end. That's why he's on this list, chat, because I was struggling to put somebody else on this list. I'm like, we have to, we have to do something else. But I, I think realistically, this might be the last time we ever talk about Donnie Boy. Think about it, it's been a minute since this channel's covered Donnie Boy since the last controversy he did, right? We haven't talked about him in a minute. All right, because the last time we talked about him, he was um, I'm quitting from Adam Sosnick, right? That was the last time we reacted to this clown. I don't because he he's not important anymore. He's done. You're watching someone who destroyed his old career. So I'm like, yo, we gotta add him on the list because this year, 2023, might be the last year we ever talk about Donnie Boy. Cause I don't think there's gonna be a CME for or a Donnie Boy 2024. So we might actually be looking at the end of Donovan Sharp. I, I shit you not. But a shout out to Wendy Orton with a $10 super chat. Says, happy new year. Happy new year to you. Can we get a W in the chat for Wendy Orin? Shout out to you for the love. I appreciate it. All right, chat. Let's move on to the next candidate here, okay? And the next candidate is going to be uh, we're going to be talking about fresh and fit. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Pearly things, okay? And pearly things, again, we talked about the Nick Fuentes situation she went through. But you guys have to understand, she had multiple L's, okay? Including the whole Britney Venti controversy. Uh, there were multiple controversies that she went through, okay? But she got flamed by a lot of people, okay? And this was before she got her channel terminated. That, that's another massive L that she took, okay? But we got to run through every single platform, all right, that basically ridiculed her, including Britney Venti, okay? She was absolutely brutal, uh, brutalized by uh, by a lot of people. Right. And it wasn't just Brittany Venti. It was trigonometry, all right, because this has to go hand-in-hand -hand with the whole racist uh, backlash with it, too, as well. So there are a lot of people that really got the pearl. Uh, it was crazy. It was hard to pick. All right, even Destiny had his uh, pick of the litter, too, as well, which we're going to cover. But but what we're going to go through um, is Pearl's best friend. I, I think that that's got to be the most important one out of everyone else. Brittany Venti. Destiny, trigonometry. Imagine having your best friend that you were friends with throughout in your entire childhood come out and say, yeah, bro, she capping about everything. It's a complete and utter lie. Let's go ahead and get to the video here, chat. Um, give me a minute. Let me pull this up. And boop, here we go. Hi, me again. Um, I'm going to make one more video about this whole Hannah topic and then I'm done. I promise you. Just a couple like final thoughts. That's all. Um, a lot of people were confused because I talked about her relationship with that one guy on here um, in one of my videos. And then in the next, I was like, she's never been even in a relationship. I wouldn't really count that as like a serious one, at least. I don't know. I don't know what that was, honestly. Like, that, was, that wasn't even real. That was a fever dream to me. Next thing, I'm going to reiterate what I said in the first stitch, which you can't even see her original video that I stitched because her account got banned, which it always does, and then she just makes a new one. Hang on. I was saying, um, in my original stitch, I was saying she doesn't believe anything she talks about. And I've come to the conclusion that all she has to do is study this red pill theory and then perform for her audience it's a performance she's acting she's getting everybody riled up she's getting these weird men to subscribe to her and give her money <laughs> she says this is, she's getting a lot of these weird men like hey i'm sorry i don't think pearl's friend understands how weird a lot of the men who follow pearl really are <laughs> i don't think she understands that they get real weird sis 
money and that's how she's making money by riling us up. I do still believe there's a Hannah deep down in there. Maybe. I don't know. But no, she was not always like this. She was completely normal. The stuff that she says now is shocking to me because it wasn't just like a progressive getting worse. It was like all of a sudden she's like, I'm going to do red pill content to the extreme. But yeah, so I'm done with the Hannah stuff. I know that's truly what everybody wants, but I'm not going to trash her on TikTok. That's not who I'm going to be. Um, a little bit about me. I'm a full-time nanny. That's what I'm doing right now. My nanny mom knows I made all those videos in her house. <laughs> and she thought I was a rock star um, because she's also seen this girl's content and is like, oh my God, I would never want my daughter to see stuff like that. And I agreed. I almost was like, I should crop her out of all my pictures because I don't want <laughs> your dog. Yo, if your best friend from childhood is coming out here saying I should have cropped, I should have cropped her photos out. I, 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 it's just an embarrassment having her face and all these photos. I mean, I would probably do that, honey. Uh, listen, uh, crop them out right now because if you see the kind of nonsense she's on post getting canceled, okay. And what she got canceled for was completely. You can call it pedophilic if you want, bro, because I think she has a thing for 16-year-old girls. But again, you call that whatever the fuck. A lot of these people are in the closet. I don't care. They're in the closet, bro. She might she might be a lesbian. We don't know. <laughs> but, like, you know, she likes 16-year-old girls uh, as opposed to 26-year-old girls, which is weird. I don't I don't understand it either. I, I, I'm weird out. But like if yo if, if somebody you know from childhood wants to crop out your photos, bro, do it. Do it. Especially if it's Pearl. Do it. She thinks women should lose the right to vote. So much so she has t-shirts and merchandise made out of that stuff. So if there's any reason as a woman, I'm not a woman, I'm saying you. Okay, if you want to crop somebody out, so who, someone who values womanhood, right? Marriage, motherhood, and all and taking care of kids and all that stuff like that. She doesn't think you deserve the right to contribute to the politics of your country simply because you're a woman. I'd crop that shit out right away. Let's continue. My children um, asking me about her one day and me having to show like them finding her. Oh my god, we create a kind space over here. Right? Say yeah. <laughs> he nodded. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go about my life, maybe make some nanny videos, enjoy my marriage and my life here. And she's married. She's married. Now we already covered the wild remarks she did with Nick, but what we're gonna cover is uh uh Brittany Rent Venti, because uh Brittany Venti Rose, we gotta include her into this, especially 2023 was probably disastrous for Pearl. OK, it, it just did not end well. So it's absolutely hilarious that we should cover it. We're offering my entire staff jobs. They want me to fail. And they're bullies. All of them are bullies. Wow. Crying bully like a woke feminist, huh? <laughs> it must be why she has feminism tagged in her video. Pearl is upset about reaction slash commentary channels and has tweeted about it at least a dozen times in the past week, saying they're all fake news bullies, and the leeches of society who have no beliefs, unlike Pearl, who bases her belief system off of whatever Fresh and Fit is saying that day. Boy, those commentary channels are just so awful that Pearl decided to recently subscribe to my boyfriend's channel where he exclusively does reaction content. So I don't know why she subscribed as she feels that reaction and commentary channels are just all bottom of the barrel bullies. But who are these bullies specifically that ignited Pearl to rant about them? It turns out that Pearl has an ongoing beef with Abbott and Preach for the past year that at least partially inspired her rant tweets and video. I've been preach actually reacted to my Pearl video recently, so I just want to say I appreciate everyone who has supported the video thus far. But daddy's little girl, Pearl, is not so happy about Abba and Preach. She recently name dropped them in her rant video about these commentary reaction channels <laughs> bullying her. I actually changed my mind on the whole Abba and Preach thing. I was team Abba and Preach I was in the beginning of um, the Fresh and Fit drama. So after Abba and Preach reacted to my channel, which led me to fall down this rabbit hole, I wanted to know what exactly it was that Pearl considered to be such horrendous bullying. 
Let's say a news person pulls up a media hit piece, okay, on Red Full Folks. They're gonna play this clip. This is Pearl's World. I'd get rid of birth control. I'd ban it. I think that's the root of all evil. I don't think women should vote. And their audience is gonna know that red pill popular people are saying dumb shit like this, and it's gonna discredit everything. Um, that's not bullying. That is called criticism. And it's justified criticism considering that her arguments are intended to be inflammatory. Yeah. Is this really the girl complaining about getting bullied by reaction? This is a girl that had a recent meltdown with a black woman on Twitter, bro. Like and it didn't even make any sense because she seemed like she was getting ready to trigger a bunch. Like she she had she had I want to trigger a black woman in her mind when she woke up and did that tweet. All right, so she again, this is Pearl. It, like her her disgusting. I, I won't be surprised if she wins the Biggest Loser twenty twenty three. I won't be surprised. Yo, some people are saying Andrew Tate. Some people are saying Fresh and Fit. No way, Mara's got to take the cake. I think it might be Pearl, bro. I really think it might be Pearl because she has taken so much L's this year. Chat is so bad, bro. It's not even funny. And what's worse is she's still trying to suck up to people like Fresh and Fit. She's still trying to suck up to all these guys, especially when Fresh and Fit had the uh, Andrew Schultz drama. Who was the one that popped up to try to defend Fresh and Fit? This bozo right over here. Oh, Andrew Schultz, you're a weirdo. Uh, Fresh and Fit have saved lives. Uh, how dare you talk about them? You know how Pearl talks. She's got, she talks like she has a gaggle of saliva stuck to the roof of her mouth and she's holding it with her tongue, right? And she's like, oh my God, how dare you? Andrew Tate is such a hero and Myron saved so many lives. It's like, shut your ass up. What are, what, are you, what are you even saying? Shut up. Stop talking, right? But that's Pearl injecting herself in areas she don't need to be because she desperately wants to count for her fledgling channel. Never mind the lives of black people she's ruined personally, uh, <coughs> including one we talk about here and who's probably going to be someone we talk about fairly often, uh, Queen Riches, all right? Queen Riches is one of them, all right? He, he likes to deny it and doesn't want to call you out personally, but you ruined his life. And now you're trying to come to America. Like, what are we talking about here? You're going to leave him back down in the UK? The nigga's desperate. He won't even take a free trip out here to catch his fade, all right? But still, still, all right? I still think that even the dude you're reacting to with, with Amiri, right, the King of Zamunda guy, where he at? You left him hanging. Uh, Auntie Jenny, Poor Auntie Jenny. She's resulting to doing belly dancing on YouTube. You got this grandma out here belly dancing on YouTube. And this was the same woman on your show criticizing modern women. Here she come in a bikini with her old ass. It's like, listen, listen, honey. I, I appreciate you. You move how you want to move. But ain't you the same one talking about how post-war women, you know, this and that and whatnot. What the, what the hell are you doing over here? <laughs> why, why are you over here doing all these belly dancing and stuff? And like, everybody post- Pearl, who's been black, working with her, all right, they, they've, they, their lives after Pearl has just not been the greatest, okay, we got Queen Riches over here trying to quit, Princess Amunda, a uh, uh, Mary over here, we don't even know what happened to him, all right, he did a couple videos and then died off, <laughs> he called out Abba and preached, I got smoke for you, yeah? I got up a up a up a preach, bro, I got smoke for you, yeah? You get me, bro? I got smoke for you, yeah? You got Queen Riches, I quit. My girlfriend dumped me. I don't know what to do with my life. Uh, this, this nigga 4,000 miles away keep talking about me. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> you know, everybody's just falling apart. I think Pearl realistically ruined more lives out here than anybody else just by running her mouth and not knowing what the fuck she's talking about. Let's continue. Channels. This is the same girl who makes inflammatory tweets all day, every day, and will go on and on about women being whales all day. You would think that Pearl's skin would be thick as blubber. Anyway, later in the video, Pearl gets triggered by Abba and Preach's comments, and she says this. But it's like all Abba and Preach has done for years is like this guy, whoever this guy is, what the fuck happened to him, bro? And all that capping for Pearl, and she left you high and dry. All y'all must feel like idiots. Hit piece, hit piece, hit piece. It's like they just sit on the lives waiting for to take something out of context. She complains about how mean reactionary channels like Adam Preach are. Then her emotional support simp, Smokey here, begins to defend her honor. I don't shit on these guys, but if they come for me or come for you, I'm going for them, Rav. I don't care, Rav. And she immediately ignores him by suddenly playing on her phone every time he speaks in her defense. A successful channel goes like this. That's the only thing I wish Myra never went down that road. What? What's funny about this is that this is part of the lore. This is the same guy that Abin Preach had made content on where he basically had a melty in Pearl's defense. I'm not coming for no one that's not in no YouTube space. Do not mention just pearly things again, yeah? Otherwise, it'll be more smoke, bro. I got bare smoke for you lot, bro. Both of you lot. I got smoke for Abba and Preach, bro. When I was younger, I used to do dinner, no, 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 no. You a big man trying to tell 
Bro, 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 we got smoke for you, bro. But bro, bro, finish your sentences so we can actually understand what the fuck you're talking about. Bro, I got, I got smoke for you. I got smoke. You lot, you got, you lot of problems. I got smoke for you. I got smoke for you. I got smoke for you. Bro, bro, bro. And they're not wrong. Smokey here needs to learn how to finish his sentences. Fresh and fit, blue Abba and preach. Fresh and fit, blue Kevin Samuel. Pause, dog. Pause, bro. Pause. You got. Listen. You, I don't I, listen. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's, maybe it's a UK drama, bro. But uh, here in America, we're ima- we we mad and mature over here. Okay, we mad and mature. You gotta say pause, dog. Okay, Boondocks don't run the game. All right, listen, listen. If you say in fresh and fit blue, Abba and preach. Americans, we got dirty minds, dog. <laughs> so when you say he blew Abba and Preach and blew all these other people, we thinking Buddy really got on his knees and really begged for clout. <laughs> so that's what you, yo, yo, English, my guy. Okay, I know y'all got your version of English, but if you gonna tap into American culture, okay, you gotta learn the lingua. Okay, <laughs> fresh and fit, blue Andrew Tate. They did what? Fresh and fit, blue Jay Waller. It sounds like he's saying that Fresh and Fit are doing something very naughty to Abba and Preach. So maybe he shouldn't be talking about how the English language is used. Problem. What kind of person like makes hit pieces on their friends? So is that is that a masculine thing to do? Yeah, bruh. Imagine knowing that in the future this guy, Amiri guy over here. Why- hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Just knowing this guy over here, Amiri, is not going to have a channel no more because Pearl's going to leave him high and dry, right? Imagine that. And then look at him. Back then, when he thought he was on top of the world, chat, he's over here hugging somebody else's YouTube play button, all right, that he slaved for. Mr. Plantation over here. You slave for that play button, dog. But at the end of the day, she taking with she taking it with her when she comes to America, bro. And you're not coming with her, bro. <laughs> Princess of Moon to my ass, dog. You're not going nowhere. You stay your ass over here in the UK, all right? But looking at this, look how he's just hugging up on the play button. Like he wish he got that gold play button from YouTube. Like, oh my God, like this is mine. Bro, you didn't earn that shit. She stole your wealth. Then like makes hit pieces on their friends. So is, that, is that a masculine thing to do? I don't understand why she's calling Admin Preach's video a hit piece. Is responding to videos considered a hit piece? Because if so, Pearl has done that plenty of times. In fact, Pearl's entire channel started from her reacting to videos with her very corny titles. I saw that comment on your video. Yeah, fake news media or something. Yeah, she called you guys a fake news TMZ reaction channel. Even her comment on your channel. I think it's so funny because like Pearl does a lot of reactions. Yeah, I know. Like if you just go on her channel, you search up the word react. There's like hundreds of videos. I don't know what we are talking about, but she does a lot of reactions. Pearl reacts to the first date. Pearl reacts to why, why did you hear old content? Oh, uh, like the first time white girl listens to Jay Z or whatever, like shit like that or whatever. Why does girl on earth react to Lil Loaded? No. Yeah. <laughs> So what exactly is her criteria for a hit piece? Does it count when she's reacting to somebody talking to her? Is that a reaction or is it a hit piece? It just sounds like she's mad that reaction channels are criticizing her even when it's fair criticism because she has an ego. She is never going to grow as a person if she can't take criticism. What's even the point of her having a YouTube channel centered around having debates if she can't even agree to disagree and cries bully? She's discrediting her entire channel by calling everything a hit piece. She also praises Fresh and Fit's integrity for not making hit pieces. You can say what you want about them but they're they believe what they say and they would never turn on their friends it's actually well, yeah, amazing how loyal they are back. to their friends fresh and fit I'm gonna call, man. they're they are so loyal to their friends but the thing is their entire show is a hit piece on women almost every episode they're talking to intoxicated low-class sex workers some know me as the throw goat some know me as a demon <laughs> demon some know me- yeah i'm sorry uh, look, look at that <laughs> yours truly andrew tate <laughs> go fucking figure huh all right so chat that's what we got for Pearl right now. So we got to move on to the next candidate over here, all right? And that's back to Myron, or particularly the Fresh and Fit podcast, because he is the Fresh and Fit podcast at the end of the day, all right? So, I mean, every, when you think Fresh and Fit, you're not looking at Fresh. No one is looking at Fresh, okay? I mean, you have to be crazy, too. He's the B-Mike, okay? And people even think he's got a lot of work to do, right? He's not even up to that level. But Myron, on the other hand, he's went through a lot of controversies, a lot of L's. And one of the big ones that I think he's actually uh, pretty upset about right now is the homosexual allegations, okay? And it all started with a couple of different shorts that went viral, okay? And the shorts that went viral were Myron talking about some things about gay men that almost seemed that he was um uh how do i how do i how do i I explain this okay it almost seemed like he was he was either envying a lot of gay men or he wished he was you know um he was he was uh i'm gonna play the video but it almost get the feeling like he he admires 
gay people. And now here's the thing. There's nothing wrong with that, right? But again, this is the red pill we're talking about. They, they, they're they very disparaging towards uh, LGBTQ and homosexuals and whatnot, right? They don't like them, all right? It is what it is. But the one thing we speculated on this channel, and we've been speculating it before 2023, but we've talked about it heavily in 2023, is like a lot of these guys, maybe the reason why they have such vitriol against women and such love for men is that maybe they are attracted to men and they might be in a matrix agenda here uh, to get these young men who are disenfranchised from women. Maybe they got breakup, you know, a woman took them out and, you know, dine and dash or things like that. And they want to take that anger and then turn it into a thug and love, if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Oh my God, bro! I can't do this with a straight face. All right, so Byron recently was getting a bunch of allegations because uh, the photos were circulating, bro. It, they were they were circulating heavy. If you guys want to wonder uh, what followers there is, a bunch of photos of the same white dude hugging up on Myron in all kinds of ways, dog. All right, he was kissing on him. There was a photo of him laying up in bed shirtless with this motherfucker. And things we say shirtless because they could have been completely naked or down to their drawers. We don't know because they were both underneath the blankets, okay? And then uh, we, we were seeing all these photos of Myron grabbing him from the back. And guess what? Myron is shirtless, all right? So there are a bunch of different shirtless photos of him and another man. And Marin, a lot of people were thinking, like, yo, 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 okay, this is sus, bro. And the thing is, those photos were exposed a long time ago, all right? They were exposed a long time ago. But there were videos that were brought up. Uh, particularly popularized by Ethan Klein because he decided to take another jab to Fresh and Fit, all right? And he was like, okay, maybe this might be the reason why Fresh and Fit are the way they are, right? Maybe this explains the photos that we see of Myron, right? Maybe the reason why Myron does what Myron does and who he is is because he might be gay, okay? So a lot of people were talking about that. And one of the main things in, in the Klein cited was the cunnilingus, and for those of you guys who don't know, it's, um, you know, oral sex for women, all right, giving women oral sex, and now most people, you know, a lot, a lot of people who aren't experienced in the bedroom, all right, they think that going down on their partners, their, their wives or girlfriends or things like that, right, they think that that's somehow uh, emasculating. All right, that that gives the woman power if he eats box, you know, for a change, right? But these guys somehow believe that in order to keep a woman satisfied in the bedroom, their orgasm comes first and the woman's orgasm doesn't matter. That's the best way to keep your woman in line because for some reason, a woman, a woman's orgasm doesn't matter, but a man does because a man is a provider and a woman needs a man because he's high value and he's got the wealth. And so long he has a high value and the wealth, a high value man doesn't have to go down on a woman. And he made the cardinal sin that we all thought was kind of like, hey, wait, 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 hold up, time out. What, what, what did you say? <laughs> he said, and I shit you not, vaginas are gross. No, 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 no. Uh, let me quote him for, 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 for verbatim, right? He says, female vaginas are gross. Almost like saying female is just like this other thing over there. All right. And it wasn't just that. It, it gets worse, right? He talks about how gay men have more money and have more wealth on average, all right? So a lot of this stuff filled speculation of, hey, wait a minute. Is this nigga gay? <laughs> like, is, is he an undercover, right? Maybe not FBI or Homeland Security. He might be un undercover for something else. <laughs> we just got to be honest with that, right? So what I want to do, let's play the videos that got Myron in such hot water, okay? Let's get it. Oh shit! Let me let me get back to it. Hold up, hold up, chat. Hold up. I've, all men, can I just say all men say they don't? You ain't gonna get yes, you don't. No. I've, all men, can I just say all men say they don't, and they actually do. I really don't. You've never done it in your life. No, I, I've done it in my life. So yes. But the last time I did it was 2014. I remember specifically. What? Yeah. Never again. Why? Female vaginas are disgusting. No, they're not. Do you eat vagina? Exactly. Because she's not gay. I don't I don't get it. She's not a lesbian, right? So I, I guess, you know, she's not going to be attracted to vaginas. But for straight men who like vaginas, all right, yeah, 
Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I go down. I was, hey, bro, yeah, I mean, uh, it ain't that kind of show right now. We gotta keep it PG thirteen, but don't get it twisted, bro. I, will, oh my God, bro, we want to talk about, how, bro. It, it, the fact that he thinks that this right here is a disgusting act, and he flips on a woman who's clearly not attracted to a vagina, right, and say, "Well, if you eat vaginas, bro, that doesn't that that's not how that works. She's not, <laughs> she's not a." She's not a man, dog. You can't just say that. She, have you eaten vaginas? Like, come on, that's my point exactly. Yes. So, if you thought that was bad, here's another one he does where he talks about gay men being richer than straight men, right? Which is ironic because this is the same guy, okay, that talks about all straight men need to be high value in order for you to get women. All right, that's how you need to be. But on the other hand, he's saying, yeah, gay people got more uh, money than y'all both. So, so I'm sorry, are, are gay folks or gay men high value more than the straight incels you're teaching in your chat or stream? You let me know because uh, maybe you should be having those men get lessons from gay dudes if gay dudes are richer than straight dudes on average. You get my drift net worth of a heterosexual guy versus the average net worth of a homosexual guy guarantee the net worth of a homosexual guy is higher he was like no that's actually true why why would that be well because <laughs> they don't deal with women so yeah. think about oh this God. they can just get but on grinder but don't they okay 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 i know I see, yeah, oh, yeah. see where i'm going here yeah, yeah, yeah. so they can just get on grinder get what the hell they need done and then go right back to work and then keep it's going. more transactional it's more it's it's quicker more transactional yeah. and then also when two men deal with each other less effort it's less effort and then Pause. and they're spelling <laughs> they're spending um he actually thinks it's less effort this is someone who actually has no experience with people in his circle of friends or his circle of family members, or he doesn't even know any person who's probably homosexual, right? But no, it's not because of just oh yeah, men are just out here just fucking each other because they're men. No, it's not. It's not the case at all. Believe it or not, there are gay dudes out there that got preferences, dog. They're out here just fucking everything they see. Okay, so I don't know if you get that kind of lust when you see other men just thinking that oh yeah, they can just get it whenever they want. It's it's not like that, bro. <laughs> it's not like that at all, bro. It's completely different, bro. And again, it just shows you the lack of experience these guys have with all this stuff, right? It's like, y'all don't know. Y'all just here talking and saying all this stupid stuff, but it seems like you just don't know. You have all these arbitrary rules, but you really don't know, bro. That's not how that shit works, okay? It's, it's the same all around. They're splitting everything down the middle. And I thought to myself, damn, like, that's crazy because homosexual dudes get way more sex than heterosexual guys, but they're still able to be productive. Why is that? I've theorized that. Why is that indeed, Myron? <laughs> like, why is that indeed? So, basics. The basis of that conversation is well. Listen, homosexual dudes. I mean, they get more sex than than than, than, than straight men. So why not, right, bro? What? <laughs> what? What? Do you, hey, what are you? What are you trying to say, dog? What do you? What do you mean by that? What do you? What do you honestly mean by that? What's going on, right? So it's one of those things that he doesn't. I don't think he understands. Maybe he understands from the perspective of what he's seen of the gay people around him. Maybe I, I guess again, I, I, I wouldn't put it past my mind, especially knowing that there are footages like this that exist out there. All right, I wouldn't put it out of my mind that this guy, you know, has love for the opposite sex. All right, that's why he admires the opposite sex. What he doesn't realize is that you know, uh, gay people also engage in open relationships. They spend a lot of money going out and doing things and whatnot, all right? And sometimes the open relationships are with other individuals that they also have to spend time and money on. So it, it's not the same as heterosexual couples having relationships because it, it, it's completely different. They're, they're men on men, it's women on women. And here's the thing, most men aren't even gonna be able to do it or get girls to the frequency as men on men counterparts so that means that these men are spending more, more money going out there doing things and getting with dudes and whatnot so they're spending more money on the dates clubs and outing themselves and he thinks that no 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 it's because men have to spend all this time with women all right and go on dates and all these different things that's why that's freaking why that more gay people have more money right okay uh, go ahead and uh, flaunt your 19 real estate properties in front of us, bro. But that, that that's an L, bro. A lot of people are clowning Myron for this. They're saying, bro, are you are you gay? <laughs> like, what's, what's going on? Because a lot of stuff since that video is starting to make a lot of sense. But we'll let you guys vote on that as it comes around. But let's go ahead and get to the candidate here, which is uh, 
Andrew Tate. We got to get to Andrew Tate here because Andrew Tate, the biggest L he ever took of 2023 was when he got roasted by Hassan. Now, everybody knows Hassan is a clown. Like Everybody knows that at this point, right? You can't trust him for news anymore. You can trust Fox News or CNN or MSNBC. You can't trust these guys. You can't trust Hassan either. He's a self-proclaimed propagandist. He, he said that himself on Pierce Morgan. I'm not lying. He said that himself. So don't come at me saying Hassan Tards, okay? I know y'all are lurking. Okay, that's him. But Hassan did one thing in 2023 that was actually uh, ridiculously crazy, and I, I liked it because he called out Andrew Tate, and he was the first person out there to actually make Andrew Tate sweat. I'm talking about sweat. This dude was already in his drawers doing a live stream to a bunch of boys, millions of boys across the world, right? That's how sus these people are. But he's already in his boxers streaming to millions of boys, and here comes Hassan, his little curly hair, all right? He's got, he's got, he's got the mustache or whatnot. He's like, I'm going to make this nigga sweat. And it was so bad. <laughs> Andrew Tate, literally, dog, it was so bad. Dude had to take off his glasses. Dude took off his headphones. He was just like, oh, my, I can't. I can't deal with this clown. Now, most tater tots will see it as, oh, Hassan, you know, just being a typical lefty weirdo, uh, you know, calling out the the the, the tatester uh, for things that he shouldn't be calling him out on. But uh, believe it or not, Hassan actually was making sense with Andrew Tate. And those of you guys who watch this channel, I, I don't like Hassan. I actually despise him. I think he's a weirdo, bro. This guy doesn't know facts from his asshole, okay? It is what it is, okay? But the fact that he was accurate on Andrew Tate actually makes me speculate on a lot of things that he talks about, which is like, huh. So you can you can tell the truth on this, but somehow conveniently lie on these other things. Uh, very sus, bro. But it is what it is. You got to give credit when credit is due, even if you don't like him. That's what content creation is all about. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get to Andrew Tate's uh, mishap with uh, Hassan Piker. All of the car crashes I've been involved in, all the times my car was hit, and all the negative experience I've had He's on the road, out like women Sam were at fault. That is now you can sit here and say the insurance claims say that I never said the insurance claims don't say that. I'm saying that I am not comfortable with women driving because of my personal experience. Those are my personal experiences. <laughs> you can drag up all the empirical evidence in the world you want to try and drag up. <laughs> Yo, shut up, bro. That's not the way shut up to preach. That's not the way it works. That's akin to some woman saying because three men have attacked me, all men are violent. That's nonsense. It's the same logic. That's uh, truth, but... It doesn't mean it is the truth. We have to be able to take ourselves out of our own experience to look at things holistically to understand that our experience is not defined the experience for everyone, especially when we're coming out here and saying men are like this, women are like this. If you're just using your own subjective experience to make all those statements true, then of course, at some point, we're going to look at you like you're crazy because it's like you have your own biases. If you grow up in the hood and you only around hood rats, you're like, well, every woman's a hood rat. No, it's just the women you encounter. If you grow up in a posh area and every woman is snobby, that's not to mean that every woman is snobby, just your experienced life. There's a difference between saying, oh, women in my neighborhood are snobby and saying women in general are snobby. The same can be said for black people or white folks. Or that's how we come with these sweeping statements based off of nothing but our own personal biases. Anything you want to say? Yeah, you're 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 a girl that says all oh, men are garbage. You're, that's you. That's you. All men are trapped. That's you. That's you. Because in her experience, I always you want to always when a girl says that you want to hold her accountable. Nah, it's the people that you choose. Okay. Okay, that's you. You the same motherfucker. Same same. Same. But whatever. Let's keep playing. So you certain things happen to you over and over and over and over and over again. You've come on here deciding you really want to stick up for the chicks and maybe, you know, one of them will drive over to your house. It's cool. We've got better things to I don't to think I, I, look, look, let's be real. I don't think I need to be a, a male feminist to be able to attract women, okay? <laughs> However, <laughs> having said that's that. That's the fact. Like, you can, listen, they'll, they'll call, even this channel until people got wise, we're not male feminists over here just because we believe that women deserve respect and rights too okay yeah there are lots of things you can criticize women about we don't do that on this channel for the most part all right but realistically there are lots of things you can criticize women about and it's out there you know it's out there the false accusations the stuff like that but again when you start going into these weird ass type of nonsense where oh my god women drivers are so much worse than men drivers it's like okay okay time out <laughs> and then we ask for the facts well my personal experience okay buddy all right Something's not making any sense because um, when it comes to insurance, 
we men pay more in premiums than women. Why is that? <laughs> Your facts are not adding up, dog. All right, it doesn't match up to reality. So you can have personal experience of you know women being poor drivers, but it doesn't match up to the facts. All right, your premium are higher than most women when it comes to stuff like that. So again, it, it's crazy because a lot of these guys they can't they, they can't they can't make sense of it, right? But again, watch this dude literally sweat out of all of this, bro. Uh, having said that, that was a funny implication. All right, little you go there. Like, bro, you, 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 hey, you think I gotta hey, suck up these hey, hoes? Hey, you think I don't get? You think I get no pussy? I guess. Hey man, I did you not know? I used to make pickup videos. <laughs> Have you seen that shit where he's making all kind of anti-trans <laughs> jokes and all that shit? He said college was a good time for me. I was picking up bitches on Miami Strip. We will never be able to arrive at a meaningful solution or a resolution to this conversation if we're both operating on personal anecdotes and hypotheticals. That is not how you can conduct an appropriate debate. Good. So now you're saying the thing I just said. I have my own biases, my personal experiences, and I say them. Some people disagree, and some people agree, and I don't care. All right. Hey, hey, okay. Hey, hey. It's, it, it's important. You okay. want to know why it's important? Hey. Do you want to know why this is why important? Why is it important? Because every single time these red pill dudes pretend that they operate on the truth, <laughs> being outside of the matrix, being the logical and the consistent ones, you come to find out when pressed a little bit, they are oftentimes just as fragile yes! and just as ego-driven Yo, as yes! the they oh, these dudes to are hate so and want to take down. Yeah. These so-called so superior flake. beings, as they like to put themselves mm. as, are <laughs> operating on the same mode of operation as the inferior beings, mm. quote-unquote, so that they don't like. Yeah. So I just think so that was interesting bags. to me. How can you coach someone if you aren't willing, if, if, if you're saying, I'm going to trust my ears and my eyes, right? How do you coach someone out of listening to their own ear and their eyes, their own eyes and how they view the world? Meaning, let's say there's a virgin dude who says all women are whores. Well, you're telling him to come outside of their own personal biases, no. to get outside of their own experience, to learn something different. Because to him, you're right and they're wrong. So it's not about everybody coming out of your... He's not just a superior human being to a woman. Mm. He's a superior human being to the people that he teach. Mm. And I'm just going to teach you so, to be a little bit closer mm. to my level. These people are Which is interesting boys. because you say like, everyone has their own truth. But it's like, you don't believe that. You don't believe that everyone's truths are equal because you go on Twitch to try to change people's minds and realize that their truth is wrong, that their paradigm is wrong, right? You call yourself quote unquote Morpheus and you're gonna be, so that means that you think that your paradigm and your biases are correct. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So that's when you realize how flimsy a lot of this shit is. Talk. I'm not asking you to ignore your own personal experiences. I'm simply asking you to look at the data. Look at, look at Andrew Tate. This is a red pill. Okay, because y'all y'all know how I feel about the far left and the far right. I think they're the same people, all right? And what happens when an unstoppable force move, meets an immovable object, all right? This is what happens. This is exactly what happens, okay? Hassan is what you would call a far lefty, okay? And this guy, Andrew Tate, is an alt-right guy, okay? They're opposite sides of the exact same coin, what happens if they collide? It is just brilliant. Look at Andrew Tate and the freak out. This guy spends time calling himself James Bond. Uh, I'm not seeing that in this reaction, my boy. Okay, he calls himself, you know, a, a Batman and all these superhero terms and whatnot. And yet, look at how he's behaving. This guy prides himself on stoicism. And yet, this guy, this guy, this guy, he can't even stay, he can't even stay calm through a debate with someone who considers he considers lower than him because you know a lot of people on the alt right they think the far lefties are beneath them right and the same thing with the uh, vice versa but it's funny how you see these guys interact and they lose it they just lose their minds so let's change the subject because you just proved it. okay Andrew, do you believe? Well, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, you didn't really prove anything, but it's cool. Uh, do you believe the Earth is flat, or do you? He's so frustrated, but he had to take the headphones off. I don't want to hear it. He's not even hearing what Hassan is saying right now because he's got the headphones off. He's got the headphones off. He's getting his buns. He's getting his buns spanked so hard. Dude had to whip out another cigar. He's like, listen, bro, ain't enough nicotine to handle this shit right here. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> he had to, he had to take it off. He had to unload. <laughs> Yo, when I saw this, I'm like, yo, 
this has to be this is an L because this guy is parading himself as the alpha above alphas. Here he is, can't even handle someone they would consider a beta like Hassan. Like you let, you let this Turkish dude whip your ass like that, bro. But you supposed to be from the UK. You supposed to be from Luton, right? Is it Luton? Is it Luton where he's from? Right? <laughs> is it Luton? I think that's Luton, right? You're from Luton. Apparently, them niggas are hard over there. But apparently, you can't handle a softy lefty like Hassan. Oh my God! <laughs> you believe the Earth is? Hey, is... listen, chat. Hassan is the same guy that gets flamed by Willie Mac. By the way. All right, Willie Mac handles this guy easily, but Andrew Tate couldn't even do that. Imagine if Andrew Tate debated people who were serious, dog. He wouldn't make it. Look at him stressing for a cigar. Spherical. Look at this. Round. He's not hearing you, Hassan. He's got his headphones off. So he, he needs a break. Right. Right. He needs a break. Oh, he took his headphones off? He gets very stressed sometimes, and you know. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's cool. It's important, you know. Sometimes you can't take the heat. Sometimes you can't take the heat, so you gotta get out of the kitchen a little bit. He's like, um, Andrew, do the work, man. God damn it, I gotta do this shit again. Do you believe the Earth is flat or round, spherical, globe? What do you believe it's round, right? But when you walk outside, it feels like it's flat. Brother, brother, and I, I, I it looks flat. It feels flat, but you believe it's round. Why do you believe the Earth is round? Because I have personal experience that would prove to me that the Earth is round. Oh, you have personal experience. What, what happened? Did you go up to the fucking moon? Is that how you figured right. it out? Actually, I flew up into space and I looked down on Earth. And yeah. I saw big... He got him. He got him. So again, this is the rare times I would say Hassan gets a dub. And I rarely ever do that, bro, because he doesn't do anything that deserves a dub. But Hassan. In this case, with Andrew Tate, you got to give it to him, folks. You got to give it to him. He, listen, even I've been preaching like, yeah, dog. And they, they criticize Hassan, too. They all do, because Hassan was single-handedly responsible for the Leftover podcast breaking up, okay? That was him and his fans. They went crazy, okay? But still, this is a rare W from Hassan. Like, you don't often see it, but you got to give credit where credit's due. The dead. Hey, That's the dead. Last time that, but, but it lasts even longer. Up to this point? Shit, it's done. Yes. All right, it's done. Because mm -hmm. he's going to resort to humor, to discredit, which it, it's done. Just move on. Okay. You can't talk. Who wants to see that? We have over 100,000 students making more than they invest each month. If they didn't make more than they invest, they wouldn't uh -huh. sign up. One of the most successful online educational platforms in the It's such a bullshit fucking talking point, too. And we talking about over 100,000 students. He's talking about is the real world, which, a.k.a. the real world, used to be Hustler University 2.0, which is what took off you know andrew takes wealth because that that's the marketing he did that was funneled a bunch of young people to hustles university 2.0 if you guys don't know it's where you pay 50 bucks a month for a glorified discord chat that's it that, that, that's it that's all you get and which i think it's ridiculous but 50 bucks a month and now andrew tate is defending the claim that he's not scamming these students but in fact these students are making a shit ton of money and his reasoning is well if they weren't making money every month why would they sign up i don't know maybe it's because you're cringe marketing that doesn't reveal the truth in advertising letting them know hey uh there's a chance that you might not be making 10 grand a month the moment you sign up for my course. Matter of fact, you're actually going to lose money paying for my course before you ever even see a profit. And that's if you have the work ethic to even work enough to get a profit. But other than that, that's it. All right. And a lot of people, they still aren't willing to face up to reality that Andrew Tate has just been running one giant scam this entire time. And the one person that actually had the opportunity to call him out to his face was Hassan. And, and Andrew Tate was not expecting this because he probably thought Hassan was another lefty weirdo that he could overcome with his alt-right bullshit. But it just didn't work in this situation because Andrew Tate actually has scams that he's running, like the War Room and Hustle University 2.0. I dare you to tell me somebody who met 10K, who made 10K from one of his programs. I dare you to tell me. It doesn't exist. The people who usually say they made $10,000 from his programs, they have the course in the description, which is also doubles as an affiliate marketing tool, meaning whatever Bozo watches the false clip of these guys claiming they made $10,000 in one month, there's a link right below where you click. And then Andrew Tate pays them $50 or 50% of whatever the affiliate earnings are, which is crazy. And earnings per click, which is interesting, right? Again, it's a scam. A lot of people were scammed by this guy in 2023, but no one wants to call it out. 
We've been doing it. And frankly, there are other channels doing it. Shout out to Comments of Skeptic. Comments of Skeptic has been crazy on Andrew Tate's next recently, recently, right? There are other channels out there that have done a great job exposing this clown, but I don't think it's enough. It really isn't. We need to do more. Is it, is it, are there multiple layers? How to make some money yourself if you want to join and have more information. It's all on corporate.com. You can find out yourself. If you're too cheap to pay $50, then you're broke. Nobody gives a shit what you think anyway. You've ruined the stream. Everyone wants you out of it. So you can change <laughs> to the you know, program it. and be fun. Or keep sitting there and talking sarcastic and really slowly and repeating yourself and talking about how you only believe what you see on the internet. You ruined the stream, bro. You ruined the stream. Let's move on to something fun. Let's get the tempo up. There you go. That's it. You got him. No, but, but that's it. It's boring. It's not fun. Good. Now we know what it's about. It's not about the truth. It's not about Morpheus in the Matrix. No. Nothing to do with that. No, no, no. Let's get fun. That's facts. Like, I don't know how Hassan accidentally got Tate to expose that he wasn't really about doing streams for educating men. It was for entertainment, for fun. All right. And that's what a lot of these pill popping weirdos, when they say, I'm saving men's lives, it's cap. They're doing the exact same thing we're doing here on YouTube, right? We're here to serve entertainment. That's what we're here to do. Here to serve entertainment. All right. And occasionally advice that contrasts the message or, or that is a contrary to the message that is being uh, spewed out there. Right. So there's a little bit of that. But my job isn't here to save men's lives or anything like that. It's merely just to expose a lot of these weirdos and cringe internet lords that are out here spewing advice that don't really even make sense to the average person out here because everyone in this chat i'm assuming we're, we're, we're just the average joe out here who happened to stumble upon the internet and realized there are a bunch of crazies out here saying things that don't even make sense and even in the world that we live right so again that's essentially what's happening here and again again he Hassan managed to get Andrew Tate to expose all of that, and Andrew Tate got so flustered. So, with that being said, you already know what it is. It's voting time. It's voting time. And this time, we got to get rid of another three. Three people have to go. All right? Gone. Okay? So, if you guys don't know, we got to go through the list again. All right? Saint the Center. All right? Number one. We got Donnie Boy, number two. Parlor Thing, three. Fresh and Fit 4, Andrew Tate 5. Three people have to go. Vote right now in the chat. We got to know, okay? Who are you once? And I'll, I'll repeat it, by the way, all right? We'll, uh, we'll get – hold up. Let me get the music going here. I'll repeat it. We got Saint the Sinner. We got Donnie Boy. We got Pearly Things, Fresh and Fit. Andrew Tate, you got to get rid of three. And this is going to, it's going to get harder, chat. It's going to get harder as we get closer. It was going to get tough. You got to get rid of three. Let's see the chat right now. Three people got to go. Eliminate three. This is for the biggest loser of 2023. Three people has to be eliminated right now. Let's get it. We got a lot of two, three, fours, two, three, ones, one, two, three. I'm seeing twos and threes, the common denominator. There's some ones. In, oh, now we got more ones. Y'all want to get rid of Saint the Center? That's crazy. Okay. We got Saint the Center so far, Donnie Boy, and Pearly Thing. This is interesting. Time's up. All right. All right. So it looks like we got it. Yo. Yo, this is. is <laughs> oh, my God. This is crazy. All right. So we got. We got. Damn, Donnie Boy is gone. So Donnie Boy is out of there. Gone, all right? So we got so far two, three, and one, all right? So that means Saint the Center, Donnie Boy, and Pearly Things. Whoa, I did not see that coming. Y'all basically just made it a, a, a showdown between Fresh and Fit and Andrew Tate. 
I hope y'all understand that, right? Y'all just made a showdown between Fresh and Fit and Andrew Tate. They're all, okay, perfect. Let's get into it, chat. Okay, so Fresh and Fit, we got we to talk about this, okay? Because this has to be the biggest L of 2023. And this is by unanimous decision, okay? And this is Fresh and Fit getting demonetized, okay? They're done. Okay, and th this right here is actually one of them. And it actually makes sense why you guys kept Fresh and Fit on, okay? Because this is one of the main things that actually ruined their channel. Like, they're not making as much money as they used to make, okay? And this has to do with what they did prior uh, to this, right? They were doing a bunch of KKK stuff, and when they were going to ever and preach, right? They thought they were not going to have any consequences. But consequences was yet to be had because what ended up happening was... Fresh and Fit eventually got demonetized from YouTube. This happened 2023. Now, why this is so significant is because this is something this channel has called out multiple times. All right, 2022, 2021, we've been saying, hey, yo, these guys are going to get canceled. It's only a matter of time. 2021 was bad because that's when Fresh and Fit was still running strong. But essentially, a lot of the Fresh and Fit tards were, oh, dude, you're just a hider, dude. You're just a hider, man. Like, you're hating on us. Uh, Fresh and Fit are going to go to the top. Fresh and Fit are going to win. Fresh and Fit to the moon, right? Whatever the fuck they were spewing, right? And in 2022, when they started to get into the, you know, the, the controversies, especially with the Asian doll, black women, and all that stuff like that, you know, it was definitely a rocky start. I mean, literally, four months into 2022, they were already at risk at losing their channel. So it turns out that we weren't wrong there. But something how somehow youtube just kept them on youtube kept them running and you know flying and doing what the hell they're doing right it is what it is until 2023 the year we said it was over with the year we said yo fresh and fit they're done ain't no way they're gonna be coming back now we still got some hate from the fresh and fit tards but it wasn't the same as we got in 2021. That's why I appreciate y'all in the in the chat right now. I appreciate all of you guys because especially the OGs, y'all were there with us when we were going through the trolls that were invading our chat, telling us that we were haters. They were ridiculing us. They were trying to expose us. They were doing all these crazy things to us, all because we were telling the truth that you guys, hindsight 2020, are not going to make it to 2023 or even beyond that, right? We were saying this. 2023 happens and YouTube drops the D partnership hammer. They're done. No more super chats, no more ad revenues. You're done. Now they've been re rejected to the Rumble Reject Squad. They're they're over with. All right. Now they're struggling with that. Now, is it saying the channel is dying? YouTube wise, yes, it, it's over with. They're, they're not coming back. And honestly, I don't know if they've had their appeal already, uh, but it seemed like if they did, it didn't work out because they're still demonetized. It's not working out for them. Okay. So now they're exclusively on Rumble while they leave the cheap shit to YouTube. And we're seeing the direct impact of their channel. But that's not what we're here to talk about. What we're here to talk about is how unstoic Myron was when he got the news that his channel was demonetized. Okay. That's what we really saw the crybaby in full effect. Let's take a look. So I left a job that I truly loved to do this, right? Because I shouldn't be admitting this, but saving children, right? That was great. <laughs> but saving you guys is better. <laughs> oh my God. He really did not just say that. He about to cry. He about to cry, bro. You can see the vein on his forehead. He about to cry. Now he's gone. <laughs> but he got Daisy Dukes on at the run. <laughs> he said, I can't do this no more. Saving you guys was one thing. Saving children is one thing. But you intos. Saving you intos. Oh, my God. Oh my god, bro. This guy. This guy. <laughs> I can't.
can't believe he cried about that. Now, y'all are probably sitting here, Duke. What? I mean, he's crying for his fans. Why Why you got to be so mean to him, Duke? No, no, no. Here's the thing. This is the guy that bragged about how other people cry and other people are about the money. Matter of fact, he even got into a whole beef with uh, whatever podcast, Brian. Who he's not looking too good right now. It is what it is, right? But. He he got into a beef with whatever podcast Brian, okay, talking about how whatever podcast Brian was all in for the money, right? He only cared about the money, but Fresh and Fit, we don't care about the money. We care about saving the insult life because uh, Myron had a job where he could have easily, he could have easily saved children from being trafficked. No, oh no, but you know what's more important is bringing on known traffickers like Andrew Tate to their platform to go ahead and promote him to their fans because to them, promoting traffickers is saving men's lives. <laughs> that don't make any sense, bro. But look how he's crying. But he is crying over here over being demonetized. And a lot of people, including Fresh and Fit fans, they had to they had to realize something. They were like, okay, wait a minute. For a long time, they're talking about it's never been about the money. For a long time, they've said it, it's, it's always been about the wealth or the man. But meanwhile, Myron's been bragging about his 19 real estate properties. Fresh brags about his chains, Rolex, and Lamborghini Euruses. Okay, so there's never really been there's never really been a situation where we're able to see clearly that when these guys have to be forced to choose between money and the people they care about. We seen what they really care about here. And the fact that Meyer was crying on Fumble Rumble over the demonetization is crazy. Now, here's the crazy thing, right? You hear me using the terms departnering and demonetization because that's exactly what happened. When you get departnered, you don't make money anymore. And to be fair, Fresh and Fit, I mean, they had a lot of leeway. They had a massive leeway. They've been so coddled by YouTube. I'm surprised it took YouTube this long to cancel them, all right? But they weren't really canceled in the original fashion, right? I mean, at least compared it to their idol, Nick Fuentes, who really got canceled, okay? These guys got their partner, basically meaning you can still be on YouTube, but you're not you're not making money, fam. We're not about to pay you for putting a clown a clan hoodie on and disparaging other black content creators. It's just not gonna fly, right? So eventually, it's not gonna look too well for advertisers, which most of the people make their money on this platform, including YouTube themselves. They depend on advertisers for Pete's sake. So YouTube the partnered them, but these guys are so freaking fragile. They're willing to take a deep partner situation and call it cancel culture. The same thing happened to Pearly Things, by the way, because they're all following the same post. She gets deep partnered. All of a sudden, it's cancel culture. Now, is it the old and and they'll be all for fresh and fit? No, because uh, unfortunately, their audience base is so strong it can actually withstand a lot. I actually, fresh and fit and Sneeko have the stronger fan base right and sneeko was actually the more surprising one because i thought after his fake grift into uh islam and religion that especially when he starts exposing himself people would see the truth right but i, I guess i was wrong i would eat my hat on that one bro. i was wrong on that because a lot of people are still rocking with sneeko especially when he pivot to the irl streaming so sneeko that's why we backed off of him there's really nothing else to to really go on i mean we've we've, we've done podcast on them a little bit but it's not as it's not as crazy because again uh, listen i don't know shit about islam i don't know shit about all these other things i'm not religious i don't give a fuck okay if that's what he wants to do let him do it but if he decides to do these irl streams like some of these uh other people over here like a neon and all these other guys who are going out there punching people and slapping people but then they run behind a security guard you know then we cover stuff like that but other than that i mean it's, it's, it's nico so i'm surprised they got a strong audience base so does fresh and fit okay fresh and fit it's crazy how they got that shit locked down okay so they're not going anywhere they're gonna make it on rumble which is kind of their main thing but also the people who are on our platform right now on youtube they still make money off of merch dj academics also mentioned that previously where he won an andrew schultz platform and andrew schultz had to go ahead and uh lay down the news for dj academics and they, they when they went over there back and forth essentially you know fresh and fit felt some kind of way because they thought andrew schultz was going at him because andrew schultz didn't know that they were canceled or departnered they thought they were going off the youtube platform so again dj academics has to stress the fact that you know they got a strong audience base and they'll be fine they're making money ever which way right and he also referenced things like that so fresh and fit they're not done no matter how they sit there on the platform and talk about oh cancel culture is coming afterwards 
don't get it twisted, bro. The fact that they're still on YouTube, they're making bread with these merches, dog. They're making bread with these merches. And good for them, okay? It just shows you that you can defy YouTube's cancel culture, but it's just weird when you consider yourself uh, depart, uh, uh, canceled, which is not really the case. But shout out to that, all right? So let's get to Andrew Tate and his L of 2023 right so we're gonna talk about andrew tate and the whole pierce morgan situation that was a massive L that he took because this was when everybody realized that andrew tate and andrew tate yeah bro this guy he doesn't know what he's talking about and second of all bro this is the guy that's so narcissistic he's willing to hijack other people's struggle to hide from the fact that he's going to prison for being a trafficker right and it's point, the recent interview that he did with Pierce Morgan, because this uh, not the last one he did with Pierce Morgan. The last one he did with Pierce Morgan, he actually he actually let uh, Pierce Morgan let Andrew Tate bully him a little bit. He got bullied by Andrew Tate, but and, uh, Pierce Morgan wasn't having it this second time around. Okay, Pierce Morgan said, "Okay, you know what? I'm gonna call you out. We're gonna go tit for tat. And this is what it is, right?" And I shit you not. He did not let Andrew Tate get away with anything. Matter of fact, even at the start of the debate when uh, Andrew Tate was talking, hey, listen, all right, listen, this is what's happening because my I stand up for people of free speech. I stand up for everybody, and this is why I'm being canceled, okay? That, that this is why, like, you know, the whole Palestinian situation is happening because I stand up for free speech. And then Pierce Morgan is like, oh, wait, come on, bro. Hold up, come on. You're not being canceled because you're standing up for the rights of Palestinians or standing up for the rights of pretty much young men out there. You're being a uh, prosecutor right now because they think you're a trafficker. Not, 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 not they, they have 70,000 pages worth of documents. So, not even thinking that they're processing those documents because they're evidence against you that you, you, you are a trafficker, bro. You, you traffic women. <laughs> like, you're, you're not in jail. Because you stand up for other people, dog. You're, you're you're going to jail because you're a trafficker, and they literally have shopping carts filled with evidence to prosecute with. But let's see what Andrew Tate has to say about the whole thing. It's been uh, well nearly a year since we last sat down together. Very wow. different time. It was in my London studio, and eight days after that, you got arrested. What's the year been like for you? It's certainly been an interesting one. I've been constrained this entire year. I spent 93 days in a Romanian dungeon. There we go. Five months locked in my house, and now I'm restrained within the country of Romania. So it's certainly been a turbulent time. The moment you got arrested, it was all pretty dramatic. The video came out. The world saw it. A lot of people smashing into your, your home. Did you have any inkling, warning that something like this may happen? I knew it. I kept saying before I was arrested on every single podcast I did, I said, you get three lives in the world. The first life, they're going to cancel you. They're going to slander you. They're going to delete your access to social media so you can't defend yourself. The second life, they're going to try and put you in jail for no reason. And if you continue to speak against the power, they're going to assassinate you. I knew I was on my second life. I kept saying it. I knew it was coming. I didn't know the bullshit reason. This is all pandering. This is matrix pandering, by the way. None none of this is true. You can't prove this, okay? He's making it. It's all conspiracy. Making it seem like, oh, I'm I'm telling the truth. So, you know, I might die or they're going to lock me up. Basically, he's predicting what he already knows is going to happen to him. And the reason why he already knows knows what's going to happen to him is because he knows the evidence the prosecutors already got due to Dicot's investigation. So the fact that he's out here on Pierce Morgan lying, oh my God. It used, but I found out once I was in a cell. When you were arrested, you, you didn't actually, you don't speak any Romanian. Zero. Right? And they didn't speak English to you. Correct. So you were taken to a cell. You had no idea what they were alleging you'd done. I was arrested on the 27th of December. So because of Christmas and New Year's and other problems, they couldn't even translate my paperwork for two weeks. So for the first two weeks I was in a prison cell, I had no idea what. I was given papers in Romanian. I could read human trafficking. I understood that I was like human trafficking who, when, what, none of this makes sense. I waited two entire weeks inside of my cell before I was given an English translation. And then I realized exactly how ridiculous the whole case was. Just to clarify, I am accused of helping my friends get big on TikTok. That is what I'm accused of. I told some girls I know how to post on TikTok to become viral when I was at the time the most viral person on the planet. And they are saying I'm a human trafficker for that reason. It is insane. Well, we'll come to what you've been accused of. It's more serious than <laughs> Yo, the way you get him, Pierce. We'll get his that. ass. There is a lot of speculation that the reason the Romanian authorities knew that you were back, because you were en route, I believe, to Dubai for a New Year's Eve party, is that you were interacting with Greta Thunberg on social media and you had a pizza in front of you which came from a well known Romanian pizza uh, store. Is there any truth to that? I don't think so. I think that they know where I was. A lot of people knew where I was. 
And uh, they had instructions from higher up to teach me a lesson. I was on my second life, and that's exactly what I'm going through right now. There's an irony to your situation because you always said the reason you came to Romania was precisely because you thought you could avoid being in this situation. That's well, facts. I love Romania. That's facts. Everyone and anyone who's ever listened to this bozo talk shit online, he basically outlines the biggest reason he went to Romania is because Romania is corrupt. And he likes the corrupt system over there. And now all of a sudden that the corrupt system is up his ass. Oh, my God. I can't believe this country is so corrupt. I, like, y'all believe this? Like, this is crazy. There's no due process. I, they're locking me up for free speech. This is crazy. This is a corrupt country. But like, wait, hold on. Time out. Ain't that the whole reason why you said you want to move there? Because there are less rules and you want to be the master of the corruption over there? Right? Ain't that the reason why? Like, not all of a sudden it's not cool? Like, again, these it just shows you these reptile guys, they have no idea what in the hell they want or they're talking about. A lady 747, shout out to you for the two hours super chat. A lady says, zero pics of Myron hugging the woman. He hate vlo- he, he hates Vag. Yeah. No, he hates women. Listen, I think Myron's okay, you know, y'all know how I got super shocked how like they could be like perfectly straight dudes who have families and kids and everything like that, but somehow live lifestyles that are completely alternative where they're, they're, they're sleeping with gay people and all these things, things like that. Right. And I was super shocked about that. Cause I'm like, wait a minute, how can you wait a minute? If you were, if you were gay to begin with, why don't you just come out and be gay? Like people are accepting of that. No one cares, bro. Just be gay. But why lie to your wife? Why lie to your kids about who you are? Like, it wouldn't it be better to just come out versus like stringing a bunch of lives along, especially the lives of your children? I was super shocked about that, chat. Y'all remember that, right? Now I'm starting to realize Myra may be the same thing. He might be the person that online he's dating women and you know he's bringing. A, remember the, the the last woman he brought around him that was his girlfriend, right? And she Sneeko put her on a, a e date and she was out here sounding exactly like Myron, right? Oh, where, where, where do you work? Uh, what do you do? Uh, what is it? Like, huh, huh, no, like, Myron, huh? Are you dating yourself? There's something wrong here with this woman. Something ain't right with this girl. <laughs> There's something not right with her, right? She was basically a robot, right? And I'm like, mm. okay, Myron might be one of those who can set up himself with a girl, right? To, to, to outwardly have the appearance that he's a straight man. And, he's, and he has good reason to do that because he makes majority of his money selling products about sex to other seemingly straight incels in his fan base. So he has a vested interest to keep the facade going. But what if he secretly like eggplants, bro? What if low-key this man wants a bit of eggplant in his life, right? And he despises women so much so that he would much rather be surrounded by men. What if? And ever since I realized that there could be straight dudes or seemingly straight dudes who live lives with family members and kids and things like that, but they are gay and they're hiding it from their family. I'm not surprised anymore. I think Myron could be that because otherwise I don't understand his hatred towards women, right? Listen, I done been married. I done been divorced. I done been through the system, but you'll never catch me out here yelling and screaming at women because frankly, I think women are fun. I, I every time I'm around women, I'm I have fun. <laughs> so I, I again, I, like when I talk about women, I just I think is again, I've been through the worst. I've dealt with women who could flip on you or 180, bro, and they're they're on your ass. It's crazy, dog. But I don't harbor hatred because when I'm around women, I have fun and I'm able to differentiate my myself in terms of how they're women who are just horrible, and you learn how to pick better. And there are women out there who are great when you do learn how to pick better, right? And it encourages me to learn how to choose better when it comes to women. So, again, when you look at these guys in contracts with the red pill where they go through one breakup and then they they, they slander all women with one term or, or certain things or they, they take some of these TikTok uh, uh, scenarios that are manufactured, by the way. Right, and they, they they slander all women like that. Meanwhile, knowing fully well, us in the real world, these boys have not lived. Think about it; they've been so sucked into the matrix now that it's easy for them to be duped by TikTok skits. 
How many of that has been happening so far right now in 2023? Matter of fact, I say the biggest L of 2023 are platforms that react to these fake TikTok contests, right? Like the one that 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 took him, uh, took he took his, uh, the black woman to a cheesecake factory, and the black woman was berating this Hispanic dude or whatever he looked like, right? All right, he's berating him. Oh, how dare you take me to cheesecake factory? And a lot of people in the manosphere, I was watching, I watched. A lot of people in the manosphere, the way they were reacting to all oh, this black woman, she's so entitled. Look at this poor man. He gave you a date to the Cheesecake Factory. And look at this black woman. She can't appreciate nothing. She over here just demanding so much more. How dare she do this? And then come to find out the whole scenario was faked. Got y'all. They exposed every single one of y'all. But that wasn't enough. The most recent one, the Ruby Rose situation, right? The Ruby Rose situation came out. All of a sudden, you watch these red pillars and you watch their mentality when it comes to this shit, right? Oh, how dare this woman? He gave you $60,000. $60,000 and you just gonna out him like that on Twitter? How dare you, Ruby? He was such a nice guy. And then Myron over here like, oh, see, this is what happens, man. You make so much money and these women still don't respect you. They were going in on Ruby Rose, who, by the way, is a black woman. And then come to find out that whole scenario was also faked. What should it start telling people if they were smart? If they were smart, like us regular folks in the chat right now, all right, they would say, hey, wait a minute. If we're getting so triggered over scenarios that are made up, what does that got to say about our preconceived notions about the world? Maybe we're, maybe we're too quick to judge scenarios rather than question what's actually going on. And these guys, they're not doing that. They're not. They don't realize that they are trapped in a matrix of their own creation. So much so, people who have money, big money, can content farm them by creating fake skits. And all it has to do is adhere to their worldview that they've been brainwashed to believe in about relationships and women of the opposite sex. It's crazy, yet they think that we're the ones stuck in the matrix. Go figure. Shout out to you, ladies. I'm sorry, I had to give you a little extra time on that one, but you know where I'm going with that. It just doesn't make any sense. Shout out to you again for the $2. Says, clearly, Myron has never made a woman go crazy. No, and he doesn't believe that because a woman's orgasm doesn't matter to Myron. <laughs> Don't you notice already, you ladies? He already said that a woman's orgasm does not matter matter let's continue uh uh k sing shout out to you uh with the five says been here since you first exposed us mark on hey shout out to you it says master class channel for exposing the frauds yeah and the thing is it doesn't stop because there was one point where i was like yo this gotta be this gotta be an end to this right there needs to be an end to this because i get sick and tired of this shit because i'm like how can people be so brainwashed to this crap right and then i realized no it just keeps going and these guys all they have to do is just shift and change the rules and their idiot followers would just believe them like it's so much harder to convince somebody that they've been brainwashed like how can you do that like it's like how can you convince somebody they're brainwashed that they're brainwashed they just think that you're the one trying to brainwash them and it's like what <laughs> like hey yo bro like relax you don't see what's happening around you we're not making it up just open your eyes i'm telling you casing it's crazy shout out to you let's play a little bit more and then it's time to vote and this time we gotta vote for the winner folks all right the biggest ella 2023 we gotta vote for it and it's coming up after this yeah it's a strong christian nation with strong traditional values I want a life where I'm left alone by government. I don't believe in big government. I'm trying to avoid that. It felt like Romania was a place which was very safe societally and the government was not too interested or involved in people's lives, but things change. Also, your freedom and your ability to speak the truth is heavily correlated to your insignificance. When you become large and people start listening to what you say, you soon realize you no longer have freedom of speech and it doesn't matter where you are on the planet. If they decide you must be assassinated, you will be assassinated. You in jail, what was that like? Romanian jail is not English jail. You describe it, what was the cell like? I have to be careful what I say because I don't want to insult the Romanian justice system, which I'm still beholden to. However, it's exactly as bad as people would expect it to be. <laughs> Luckily, it was in the winter, so the cockroaches were not too bad. <laughs> it was also during Ramadan, so I didn't have to eat so much, which was helpful because of the situation. I think the most stressful thing about it is I had no idea how long I was going to be in there for. I was dragged from my house. I was given papers in Romanian. I didn't know why I was there. I found out why I was there, and it was garbage. I couldn't seem to get out. It, I could have been held for years. 
it's very stressful. And uh, the best thing you can do is turn to God and, and train as hard as possible. I did thousands of push-ups a day every Are single day. Are you in solitary? This thousands of push-ups a day every single day. We got to cut it right there. The, the guy's clearly a liar, bro. This guy was saying, this is the same guy that says, oh, yeah, uh, uh, depression isn't real. Oh, but when I was in jail, oh, my God. I, I, I didn't know what was going to happen to me. Uh, these Romanians trying to take my money and shit. They knew I was rich. Like, it, it's crazy. Which is funny because Sus Marquad, when he goes to jail, okay, he brags about how, how rich and how much they caught him, $100,000 in his boxers and a Maybach, right? And yet all these, these people who are in jail – are supposed to be proud of all of his accomplishments, right? Meanwhile, in contrast, Andrew Tate, they know he's rich, right? And what are they doing? They're extorting this clown. <laughs> this dude is in jail getting extorted by Romanians, bro. This shit's hilarious. So it's like, yo, Sus Marquad, you're dumb if you think we're believing a story where you're telling people, oh, my God, yeah. Yeah, all these black people and Mexicans in the jail, they saw that I got arrested with a Maybach and $100,000 in my boxers. And, you know, they were just so impressed. It's like, why would you tell people in jail that you're a lick, bro? <laughs> like, you just, now you're just painting a target on your back. Now, that knowing fully well that you in Vegas and you, that you do there, that they there, they just got to set up the opportunity, you moron, sitting there bragging these people, which I don't believe happened. But again, if we're going to believe Sate's account of the events that went down, you would find out that, uh, yeah, bro, either you're stupid enough to brag about your wealth to a bunch of prisoners or jailers, okay, versus, you know, pleading the fifth, which you didn't do, which was hilarious, by the way. So it's funny how Andrew Tate, they know he's rich and he gets extorted. St. the Senate expects us to believe he's safe. Okay, whatever. But time to vote, guys. But before we do that, we got to get through – some honorable mentions, okay? Got chat. This is a the, the jam packed show, okay? We're at the finale, but we have to mention some honorable mentions, okay? Now, let me, let me play my, my sad music over here. Let me play my sad music, okay? It's gonna be just, just actually, no, it's not gonna be sad. It's gonna be, it's gonna be chill. All right, we're gonna play some chill music, okay? Uh, let, let's go ahead and go through some honorable mentions. So, we got first and foremost. Uh, Zerka, yeah, that's right, Zerka. All right, so Zerka was definitely in the running for the biggest L of 2024, uh, 2023. And the reason why Zerka is on the biggest running is because obviously he's got his butt handed to him by uh, what do you call that TikTok guy, right? The Tiki Talky guy, right? Basically, there's some UK dude in a silk shirt that basically blew Zerka's back out in the middle of a street, right? And this is what happens when you go out there to try to challenge somebody out to a fight. And it's just like, bro, you you can't even fight. So you just big for nothing, dog. You're talking all this shit. You big for nothing. You can't fight, dog. So that was embarrassing. The second one, uh, honorable mention, is Anton Daniels. We actually have been talking about this clown a long time. Uh, but we got to mention him because he also took some L's in 2023. And y'all remember, the, and it has to do with the Pearl Saga, right? Because the Pearl Saga, essentially, he basically went full Klansman, okay? This dude was talking about, yeah, black folks, you don't deserve reparations. Y'all always complaining. Y'all always whining. Y'all always doing this and that and this and that. We oh, we saw the true colors with this clown. All right, with Anton Danny, we knew we knew exactly who you were after the pro thing. All right, and how you treated Sarah Garvey was absolutely foul, bro. You deserve you you deserve all the hate in the world. But you know what? You know what? It just wasn't enough to make it on this channel. I'm <laughs> sorry. You at best your honorable mention, but we didn't forget that, bro. You a sellout, dog. The next honorable mention is Fousey, for believe it or not, all right? Fousey had an absolute meltdown of 2023. I mean, it was absolute disaster, which a lot of these people uh, that we mentioned who were in the main running, like Sneeko and whatnot, right? They actually benefited off, including Myron Gaines and Fresh and Fit, Andrew Tate. A lot of these guys, in Zerka, they all benefited from Fousey's meltdown. And you guys don't know, Fousey's the guy that every once in a while, he, he go crazy, but that's how he goes viral, so he's addicted to that shit, all right? And the last time he went viral, he basically laughed about how he tricked, so not really tricked, but he had sex with a woman who said she was a victim of sexual uh, trafficking. Just basically, she, she was pimped. She was pimped, all right? And Fuzi listened to all that in her vulnerable state and still took advantage of her. 
it was crazy. <laughs> like, like, dog, like, like, that's sick. He got called out rightfully so. But off of that clout he got, it went to his head like it always does with Boozy. But then all these other content creators decide to basically benefit off of that too as well, including Sneeko was the main one. Sneeko went through the roof with that bullshit, all right? And, and you know, they all did that. It just shows you how degenerate these fuckers are. Although Sne Su uh, Sneak uh, Fousey had a really bad uh, 2023 year, okay, I still think that it just, it was bad enough not to make it on the main list, but definitely deserves an honorable mention. The next one is going to be Candace freaking Owens. Oh my goodness. And this has to do with the interview she had with Andrew Tate that was a complete fluff piece, all right? It definitely exposed it exposed who the hell she was it really did it really did bro it really did it exposed who she was because it's like how can you call yourself a journalist and you're sitting there in front of a guy who's most likely going to be convicted of trafficking women and you say he's a role model to all young men out there like you're out here supposed to be a journalist you're supposed to be fair you're supposed to be to the point and yet and yet you're sitting here in front of a trafficker and you just give him in all that, all of that praise and all of that recognition, all of that. And what's even worse, Candace, is you then went and victim shame Andrew Tame's victims all because you wanted to cape for Andrew Tate. Until this day, we don't understand why. Now, it doesn't deserve a spot on the main list for sure. But it definitely deserves a dishonorable mention. All right, let's continue to the next uh, dishonorable mention. Okay, and that's gonna be Brian. <laughs> oh my God, you thought we forgot about this clown? All right, Brian for whatever podcast. Okay, and the main L he took of this year was the back and forth when he had with Fresh and Fit. Okay, now you guys remember Fresh and Fit called them out, uh, their platform out, which they weren't rightfully so to do that because Fresh and Fit they're they're also guilty of the same thing. But they called out Brian from whatever podcast and accused accused him of being in it just for the money right because apparently brian sells courses for like three thousand dollars or consultations or whatnot it was a lot it was like three thousand five thousand dollars so it was between that range okay so i didn't know brian be getting down like that you fleecing these boys <laughs> like god damn like first of all come on <laughs> let, let, let's let's, have, let's stop for a second stop <laughs> stop it okay what does brian have to teach you that's worth three to five grand hmm this is Brian from whatever podcast, the, the the milk toast fresh and fit. Okay, what does he have to teach you as a man that is worth three to five thousand dollars? So Brian gets exposed for that by a, a fresh and fit caller, and what ends up happening is Brian gets all wimpy and pissed off about it, and then tries to you know clap back at fresh and fit, which resulted in this weird back and forth that they went that kind of went nowhere. Now that itself doesn't deserve a uh, spot on the list, but it definitely deserves an honorable mention because this shit was funny as hell. Now, time to vote, chat. It's between fresh and fit Myron and Andrew Tate. Who do you guys think deserve? The biggest L of 2023, okay? This is it. For the year 2023, we can't go back. Who deserves the biggest L? Is it Myron Gaines with the Fresh and Fit podcast crew or Andrew Tate, who's a going or soon to be convicted trafficker? I'm going to give you guys a little bit of time to vote on that. Let's get it. Got 10 more seconds. Hey, I, I'm, I'm, hey, listen, if you vote twice, I'm not counting it twice. I'm seeing some of y'all voting twice, all right? And 
thumbs up. All right. It looks like it's Andrew Tate. Honestly, I'm not surprised. Andrew Tate is the biggest loser of 2023. And that is not surprising because think about it, right? This guy, you know, bragged the high hell that he wasn't going to get convicted, gets convicted. Okay. All right. Not convicted. I'm sorry. Charged. Charged. I'm sorry. Charged. Okay. Says he wasn't going to get charged. Gets charged. Tater Todd has to eat dirt. Okay. And on top of that, numerous L's after L's getting exposed left and right. All right. Even Hassan. Hassan of all people, bro. It's got to be bad. But worst of all, even though we're looking at Fresh and Fit right now and we're looking at Andrew Tate, out of the both of them, Andrew Tate has a lot to lose. And we know for a fact he's going to get convicted. That's why I keep using that word, right? But listen, he's going to get convicted. The reason why we know is they got 70,000 pages worth of evidence against this clown he's literally operating on his last leg he just went through preliminary hearing and y'all saw the last video i did on that he did not look confident at all he looked like he saw reality for the first time because y'all saw the difference between andrew tate when he does a normal press conference after something happens right let's say he gets less off a house of house arrest he comes out bragging we're innocent we're innocent yeah, i told you guys from the get-go we're innocent right they let him off of a city lockdown, and he gets to travel the country now of Romania instead of just Bucharest. And he comes out, see, the judge know we're innocent. We all know we're innocent. We're innocent. We're innocent, right? And then, and then you get the smackdown after the preliminary hearing, and Tate's walking out. Not even trying to talk. He's not even trying to troll the media like he used to. Not even trying to do a press conference, nothing. He just walked got in his car along with his entourage and they drove off and that was very telling because what was telling about preliminary hearing versus all the other stuff tate was let off with prior to this was that preliminary hearing is where tate for the first time has to go in and for once see the actual evidence prosecutors are going to use against him coming trial in trial we now are trying to are starting to figure out that it's going to take months possibly years because it's a lot of evidence to sift through andrew tate realizing that going into it probably realized yeah i'm done i'm it's over with <laughs> yeah you, you're not you're not escaping this right without at least some serious time and this serious time is going to come with some serious consequences and those consequences is going to be directly aimed at his clout and internet social media present it's done you, 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 uh, what were you gonna be gone for eight, eight, eight plus years? And uh, that's at the minimum. He's looking at 30 if he gets convicted. Listen, listen, it's it's what is it's 20 alone for the trafficking, no, 13 uh, and up for the uh, trafficking. And then we're not including the money laundering and uh, all the abuse and the physical abuse and all that stuff included with that, right? So he's looking at an average of, or, or, or uh, what do you call it, a baseline of 30 years if the lawyers aren't good at what they're doing. If they're good at what they're doing, maybe eight to 10 years. All right. He's going to serve some serious time. And I think he's looking at this at his last hurrah as we go through 2024. We're going to start hearing stuff about Tate trials. Um, hopefully it starts in 2024. We we don't know. Um, but we're going to start hearing a lot more things going on with Andrew Tate, especially start they start to move forward with preliminary and go into the actual trial itself. There are going to be some things that are going to be out there. And I think the Tater Tots are going to be in for a very rude awakening. All right. Y'all have been backing this dude for, for how long now? And now everything we've said was going to happen to him is finally going to happen to him. And Listen, as much as we like to, you know, clown you tater tots out there, I mean, just being serious, maybe this is the reality check you guys need. Because hopefully when you see that gavel slammed down saying he's guilty for what he did based off the evidence they got on him, you guys will finally realize you're a bunch of young adults, young men, propping up a trafficker all because he said things that you liked on the Internet. Hopefully you guys grow and realize how ridiculous that shit is. And you actually 
move on from this. But who the fuck are we kidding? This is the internet. A bunch of these guys are weirdos and toddlers, okay? So a lot of these guys are probably not going to learn from it. And no matter what evidence you present to them, they're probably going to say, hey, you know what? <laughs> Andrew Tate's innocent. It's all fabricated. And why? Because Tate has done a good job of brainwashing these idiots to believe that, yeah, this is all part of a Matrix plot. Yeah, oh my God, the Matrix. They're coming after me. They're, they're, they're destroy me. That's what it is. You're going to prison, dog. And out of all these people, he faces the serious, serious consequences. The ones that have the, the big, big, big big numbers all right we're not talking about the numbers or what what uh sus marquad did behind bars although moving towards 2024 because we're gonna get that body cam footage we're, we're getting that <laughs> nothing stopping us all right it's gonna happen once we get that and it doesn't match with your account on youtube sus marquad you will be instantly in the running for the biggest loser of 2024 his trial ends in April of 2024. So we're going to find that out once the body cam situation comes down. We can't do it right now because it's an active case. All right. But once it becomes inactive, we're going to get that footage with it compared to what he was bragging about online. And I guarantee you there's going to be some differences here. And he's going to be looked at as a fool. But chat, listen, that's what we got today. We're going to go through the Super Chats real quick. But listen, man, this has been fun. I like this. This was long. This was a long show, bro. It had just got done with a two-hour-plus drive, bro. That's crazy. I even have the energy for this. Where did the energy come from? I sometimes I got to ask myself that question. How do I get the energy for this? <laughs> sometimes I'm like, yo, this alcohol, you know what I'm saying? <sighs> But still, I don't know how I have the energy for this to be to be real with y'all, bro. I just did a two-hour drive, all right, from Chicago back to fucking Wisconsin. All right, I'm over here, like, doing a four-hour-plus show with you guys. I appreciate y'all spending the time with us, bro. That, that, like, this is crazy. I appreciate it. Like, 2024 is going to be a different year. Chris calls out with the five says, Tate first, Myron second, then the drunken center third. Hey, your, your super chat right now is actually what a majority of the chat were thinking. And I think y'all at the end, this is why I love y'all, bro. Because at the end of the day, you guys, you guys focus on reality. At the end of the day, we can talk about these red pill weirdos all day long. But at the end of the day, there's only one person who's going to face some serious time based off all the red pill weirdo shit he's been on. That's Andrew Tate. A lot of y'all have voted. Y'all knew from the get-go that Andrew Tate, he's going to be number one. Even though it's been a while since we're talking about Andrew Tate, still, he's still number one because y'all are smart. Y'all know for a fact that at the end of the day, yeah, Fresh and Fit does what he wants. Uh, you know, MLD, all these other guys, Santa Center, it is what it is. But well, Santa Center is a different story now. But, like, all these other guys, you know, it is what it is. But at the end of the day, the one person that's going to be facing some serious charges for his crimes is Andrew Tate. And He's the one that single-handedly carried the red pill on for as long as he did. So it was crazy. Yo, <laughs> yo, Carmel Lime, Carmelly Mel. Shout out to you for the five. Carmelly Mel says, and on top of that, Tate had cancer too. Yeah. Y'all remember that? Which was like, supposedly, let me go to Dubai, please. I got to go to Dubai. I got to go to Dubai because there's something in my lung. Turns out it was nothing. <laughs> and then we see him smoking cigars all day, right? Coming out doing these live streams, smoking cigars. But you're supposed to have, you know, something in your lungs. They found they found something in my lungs. I need to go to the bar. We know what you were trying to do, bro. You're trying to run. <laughs> you're trying to run, dog. Hey, Romanian government ain't that stupid, bro. They're not. They're not dumb. They're like, oh yeah, okay, yeah. You're 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 in league with the Dorfate brothers. They're the big mafia group in Romania. One of the brothers got busted up with you, and the other brother is in Dubai. All right, and the other brother that's busted up with you somehow got released, but your ass is still there. Listen, if anybody is going to murk Tate, it's not the Matrix, bro. It's his mafia ties. He's got mob ties, dog. All right, you, 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 you think when they find the link, because they found the link between his casinos and the mobsters out there. Okay, so you, you, you honestly think that these Tate brothers are not going to talk? You think that these Dwarfate, high-flying mafia dudes who are who somehow are able to get off and flee the country, everybody got got the chance to run away but Tate brothers. It just shows you how stupid these these bozos are when it comes to the game of crime. They, they brag about hanging out with gangsters all day, but at the end of the day, these guys, when you, they're dealing with real gangsters, they know how to get out of prison. They know how to get out of jail time and flee the country. Meanwhile, you're here to take the rap. And all they need to do from keeping you from running your mouth, especially when it comes down to them serious charges, is to send one of them youngins in jail at you. So if Tate is bragging, not he's not bragging about this. He's foreshadowing this, right? If he's foreshadowing 
that, you know, first they silence you, then they jail you, and then the next minute they kill you. First, I, first of all, I want to know, where you, are you are you following the Epstein's model? That sounds a lot like Epstein, and this isn't the first time he compared himself to Jeffrey Epstein, but still, right? If you're going off of that model, who do you, who, who's going to kill you in jail? Who has more of a grievance to take you out because you know too much? And I got to ask you guys this other question. Who else do you think knows that they know too much? It's Andrew Tate and the Tate brothers, the Tate crime family. They know, they know what they know, bro. And they know the Dorf and Tate brothers know what they know. So that's why Tate is foreshadowing his death. All right. Could it be that maybe and I'm not wishing this on anybody? I'm not knowing like it's crazy because I'm I was genuinely shocked about his mob ties. I really was like, yo, what the fuck? You're I thought he was lying about that. If anything Tate would lie about was his mob ties, but he wasn't lying about that, surprisingly, right? See, he wasn't. So if there's anyone with a legitimate grievance to take you out, just like Jeffrey Epstein, it's probably someone that knows that you know that you know too much. It's just simple as that. And I think Andrew Tate on some sick level knows that. It's just weird, bro. The whole the whole nonsense, it's weird. They're not getting out of this. And, and that's why, like, the closer we get, the nervous I feel. Because, like, it's like, what if he – what if something does happen to him, right? Like, that would be crazy. But it wasn't because, you know, the Matrix planned this out because he was speaking for freedom of speech. It's because he knew something the mafia didn't want the rest of the world to know. Simple slapstick Nick with the five. Shout out to you for the five dollars of chat. It says state's idea of proving innocence is witness intimidation and revisionist history, painting the past in a different light. Facts. This is I couldn't even put it better myself. Absolute facts, dude. He's out here changing up how things the, the whole layout of how things happen, and then turns around and he yeah, he was actually caught trying to intimidate witness. The whole reason those two women are in Dubai right now is because he had his youngins through the war room send them there. And then these two ladies are like, oh, well, Tate didn't abuse us. He didn't abuse us. I don't even know what abuse is, right? Even though the Romanian government is saying, it doesn't matter, bro. You yourself are a victim, and you're so far in, you don't even realize you've been victimized. That's how crazy this shit is, right? And Tate knew this, and they got all this stuff on tape. They got the call records. They got the DMs. They know for a fact that Tate is out here manipulating things even when he was behind bars, right? So, again, you don't think all that evidence is going to go into that cart pile we were talking about of 70,000 pages they're going to use against this bozo? He's done. Everybody knows it but the tater tots. And it's so sad. It's so sad. I'm laughing because it's just – this is just like, yo, I don't know what else to tell y'all. I'm, I'm washing my hands of it, bro. 2024, 2025, it's not looking good for this man, bro. It's over with. And I'm glad y'all are able to see it too. Because honestly, there's nobody else that deserves the title of the biggest L of 2023 than Andrew Tate. Chat, I appreciate y'all for being here. Y'all could be anywhere in the world right now. But y'all spent the time with Duke the Don. And y'all literally spent the last days of 2023 with Duke the Don. And honestly, I'm I'm glad to spend the last days of 2023 with you guys. I mean, this year has been amazing. This year has been, um, like, I don't even, like, I, I'm, I can barely get out the words to explain how, how much you guys appreciate you guys, man. I say it every single time I do a show, but I, I even now I still can't. You guys don't understand how much it means to me, bro. It, it means a lot because, like, this is one guy here just talking. That's just all it is, right? I mean, people say, oh, your hip pieces and whatnot, but it's literally me, a mic, you know, in my cave. New curtains, by the way, King Queen Riches. <laughs> new curtains, right? But it's just me out here talking, and you guys find that awesome. That's why I appreciate every time you guys are here, because you guys are literally anywhere and everywhere in the world right now, but you chose to spend the time with Duke the Don. Unlike most of these podcast platforms out here that are sitting here like, oh, well, you know, you guys gotta like the video. You guys gotta do this. Yeah, hit the cash app and do this and whatnot. It's like, yo, I don't need that that shit matters bro people don't really understand like you guys could literally be doing other things right there's so much content out there that's why my mind's always blown every time i, I i'm here stream with you guys because you guys there's just so much content out there and it take 
eternity to even review every one of them if you wanted to watch every single content existing, right? But you guys can literally anywhere. That's what I mean. You guys can be watching anything else but this channel, but you guys are here. Some of you guys are OGs. And shout out to you. Shout out to the OG. Shout out to the moderators. You're here. That means a lot to me, bro. I don't take that for granted. I want you guys to feel the exact same way I'm feeling, bro. I don't take any of that for granted. And I make sure to let you guys know that every single day I go live because it means a lot to me. Thank you so much for spending 2023 with me. And it, it means a lot. And hopefully we go into the next year doing the same old, same old, because there are a bunch of necks that need to be stepped on, all right? The, the foot got to stay where it belongs because, listen, man, this shit's not going away. It's only getting worse. It really is. A lot of these red pill things, it's, it's, it's taking over. It hasn't done. And 2024 is going to be wild. You're looking at the whole Republican and the, the, the aspect of it because I, I said the red pill isn't dead, even though people like the red pillars want to let you know it's dead. It's covert, bro. They just became Republicans. And I'm not saying this to disrespect the Republicans out there. I actually don't care about, like, you know, political classes like that. It don't matter to me. You could be a Democrat or a Republican. I'll show you another idiot. I just is what it is. I'd rather just not believe in both parties because they're scams. But still, all right? But at the end of the day, you got to understand a lot of these red pillars, the alt-right people, they are now switching into conservative, Republican, far-right bullshit, okay? The talking points is one of the main things we've been calling out, and you're going to see the fruits of their labor in 2024 as the whole election cycle goes full swing. So shout-out to you guys. Shout-out to you guys for being here, and I'm going to catch you guys next year. Peace.